not muted we're here we're live hi hello everyone i'm josh the traded gm and these are my fellow storytellers the fire is still happening down here from the the craziness that we had uh during the the ams um uh, how is everyone is good everyone's music? in the wrong order on the overlay though. no though <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> just for fun just for fun did that fix it it did yeah yeah uh, okay. actually yeah, it's funny is that your your position was the only one that was wrong hi everyone <laughs> hello how is everyone are we digging this fire down the in the middle we can, i'll move it mm. let's move it's it pretty, it's pretty cool it was uh pesh Pe 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 gave it to us <laughs> pesh gave it to us which is amazing um okay i'm gonna get in and and, and do a little bit of housekeeping on the, uh but while while we before we do that let's introduce everyone here uh hey guys hello hello beautiful people uh let, could you please introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about your characters before we jump in Ellie. me <laughs> i'm first <laughs> hello everyone um my name is ellie uh tonight i am playing her name is delilah winterberry who is a rogue wizard which i'm very excited to play um she has orange hair and is a little bit of a sweetheart and she's a halfling as well um so i'm very excited to play her um you can catch me on monday night and tuesday nights on the dreaded gm channel hells to the year um and i just realized why something is is it feel it doesn't feel right my monitor is off so i haven't been able to hear myself that's much better um okay cool uh so next up Endo. hello i will i am kendall drury today i will be playing Gragnug, the deep gnome blood hunter you can find me on youtube on dear stalker pictures dming for the show one for all hells yeah next up is it hi i'm izzy and tonight i will be playing marembe ababio who is a half elf draconic sorcerer who is um a mage a court mage and she loves to eat but doesn't love to exercise um and isn't quite sure what she's doing here <laughs> that's who i'm playing hells yeah um next up hello hello i'm robert hartley gm you can find me on uh youtube on the uh, on the people dirt league D, D channel dming for those guys or you can find me on twitch uh, robert hartley gm where i i stream a few days a week doing D, &D related content tonight i will be playing okrele Krele, or just krell for short who is a very surly grumpy uh not very pleasant to be around um kobold artificer and he has spe specifies in uh, alchemy and bottles and jars and uh, glasses and potions and all the like and he makes up for his um makes up for his his lack of strength and lack of uh, imposing body by his exceptionally uh, exceptionally bright mind and inventions hells yeah hells yeah and next up oh, no. What's up, guys? My name is Thomas. I am uh, I go by Forgeling, and you can also catch me on Deerstalkers uh, One for All, which I'd like to describe as a hit series. Um, today, I <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> so I will. <laughs> it's my um, turn to talk, and I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. If if you don't agree, well, that's that's your prerogative, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, today I'm going to blame Garland Bow Anchor, which is a concoction I came up with whilst uh, doing the gate shifted work. 
and it, it gave me the inspiration to create a, a character which really pins you down without being physically able to. So you're so not it, called talk? <laughs> no! <laughs> it, it, that was all talk. Hey. No, I, I've, I've done a little bit of modifying and, um, and hopefully uh, Craig Nug and I will, will have a little bit of a bit of a duet. I just hope there's no overlay somewhere that's saying your name is Talk. It's neither. <laughs> no, it can be Talk. Talk is my Now That's it, crazy. It, the Talk is that... silent in Garland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Garland, Talk. Wait, no, I'm going to change. His name is Talk now. Goes by his middle name. Um, your, your friends the, call you talk. The, fun, the funny thing, the funny thing is that we we had uh, Crendel double and triple check that your name was Talk as we were putting together the overlays. Yeah, it's been short. I did. I was like, are you are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. You're sure? Yeah, absolutely sure. <laughs> triple check. It's possible that Craig oh, right. was mistaken. <laughs> We get in game and he introduces as a third name. <laughs> we'll know this. <laughs> this is an ongoing joke. I'm so sorry. Dread a GM every single time. What's yeah. a name? <laughs> What's in a name? Give me a name. What is it? A, a name? Rose, a rose Give name. me a name. <laughs> So good. Now, you guys have reminded me just quickly that I have to change the D&D uh, &D Beyond overlay. Um, while I just tighten a few more bolts and get this thing ready to go, um, I'm hoping I can throw it to someone to talk about Starlight. All right, first I'm going to introduce myself. Oh, Hello. yes! I did the thing! I did the thing! I'm sorry. Hey, look. Let me, let me, just, let me just fill you in. Just, uh, I'm going to let you finish, Daniel. I'm going to let you finish. But let me just fill you in here. Uh, I'm very, very, very tired. Um, but... I'm here with all the love that I can muster. I love you all very much. Um, and if I stumble, I know that I'm surrounded by beautiful people that uh, let me know that it's okay that I stumble sometimes. So, totally Daniel, good. take it. Josh was just trying to let me have my fastest introduction ever. Oh! I don't think I can get it lower than five words. So he was like, let's just skip it. That's <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm Daniel. You can normally find me here Mondays and Tuesdays playing D&D. Tonight I am playing uh, Torig Ironwrought, a 300-year-old father of 11 and granddad of 50. Um, he is a forge cleric that is not quite sure how he came into his divine powers. And he's simply here so that his grandkids don't have to grow up without stars. Uh, that's my Twitch. Okay, thanks, bye. That was so beautiful. Okay, cool. Um, alright, now, can someone please talk about Starlight? Well... We introduced everyone? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think so. Alright, roll call, now, quickly. Now, now, now you're making me, now you're making me second guess myself. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm Josh, I'm Dread, uh, uh, you can find me here three days a week. Um, I'm a big, lovable goof, uh, I love, I love all types of fun and things and happiness, and I'm just very happy to be here with all here collected and to play some epic Dungeons & Dragons. We, we, we have had a great weekend, I'm very happy. I think that was the last one to introduce myself, right? Yes. Just me? Just yeah. me? Okay. We're here for Starlight's Children Foundation. They don't care. How exciting is that, everyone? Hell yeah. uh, Very exciting. We are raising money uh, to. Well, we've been raising money all week, really. Uh, and tonight is the final night. Uh, we are pushing our goal all the way up to twenty thousand dollars now. Yeah. Which... Look, I, I I may have made a mistake. We uh, we had people set set milestones. They're like, hey, look, made, if, if we do we twenty thousand, I'll do this. Yet. I know. Look, it was at fifteen thousand, and that's where it was. I'm like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna get those milestones ready so that future Dread doesn't have to worry about uh, having to <laughs> put the milestones in. Let's do that. Apparently, they accounted. You tried to save, you tried to save future Dread some work, yeah. but then you ended up giving him more work. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was like, let's put the milestones in now, and then when when we increase it, obviously, it's just gonna have them there on the new the new increase if we get there. But, uh, no, they just increased it to 20k, so everyone's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, it was a mistake. And, and you, can't, you can't lower it again? <laughs> um, I could try. Should we try? <laughs> you haven't yet! I haven't tried, no! <laughs> when did it happen? It happened at like 3 or 4 in the morning. <laughs> Okay. I was very tired and delirious. <laughs> we were there were werewolves and there was fire and we were all doing like uh, UK accents. It was it was a grand old time. Um, also, yeah. we have a level three hat train. Oh, yo! Thank oh. you so much. Thank you. All right. So Hell the actual yeah. goal is currently fifteen four. Yes, the yeah. actual 15, goal is fifteen four, which is double what we made last year. Yes, exactly. <laughs> let me let me. Um, 
If you haven't heard about the Starlight Children's Foundation, it is an incredible cause that helps children, teenagers, and their families across the entirety of Australia, and also uh, Tasmania, of course. Um, why I said that, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's, just, yeah. <laughs> it's just the fuzzy head at the moment. Um, but they uh, operate out of the hospitals and also through uh, regional communities through Australia. Um, they bring so much light and joy and social excitement towards children and their families. They've got a bunch of different programs, which all of this money will be going towards to keep funding, including wish giving, which we'll be able to see a little bit about in an amazing video that Dread will be able to play pretty soon. Uh, and they also do a Livewire, which is an online community program, which connects teenagers all around Australia to other like-minded teenagers, whether it's video games, music, Dungeons and Dragons, whatever you can possibly imagine, they can connect you with someone else. Um, one of uh, their other programs is the Starlight Express Room, which is one of their most notable ones, um, which is in a room and it's an escape away from the hospital. Uh, inside is just fun, art, video games, everything that you can possibly imagine that isn't to do with hospital. Uh, and it just brings so much joy and happiness. Uh, and that's what we're raising money for tonight, so, guys. Um, really, really cool part. Every five dollar donation that you put in puts you into an enormous raffle with so many prizes. Uh, these prizes include D and D Beyond gift cards. The gift codes. Uh, we have EB Games vouchers. Uh, we have Steam gift cards. We have Force books, I think. Physical books, which are very, very cool. Um, I have three sets of galaxy dice in front of me currently as well we have world anvil we have a beautiful gift bag handcrafted by one of our moderators called adana she is an incredible incredible it's not for you it's not for what josh um, can't has I have, my, my mind has let escape the name of the person who is creating the gift box. Uh, Avarian, yeah. Avarian. A woodworker from um, from all the way in, in can Canada, uh, which, oh, is, which is amazing. And uh, also, they made that, that beautiful oh, thing. Isn't it gorgeous? So yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah, so you could you could have something made uh, uh, from uh, the, the, the same person that made Robert Hartley GM's dice tray uh, and not only that it's it's going to be emblazoned with uh the dreaded gm logo as well as their uh, maker's mark and the name of the event we find ourselves on and your twitch tag and there's only one of them only one person gets it it's pretty high we also have commissions from m i believe as yes. well if a whole bunch of you were watching her earlier today uh, as you know she is an incredible artist uh, i do hope that the mods if you could put her instagram in because she deserves so much love for all of the work she does um and i know i am missing others but there's just so many prizes there's guys. so there's so many <laughs> so prizes many. so uh, many prizes uh so wooten forge also donated uh some D, &D accessories um uh, oh, Stormfjell. Uh, yep Stormfjell shirts the t-shirts yep. yeah Oh yep. gosh! Wabba Jack um, just gave us three thousand bits, and a microbiologist yo! gave a whole bunch of tears. Hell tier one yeah! Subs. Thank you so much also, for just all before that. Hype. The three thousand bits. Wabba actually gave another four thousand four hundred and forty-four bits. <laughs> <laughs> Wabba! Wabba! Also, we got a few nice. big donations. We got five hundred dollars to Starlight from oh, Katharina oh, Zill, Kat yes! Catherine Axel. Oh. Not quite sure. Sorry. Uh, and also almost sixty dollars, fifty nine, fifty eight from Wraith eighty five, and another twenty oh, from Plus. Oh, Plus, thank you. <sighs> nice. All huge, all going to a great cause. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. You okay, Dread? Oh, crap. Go, 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 do it. Just gonna hold on gonna to hold, my, hold on to these, these, you these tears. tears. Yeah, they're my tears. Eleven p.m. tonight. Let loose. They're okay. my tears. <laughs> uh, they're most probably gonna come out during the, uh, the, uh, the wrap up party because we've had so much fun over this massive weekend together, uh, guys. We uh, later tonight we are going to be play, uh, 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 ending around about eleven o'clock. We're all gonna get, jump into one big Zoom call and we're all just gonna just hang out and talk about this amazing event that we that we we find ourselves. Coming on the close end. Look at that, 65 hours. 
65 hours we we pushed twitch to the limit we actually clocked over uh that the, the, they had to reset the stream uh uptime that's that's how that's how how much we've been streaming so we're we're, we're, we're breaking we're breaking barriers here guys it's we are also three. at 258 percent of a level five hat trick yo okay uh <laughs> we also just broke fourteen thousand dollars with another yeah! twenty dollars from muck thank yes! you so much thank you so much okay so uh uh queer all the hype all the gosh hype. thank you so much for that level five hype train here's here's five uh train tweaks for you <laughs> That was only four. It's five. Yay. And one for good measure. <laughs> um, so Does anyone know what percent we got to? That was 258, I believe. 258. Okay, yeah. 658 XP. Thank you. Um, now, uh, just quickly, uh, a few orders of business. We we had an initial goal of 12,000, and now we find ourselves $2,009.59 above that. Is that correct? Let's just check in with our math expert, Rob. Did I get the, that right? Yeah, yeah. 14,000 minus 12,000 is 2,000. You are okay. <laughs> Uh, so we we math had expert guy. <laughs> Thank God my math degree is coming in handy. <laughs> um, we we actually we we had the original stretch goal and uh, of uh, if we hit that we were going to do a big event called uh, Dread Con. Um, name is in in contention right now. Uh, thanks to Kendall who gave the 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 say, Dread Fest sounds a little bit better. Now we're all contemplating whether or not Dread Fest. Dread Con Fest. Dread Con Fest. Uh, so like we well, that that is definitely happening now and it is looking like it's slated for uh, October now our good friend who couldn't join us on the event that has joined us in previous events uh, in the first time that he played um, he played a rope cowboy which was super sick um, he, he's actually been hard at work to, to make something for everyone here to thank you for your support and uh, to hype up that big event that's coming because we're gonna have I know that it's, it's really sad that we are we're coming to a close I don't want it to end because I've been having so much fun but he he made this for everyone um this is we will be posting this to the instagram later and the twitter later it's pretty damn cool there it is why is my stream so behind yeah, yeah i know sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting oh that's so I'm cool still waiting. you guys oh, cool it's Amazing. going to be intense. Oh. Yeah! Hey! <laughs> oh man, it's like it's, it's so like my good. favorite pun of all time. It's going to be intense. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be based around carnival themes because we're about to get a new adventure from D and D, uh, Wizards of the Coast, which is the uh, the wild, no, the Witchlight Beyond the Wilds, which it's the all wilds carnival. beyond the Witchlight. The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Thank you, thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you, Rob. <laughs> Rob's got my back. I know that. I know that. Okay. Um. So yes. Are we will be posting this there to you guys. It is. What? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pausing amazing? and restarting the stream. It yeah. forces it to reset. Hells yeah. So, uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Callum, for that uh, that awesomeness. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and thank you for all these beautiful people that have donated. Uh, we're fast approaching the 15,400 mark. There is a stretch goal on there. So Terrace, our mod, is going to get the Mimic Heart tattooed. If we hit that and 20k, we're going to get another Mimic Heart tattooed. And also, we are going to hold something very cool that I was trying to trying to explain to Rob this morning. I'm not sure. Rob, uh, Rob I did I make sense when I was explaining that, that final stretch goal at all? I, I was very delirious at that point uh i have been doing things since then so I, it's not even ringing any bells at okay. all so rob, <laughs> i will go back into a private chat yeah so yeah we are at the, the we're gonna do a werewolf village so it's on a big a big 99 player game of oh, ultimate right. werewolf yes yeah and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we're all gonna play we all gonna role play it's gonna yeah, be really fun good. Yeah, we're gonna make a, an actual village in the Discord, and then we're gonna role play it out. And, and people amongst the community are going to be werewolves, slowly making their way through the town, um, killing people. Uh, it, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be spooky. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Dags, and I hope we can put that together. And um, I'm gonna reach out and try and get as much help as I can on that one because that sounds like it's going to be an epic time, but very very complicated and, and intricate. <laughs> okay, all right. So I think I think that we are. Almost ready to jump into Ooh, this game. Uh, do the one for all guys want to <gasps> yes. plug their Kickstarter? Yes, yes, yes. Do that and uh, just no. Quickly... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Also, Alex, thank all you right. so much for your fifty dollars donation. <laughs> it's okay, I forgot. I hadn't done it yet. <laughs> uh, Tom, you can do the Kickstarter. 
I can do the Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, I would love to do the Kickstarter if I knew anything about it. No, it's it's actually a huge deal. We've been working really hard um, um, for for a very long time, and we're reaching out and we've given we've we've got such a good response from our fans. Uh, we we've got a Kickstarter funding season four. Uh, we want to produce more content for you. We want we want bigger, more elaborate costumes and more more elaborate shenanigans. We want to put Kendall in some ridiculous outfits. Um, that that was my personal request. So I'm so more, glad. More so. <laughs> uh, and I mean, honestly, I can't. I'm already so thankful. But we we're wrapping this up. I think in about eight days. If I'm if I'm not incorrect. I believe that's correct. Let me double check the website. Ten basic days. maths. I would love some basic maths. Tri tri ten, triple ten check. Days. Triple check. Ten day. One ten day. One, one ten, ten day. day. Yeah. Yeah. One ten day. <laughs> um, zero on we're wrapping time. it up, and we've already we've already smashed our goals. We're so close to getting our third stretch goal. That's um one fifty, and we're going to be releasing hopefully nine episodes for you guys. But once again, thank you so much already for those who know about it, and for those who uh, don't, get amongst it. We've got some great rewards for you out there. Hell yeah. Wait, right. Get out of character for a sec. Also, uh, not to, it's not as cool as Dreadcon, but unlocked uh, next Saturday, we will be doing a stream of a battle royale between the main party and some of the NPCs. I'll be DMing, and you can go place bets to see who you think will win. I don't know. Now I'm in character that sounds, again. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think... know. No, no one's going to win. The fans will lose. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be. <laughs> It's Kendall will win. Messy. Yep. He will kill them all. <laughs> Kendall will finally get a win. Amazing. Also, goddamn Wubba Jack. Wubba Jack? $508.30 from Wubba. Yo, thank you so gosh darn much. That's Not huge. to take credit away from the massive 50 from Ellie as well. Oh, no. Every, <laughs> every, single, every single dollar counts, and it goes towards such a beautiful cause. Every dollar goes towards a beautiful cause, which is an amazing thing. Um, I, I just got to say that the power of community is huge. And I can't thank you enough. And and not only that, when it's when it's supported by play and imagination and storytelling, it's even cooler. Uh, so thank you for everyone. Uh, that's what that's the, um, I just realized why he did it that way. Now we're yeah. currently at one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Although I've got another two hundred dollars from this moment. <laughs> yeah, Five about... moments. Thank you so much for that two hundred dollars as well, guys. We're, gonna, we're fast approaching that fifteen four. We're gonna double what we made last year. That's huge. Um, speaking about last year, I think we're gonna get this game kicked off. Otherwise, what's we're the, just gonna um, be. What's the, what are the other teams doing Starlight at at the moment? The other teams. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Like there's other oh. there's other people doing Starlight yeah. things over oh, this weekend, isn't there? Let's do the leaderboard. Let's do the leaderboard. Like leaderboard. Might be appro might, might be approaching second position. Oh, man, I think, yeah, they're because you know you know money for sick kids is good and all. Yeah, but but winning winning is better. Is better. Uh, uh, we're the, third. We're third. We're third. Yep. Second there place is someone sixteen thousand one hundred and seven. Oh, yeah. sixteen one. We can be that. Sixteen one. We can do it. We can do it. Let's uh let's show them how powerful like D and D and storytelling is. Let's go. I really, it would be really, really cool to take second. Um, okay, second for the week, though, guys. But also, that's just when you add top three together, top ten together, that's so much money for Starlight. That's oh, just yeah. amazing in general. It's huge, oh, yeah. Last I checked, I'll see if I can get it up. So Starlight, just with game changes alone, I think has raised over $2 million. Whoa! So, Twitch streamers coming together currently raising money for Starlight. From memory, their goal was 2.5 mil. Uh, and then they've, they've already cleared two million, uh, which is amazing. And like, wow. like just under half of that came from Wabajack Wagon as well. So that's <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> pretty good. Sold um, one of his islands. Hold oh yeah. <laughs> Many more, thank you for bringing your raiders here, 23 people. Um, we are here playing Dungeons and Dragons for Starlight. We've been here for 72 hours. Um, thank you so much for being here. We hope your raid was, uh, your, your, well, I hope your raid's awesome because we're <laughs> currently in it. This, I hope your stream was awesome. Um, I'm Josh Dredd GM. These are my fellow storytellers. They are from all across the wonderful world of the internet and we've come here for a good cause. Uh, and that is Starlight helping sick kids, teens and their families in times of, of scariness. And uh, the Starlight brings in a lot of love and light and laughter and just rem reminds everyone it's okay uh, th that uh, you are in this situation. We're here to help you have fun. Uh, and re remember that we are all in this together. So um, with that, I think we're gonna get into this play for Starlight. Uh, thank you all, everyone, for being here. Uh, no, 
Save your tears, Josh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, we are going to get this game kicked off, and I'm going to cue the music. Yes, go ahead. Uh I was just going to say, uh, sorry, I, I, I misspoke before. Uh, uh, Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is their is their goal. They have passed that now with two hundred fifty five thousand. Yeah. So I do, I did misspeak. So apologies for that. Two million was the collective they raised last year. So with uh, with all the Logitech EB games, all those guys coming together. So yeah. yes. <laughs> You guys ready should we do a little little recap rob has watched it all and helped me recap so i can i'm pretty i'm pretty well equipped in this in this Are rob we... would like to nah bro you take it go <laughs> <laughs> Dag! <laughs> why <laughs> i was innocent um okay uh so let me let me tell you what happened last time last time last year almost a year ago we were in uh one shots uh in in my home world Okanash um what we had found was that the stars were, were disappearing from the night sky and darkness was slowly encroaching on the world uh the party uh, for various reasons uh decided to go and just uh try and find out why this was happening and they were heading towards a town known as Faytoon. um going towards this town of Faytoon, they found that there are these dark dark creature, creatures of darkness um you, uh, you may have seen uh, on a previous stream uh, prior to this uh that we're we're in the area and very scary uh so this party in particular threw down a portable tower and then uh, camped inside of there and all seemed lost and that was before ganlin the astral sphinx tore open a portal and invited them into uh, into uh, their domain so that they could discuss what was happening. After the, a discussion of what was happening, he granted them all a wish, uh, and uh, for them for them to help aid the situation. Um, the only wish I believe that was used was Torig, which was like, "I will give you. I want to use my wish to protect my companions uh, in in this fight." The portal opened back up. They looked down into the darkness and they saw what they had to do and stepped back into the world of Okanash. Uh, yeah, so. That was a very, very brief, very brief uh, 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 recap with a one shot that happened almost a year ago. Uh, it is up on the YouTubes if you want to go check it out on our YouTube channel uh, now. Uh, and I will quickly apologize if I get any of the details wrong because it has been a year since I played. I do try my best to uh, re keep all that knowledge in my head, but sometimes it just hides behind the, the, the recesses of my unconsciousness or um, it jumps right out and then I just need reminding. So, yeah. All right. I think we're about to begin. Okay. Let me see if I can time this. Oh, no. Let me see if I can time this right. Let us begin. Stars bring so much cheer, hope, and wonderment to those who gaze up at them. People are guided by them write about them, tell stories under them, and even wish on them. So what happens when their light suddenly disappears? The booming voice of Ganlan, the Astral Sphinx, echoes on the minds of the gathered. Sand silts underfoot are in complete and impossible darkness. The city of Faytoon is choked by this darkness. And as you search for features, you can't see much. Those with dark vision are unable to see beyond the city's edge as they look upon it. All heroes that came towards the town of Faytoon are gathered. Please describe your characters. Are we going, are we going in order? Yeah. Oh. I am it's gonna take a little while to get used to going first, guys. <laughs> um, so standing um, quite probably at about half height of, of like a, a regular human is Delilah Winterberry with an absolute mop of curly red hair, a face full of freckles uh, and blue, blue, blue eyes. Um, she looks like she might even be able to get sunburnt from the moon. Um, it is, <laughs> she is that pale. Um, she is standing there with a short bow across her back, uh, a little bit of leathers across her as well. Uh, and she looks quite jittery as she looks uh, upon the the sight uh, ahead of her. 
Um, her, around her neck, she has a little blue scarf as well that sits and covers her shoulders. Mm. There are no stars in the sky this night. Very scant any light at all. Kragnuk, while you didn't come from the realm of Ganlin, or perhaps you did, you do stand beside those here gathered. Would you please describe your character? You see, a deep gnome clad in scale mail with his face covered with a mask, holding in one hand his trusted magical hand crossbow, and in his heart the power that only with his own darkness can those darker than him be crushed so that the balance of light and good will be forever in all favors. I screwed up that last bit. I'm, I'm, I'm evil, but not as evil as other people. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm trying to kill the evil people so that I'm the evilest, but I'm not that evil. So by proxy, it makes the world better. I'm sorry, you blab us a lot. Like, <laughs> Shut up, talk. Oh, is it that rain is yet? Night. It's not your turn yet. <laughs> Murumbe. Okay, well, Marembe stands there in, out, in an outfit that is not of an adventurous type. She is a court maid. She is wearing beautiful purples, silks, and velvets. Uh, she is nice and curvy. She has coils of brown hair and patchwork black and white skin. Um, she is a half-elf, so pretty average height and um she's gonna look pretty terrified at the moment and also really confused at the sudden companions <laughs> yeah. wait a minute <laughs> brayden looks different yeah. <laughs> yeah. so even in a party of a dwarf a gnome and a halfling the shortest in the group is actually krell a standing at only two foot eight inches tall the very dark scaled kobold has uh, has horns coming from the sides of his temples curling forwards in the in the uh, resemblance of a black dragon he has a, a lower left canine that's broken halfway up and a cleft scarred lip above it with a uh, out of his jutting snout he seems to have a constant scowl on his face and he wears studded leather that's shimmering and iridescent as if it's uh, magically arcane um, enchanted a thick metal canister on his right wrist with a nozzle pointing past the palm and a lever attached to it from from which he casts his poison spray and, uh, and, and, and ray of sickness. On the other hand, he's got a similar sort of battery pack attached to a, a leather glove with uh, metal nodes on the interior, inside of the fingers and palm through which he casts shocking grasp. On his back, he, ca he, he holds a large cuboid-like metal ca um, backpack, almost, that never came up in play last time, so none of you actually know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> around, his, uh, around his neck, he, hold he, he wears a, a metal collar, like a choker, a dog's collar, uh, through which he can alter his own voice and uh, uses his actor feet to, to mimic other people's voices. In his uh, ear, he's got like an earpiece that's uh, that both ha helps him with his uh, the fact that he's hard of hearing, um, but also uh, acts as a, a permanent comprehend languages spell. Um, and finally, around his ankles are bracelets, uh, almost like manacles that were once um, that were once ha shackled together, but are no longer. Uh, and they are obviously arcane devices, but again, they never came up, so you don't know, you know, you don't know what they do. Uh, but needless to say, just from looking at him, you can tell that this guy is a magical tinkerer. He works with items to uh, imbue his, uh, to, to um, overcome his natural uh, weaknesses, such as his strength and such. Uh, and finally, over his, over his um, chest slung is a, a bag of holding that doubles as a bandolier with a bunch of very tiny vials stuck into it of various different hues and yes. concoctions and smells. He's got the props, guys. He's got the props. <laughs> Boss, mate. He's got to have all of your props up. Talk. Um, behind Kragnarg, uh, a, a sort of somewhat... It seems to be a well-built man, but disguised in his large armor is, is quite a, a nimble figure. 
clutching at his shield, which has been vastly like repaired many, many times, and somewhat reinforced beyond what was which, what was thought possible. He, he swings his meat hook, which is attached to a chain wrapped around his waist, and with a snarl on his bald face, he, he sort of backs up and, and paces behind Kragnug. He, he's here for a reason, but maybe not so much as an honorable one as you adventurers. Torig. Uh, Torig stands near the front of the group, this four foot six dark skinned dwarf with this auburn mohawk and thick bushy beard, the sides of his head shaved to reveal these golden, almost like they look like they have been inlaid with metal tattoos on his head. Um, he wears heavy plate armor of his own design and over the top of that is a thick heavy rope from which hangs just a slightly smaller than average anvil that hangs off his hip. He has, carries a shield and a large warhammer. Um, as he looks forward, did you say we could see the edge of the city? The walls? Yes. At the edge of our 60 foot dark vision? You see this curtain, this veil that's pre that's, that your dark vision cannot penetrate. It's almost like this, this thick curtain. Looking around at the sudden voices. Who, who the hell are you? <laughs> exactly what I was going to ask. But right, remember you in the starry mass before, sirs? No. You see, you see that Krell notices the gnome in the party, and with the natural hatred of kobolds and gnomes, you can you can see his eye starts to twitch, and his hands go, and and the uh, glove starts to spark. What are you doing here? Oh, I was just out for a wander with my friend Tor. Talk, talk. Well, happens to be in the area, and thought that you boys needed assistance. <laughs> I mean, nobody ventures out here by themselves if they don't want a bit of a hand. That's why there's four of you ready. We could use all the help we could get with finding those stars back, sirs. See, that's what I thought. And those stars are bloody important, aren't they? Greg, no, those stars. Where are you for those stars? Let's get I... the stars. My favorite star isn't in the sky, and I want it back. <laughs> okay. You don't sound like you even believe what you're saying, but anyway. I have a favorite star. <laughs> Not you, I believe you, the other one. <laughs> Thank you. Mike, let's not ask questions. We, we're all here for the same reason. Are we? Mm -hmm. As those words Dad? are spoken, you can see that there are several others here that are often clustered, speaking to each other. Scrappy looks on with determination into the 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 um the, the, the darkness. Pearl is here as well, and so is uh, all the other characters that we saw in that starlight. They all are worried and wondering what they should do. Um, let's oh yep, go ahead. And let's see if we can do something about that darkness as um. Torig lifts up his warhammer, he slams it on the anvil at his hip. The sparks spark off around him and start whirling until they form one small sphere, which is going to arc forward 60 feet before it blooms into daylight. Don't know whether it will penetrate the magical darkness, though. Um, Mirembe jumps at the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's loud. It's, it's an anvil. <laughs> yeah. As that darkness is cast out from Torig's anvil. Daylight. Daylight, thank you. <laughs> you will hear. And then it's joined by another. And another. Oh, gosh. It's three of them. Oh, Mr. Krell, do you know what that might be, sir? Yeah, those are those. I sniffed something from my bandolier. 
Those are those things from the uh, that we were hiding from in the house before. Oh shit, my house! <laughs> uh, <laughs> smells quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's at this point that Krell realizes that they were inside of his instant fortress when they went through the portal to, <laughs> to Ganlon's place, and now he sent them back somewhere else. <laughs> so now I don't have my instant fortress. <laughs> And as no! each, each one of these tries is cast out, you hear more and more and more. And there is this almost choir of these, mono, uh, these um, melod, melod, uh, melodic tones cast out. Embraced. They, they start to push off. And you see that this impossible darkness is in fact a countless number of these creatures that were embraced holding the line of this. They start to float up in the air, their arms start floating as if they're in, uh, submerged in water, and you start to see a dark mist drift off their wake. These dark blue cold lights start to glow and intensify as well. The gathered here prepare for battle. Still don't understand why I was sent. Uh, we, can't, we, I, we can't take these things, so not, not as many of them as there are. Um, I, I grab out a little, um, a little, it looks almost like a jeweler's loop, and I just, I, I, I sort of twist it as if, like, there's a little focus ring around it to try and, like, like it's a, uh, a, a almost like a cross between a loop and a spyglass. It's got a little focus ring, and as soon as I twist it out of focus, you see Krell's image go out of focus as well, as he casts a blur on himself. <laughs> um, uh, so are these things within our range now, these... Not yet. Big buggers? Yeah, but... So Daylight is 60 feet of bright light and then 60 feet of dim light, by the way, just for yeah, reference. And, you can and actually 60 feet away from us. You can actually see the silhouette, silhouetted forms um, push back and they're actually staggered amongst one another. Almost like a swarm of these creatures, they start moving towards you all. We're, we are in a shot from outside and you can see them start drifting towards you, consuming all light. That dim light turning to complete darkness, that bright light turning to dim light, uh, and you just see these drifting blue lights. Well, I, I've no tactical mind, but maybe we could separate them and, and, and take them one on one? <laughs> no, not, not these things. Do you, rem do you not remember you got. And, and, and then there's a sudden flashback to a year ago, which, was, <laughs> which for us was only like a few days ago, maybe a few hours. I think like time's weird in the astral plane. Yeah. <laughs> but in my instant fortress, you went up to the second floor and looked through a, a, a slit in the wall, and one of them turned and pointed a finger at you and damn near killed you from, from fall. I think that did single... hit Pearl, not Remember though, right? Was it Pearl that it hit? I, ca I, I can't remember. So. Anyway, it was one, it of, it was one of the two of you, because then the other the one went on to process, grab them. Yeah. Either way, we yeah. have known firsthand <laughs> <laughs> that these oh, things man, can these almost one-shot us with a single <laughs> point of a finger. So Ragnog so, turns to talk, goes... We are either dead or rich. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to move. Let's get inside the city. Are you, are you saying that you're scared of these things? I'm, no, saying, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm saying I'm scared of them for good reason. All right. I'm, I'm always scared. Outside the walls. Grognog, what do you say? Um, hmm? yes. Follow the... The, the, the scaly one, yes. <laughs> Didn't think you'd like that. Um, I'll, I'll sort of pick well, up the shield and back on. Well, if someone has to be a meat shield. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like a, a, a meat snack. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the... Uh, how, so, sorry, I was just a bit confused with so how far 60, away they yeah, were. So you, were, you do have a, a, a decent distance because it was... Uh, Torg did use the darkness off in the distance. Mm -hmm. um, and you weren't standing on the city edge, you were looking upon it. So you do have some distance between them and you. Um, but you but can they see, are around the city, basically. Yeah. Right. You, you can see that they're actually consuming the darkness, uh, the, the light, as they approach you. Um, even now, from this great distance, you can feel their annihilating aura starting to um, eat away at your 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 physicality or even your your internal self, like your soul. It's very very scary. Um, as you watch this darkness approach, you're going to see uh, a character we met during the um, the last one shot. It was during the day. I don't know if you guys met the dragon or not. Did you guys meet the dragon? No, we yeah, were the other party did. Yeah, the other party did. Okay. Um, so this dragon. Uh, was saved by the previous party it's gonna look back and snarl and as it does it's going to say this is where we start sorry 
This is where we take our last stand. You hear the heavy uh, sounds of beating wings as it takes to the air, and as it does, you can see that it's wreathed with wounds from fighting these creatures, and it's going to start strafing uh, firelight uh, across, trying to push back the darkness. These creatures begin to shriek in this moment, and as they do, um, you hear, you see the others give a war cry and start charging forward. Um, yeah, go ahead. Everyone on me, make for the breach! As Torig is going to run straight for where the firelight is thickest, because no, assuming that they're going no. to disperse from there, and Torig is running. <laughs> Come on, Miss Marembe, we are got to stick with the others! The no. little Lila <laughs> sort of starts carrying after you. Curls, well, don't curls. leave me alone! <laughs> curls just s struck for a second into almost paralysis by the fact that there's a dragon here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and, That's cool. and, and we just right before going to the astral plane we were talking about how dragons are legendary and nobody's ever seen one before yeah. and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it very true. whether or not they were even real <laughs> and I, a dragon I, I love that mentioned it. I love that so much because let's say the dragon was standing behind Krell this whole time and it just swoops <laughs> over the top <laughs> yeah exactly hell yeah <laughs> Daniel, Ellie, and Izzy just spent the past like six weeks in game talking to a dragon. Yeah, but that's <laughs> after like two or three years of like pre build to that. <laughs> what kind yeah, of very much Torg just silver? While Great while worm. in the peripheral, he's like, there is a dragon oh, there. The dragon that's, that's amazing. That flew over the top. Yeah, uh, um, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was brass. Brass dragon. Oh, they, yeah. did, they did mention brass dragon. Yeah. In his peripheral talk, is like, yeah, there is a dragon there, but at the same time, he's like, no, we're here to do a job. I'm going for where they're dispersing from now. All right. Yeah, I know I know enough about dragons to know that the breasts would probably be helping us rather than trying to eat us. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, 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 let's go. I can, I can, I can, fangirl, I can fangirl about the dragon later. <laughs> As you all charge in, I need a uh, constitution saving throw from everyone here. Um, you start to feel that those that oh, annihilating baby. presence starts to eat away at you. Many of the heroes start pushing against them, and it's, it's a great struggle. You can see them fall to their knees and stand back up and try and push through this incredible pain uh, that ca that's cast out from this this darkness that encroaches. Uh, the dragon strafes, and as it does, you can see several of these creatures point up in the air and start using their um, their their. Uh, move called finger of doom uh the dragon uh starts to try to fight it but it's too much and it starts to swivel and you see it crash off in the distance sand kicking off uh in its uh, in its impact um um that was a, that was terrible so i'm gonna use my inspiration straight away <laughs> i also used mine and got a 12. oh for crying it was the same number I got a five. I got a five both times. So I will use my flash of genius to add six to it. Add six. Uh, taking me to a total of nineteen. I'm gonna use my inspiration to get worse. <laughs> Not a good I'm... start. Three of us <laughs> used inspiration and got. <laughs> I'm going to be rolling two d twenties, but they are for another ability to come up maybe later. So we'll see what they are. That's a natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you just got inspiration again, Rob. Oh, sweet. Thank you very much. I got a 14. <laughs> Thank you, Sparrow. You see several of these heroes gathered start falling, and then just, they just pass out. But many start to keep pushing forward, pushing against the, the incredible pain of necrosis cast off from that um, aura of annihilation. Uh, you can see the dragon off in the distance try to get back up again uh, and start to try and fly, uh, though it's... it's flight path is very labored as it tries to strafe again um uh, okay so what was uh what was the highest roll did, did anyone in the oh. 20s did, what did you what did you get talk uh, i got a 18 an 18 okay you're, oh an 18 was that the highest i got no, a 19 crowd okay uh, and anyone higher 11. than that okay anyone higher than that okay you all are going to take 50 necrotic damage 50 or 15? 50. Okay. Zero? Oh boy. <laughs> oh. oh. Right. <laughs> I'm really this glad it's a. This is a good way to, it's a good way to start the fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, two, with more than two thirds of my health. Yeah. The darkness can, can continues to approach. The, the noises of these creatures cast out into the, into the darkness. 
It's then that you're going to hear the voice of Ganlin as a wish coin has been used for all of you from our friend, Miss Bowman. Thank you very much for that. What? Um, not only that, in tandem with the wish of Torig, you start to see behind you light spew from behind uh, out and you start to see these celestial bodies walk. Silhouettes that are made from the night sky start to, to come out and you start to see many heroes from many stories come to fight at your side to push back this darkness. Um, I would like everyone in chat to put in a character you may have lost uh, or anyone else that has oh. had a character that they've lost at the table. They're here fighting for this cause and then pushing into this darkness with you. Um, all right. You start to see this epic scene of warfare uh, between two forces of good and evil. Um, at this point, because these two wishes have been used, you have a moment to push through um, I, what I'll need from you all is to tell me how you're going to push through this darkness towards your quarry. Or just describe uh, yourself going through. Um, Torig will raise his Warhammer shield up as well. The gods are on our sides! And will charge forward shield up. At the same time, he'll slam his hammer down to kind of try attempt to bolster his allies. I'm going to mass cure wounds on us. Nice. Uh, it's not a lot. Uh, it will get all of us though. Everyone gets 16 HP back. Hells yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm, above, uh, um, I'm back above out. half. <laughs> <laughs> the anvil rings out, the sparks, every single one of you actually feels the heat, this sudden burst of heat as these sparks land on your person before they sort of sizzle off and it actually restores some semblance of stamina to you. Hells yeah. Um, for those who are wondering, um, yes, Makari and Corbell are here. Yes! <laughs> I was just about to ask, is Wait. Makari there? Yep. Was Makari erased from existence? Yeah! Not all the stories <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh, and does that mean Thomas incredible. is here too? Yep. Thomas would be Thomas. here. Yep. What was the, um, what was the, the type of damage that we just took, by the Necrotic. way? Necrotic. Necrotic. Yeah, I figured it was. Mm. Okay. Is there any other awesome descriptions uh, or anything you would like to do before pushing through this this uh, darkness? Um, I use the uh, sparks as my light source, so kind of like running through one of those flashing lights. Um, I, I use it to guide my way, so I'm following Tori very closely. <coughs> Um, I'm, I'm just running. <laughs> very, little, very little my big brain can do for me right now. <laughs> need to, need to catch up. Plus yeah. running right. equals. Yeah. I'm going to shout out to Craig Nug. It's Craig Nug, information, mate. And I'm going to raise my shield and I start barging forwards as if to protect us both from what is to come. I Hell's jump it. on his back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm like um, on his shoulder and I, with this spiky thing on one hand, I pierce it into my hand, letting a bit of blood out, and I put it over my crossbow, activating my crimson rite of fire. Yes! Hells yeah! Dealing some, dealing some damage to myself in the process. <laughs> Seven damage to myself. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Stupid <Okay. laughs> gnomes! <laughs> don't, don't you get nothing on me. Now, as um, you, is you it your ahead. god stuck in a cave? And then we go... <laughs> oh, I was just going to say uh, to Krell Talk and Kragnug, um, because of the height train we had earlier, you would ha also have 10 temporary hit points. Um, that oh, yeah, been... sorry, the height bonus. Make sure you add those. <laughs> yeah, so just Thank heal you. yourself 10 HP. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Heal yourself an extra. And also, heal yourself an extra 3, actually, because all healing is increased yes. by 3, mm. as is all damage. What are we talking uh, about? So, do I damage myself oh. by 7? Welcome to heirlooms. I do the same. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, when you do damage on your turn, every instance of damage you deal increases by three. Yeah, and healing okay. as well. Because of the hype train bonus. For, uh, yeah. for everyone, for hype train bonus. Yeah, so oh, okay. you, get, you get level five hype train bonus for the next combat. So um, yeah. you have it until I say that it, the hype train bonus is off. So the temp hit points were eaten by that 50. Um, but you do have a plus three to damage and healing uh, as okay. well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so Delilah, uh, utilizing her, her roguish uh, abilities, um, sort of slips through between people's legs, uh, using her halfling nimbleness to um, get through just uh, as, as easy as she can, using her dexterity and her, her little form to, to get through, a little cape in the background sort of flying through. Hells yeah. 
I think as we as we run, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop out one of the red potions on my bandolier and and uh, cast healing word on myself. Yes. Okay. Um, you push into the swarm's darkness, and as you do, you see the heroes from the celestial start running by your side, helping you uh, get through, uh, clearing a path for you. And as you pierce through, there is this Im this incredibly bright light uh, in front of you. It's 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 pure white, and it, and it's mace. And as you push into the town of Fayru uh, Fay Faytun, uh, you do see uh, its namesake, a star that had fallen from the sky many 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 centuries ago. Um, and standing there above it, you can see the creature that we are all here to see you face. Let me bring it up on screen for you. Can't wait to see it in 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Izzy. No, it's okay. It's just my phone. I tried restarting it, so maybe it'll work. The Astral Dreadnought. Mm. Oh my. Now. It's spooky. We just um, need a big. We just need a big pot of boiling oh, water oh, and some <laughs> butter. You can it's see it's beautiful. <laughs> it's our future, mine. Ooh, I don't like the look of those. Those pincers. Pincers? Yeah, pincers. Yeah, pincers. I think the mouth is scarier, actually. Yeah. It yeah, is, that's a horrifying note. It is gargantuan, by the way, so it's it's massive. It stands higher than and than most buildings. Its pincers are placed on that fallen star. Uh, as it looks up, you can see its eye drift up towards you, and you see its mandibles open up. And more, there's another there's another jaw underneath there, and it, as it roars, you see saliva start to drift and and dip down and land on the star, um, coating it in some sort of like slick saliva. Roll for initiative, guys. Woo! Oh. Okay. Now, just oh to build the battle scene for you, as you look around, you can see those those forces trying to keep off uh, the uh, the Nightwalkers from approaching you to get any closer. Um, they're going to do their best uh, oh. to, to help you not take any of that no annihilation damage. Uh, however, there is something that is currently in effect here. If your character drops to zero hit points, um, you will your character will be lost here fair enough all right yeah. do i have an inspiration <laughs> yeah do we have inspiration <laughs> Can I have uh, an yeah actually yeah both of you do i think i'm the only one that doesn't currently have this okay i need to well, use it for it's for, for initiative though because that was terrible yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i used my inspiration as well oh. i yeah. rolled a nat 20 for in, um, initiative and didn't realize because it's a b Oh, because oh, Dean's Beyond. Yeah. Beyond. Yeah. yeah. I didn't Beyond. know. It's, it's I was just like, is that a one or a 20? How do I react here? <laughs> because it's a D&D &D Beyond dice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I read rolled that four I got and received a five. But I have oh. oh, <laughs> six. So that's 11. Oh. That is just two ones. You re rolled for an extra 25%. That's pretty, that's pretty good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good decision. <laughs> All right. Also, sorry that this is such an epic fight, and this is my character voice. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. We celebrate all characters here, and we celebrate all all all, all avenues of creativity. So Earth Neblin are allowed to be heroic too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, one hundred percent. Okay, so now um, I'll, uh, what I'll do is, is everyone's initiative in the game log? If not, can I get I everyone to just type? Get inspiration. Can I use it now? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Is he also got it? If you're not inspired, oh, you. if you're not Good inspired enough. by the many heroes from across the multiverse fighting at your side against this encroaching darkness, then I don't know what else will inspire you, my dear friend. Boing. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, man, this is, this is cool. I can yes. take earlier. Avengers Endgame was better. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So I use my inspiration. Use your 17. inspiration. Okay. Sick. Oh, see, I rolled mine in real life, so it's not coming up on the thing. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. Just uh, if you could enter it into the, uh, let's let uh, everyone enter your inspiration, uh, sorry, your initiative into the Zoom call, and I'll just quickly uh, add it uh, when I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm liking all these higher numbers, guys. I know. Yeah. Wait for it, though. <laughs> the beat was worth I'll it. Be, I'll be here when you're ready. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, there's quite a bit, quite a lot of. Yeah, you guys are doing great. We're uh, all high. Every one of us. Well every done, everybody. One of us, yeah. Well done, every one of us. <laughs> now, just just for everyone's context, by the way. Krell has a moment of breaking the fourth wall just to rub it in with the gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the astral dreadnought and go, "Oh, gold, the little gold." <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, just to, to give context here, the, the other characters are here, and that includes Scrapper the Goblin, who's out there right now fighting the, with the best, uh, the, the best that uh, that little goblin can, and, and so is Scrappy. M's character, uh, and so is every, every other character that is not here with us today that we wish they, they were. Uh, so, Scra Scrappy just redeemed inspiration for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Redeemed inspiration for Scrappy only. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That might get us a big smite, so I, I'm, I'm yeah, going to be so okay there, <laughs> That's a lot of dice. Wow, it sounds like some sort of big divine energy happened. <laughs> Smited one of the <laughs> big night <nightmares. laughs> Wow. I've still, got, uh, I've still got one of my nat 20 tokens Actually, from last time as can well. We, can we take stock quickly? Uh, how, who has what for nat, to nat 20 tokens now just for the yeah, uh, for, one. for Kendall and um, Thomas we had last time we did something called Road to Starlight and that was our pre-week event where we, we essentially had stretch goals that uh, the party got boons for when they came into the game um, which was that they got um, they got nat 20 tokens which you can choose to pick a nat 20 on an attack or a skill check or a saving throw it was very handy you've got one I left did you say Krell? I've got one. Okay, sick. I spent I mine one. to obliterate a mind flare. I've, I've, <laughs> oh yeah, and guys. we decided I spent one of mine on Batty, but I still. Have oh one. yeah. Sick. Now, um, uh, uh Mirimbe, do you have any? Easy. Easy. No. Uh, no, no, I spent mine. Okay, sick. You know what? Um, uh, at a good faith. Did you did you okay. spend the one that um that Captain Robert gave you? Because he gave I you did. one of his. You did. Did you? I think I also used it on Batty. Oh, yeah, wow. we, we went a bit creepy happy with that. Have you guys, yeah. have you guys oh. fought someone called Baddy? Her name is yeah. called Bera, well, but they named no, her Baddy. No, her name is Baddy. <laughs> she just has, like... We called she her was very Bat cranky and something looked a bit crazy. Bat -like she was missing her nose, so we were like, Baddy. Yeah. Oh, you're saying Batty. Yeah, Batty. Yeah. I thought you were calling her Baddy, and I was like, no. Red's red creativity that day was just... Batty, but in Australian. <laughs> fighting a bad guy and yeah, called Batty, Batty. Her name was... Rob, Sometimes her name was Australian Hel accents make words a bit confusing. Her name was Helpera. She was very cool, and she... And she... we killed her! Yeah! And we spent a lot of our big meta resources to kill her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, no, then no, I no. threw a rock at her. She was, a, she, was, she was a member of the Black Coin, and she had a really cool axe. And, um... Yeah, I have that axe now. Yeah. <laughs> she was a terrible, terrible person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so out of good faith, uh, I'm going to give, if, if it's okay with everyone at the table, I'm going to give um, uh, Thomas and Kendall a uh, nat 20 token, if that's yeah. okay. Um, I, I think will that's... not reject that. <laughs> I will take that. Uh, so that is a, that is an instant crit for you guys whenever you want it. Uh, which is yes. you can you can wait till after you've rolled and then replace in the nat twenty as well. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. You can be like, oh shit, now that was also, terrible. I'm going to nat twenty instead. Yeah. When it's used, like yeah, if you use it on an attack roll, um, a nat twenty from a nat twenty tokens is complete max damage. It's complete so max, max. Every single dice that is rolled. Oh, oh, yeah. I can't remember. Double dice and max. Double ma double dice and max. Yeah. It's just like, are a lot of fun. <laughs> it's just yeah. a really really big crit. Yeah. And you get to choose when it happens, <laughs> including on a smite. Which is crazy. No, Bobby got drunk after that fight happened, Miss Bowman, because she figured that, hey, she took a lot of damage. Drinking a whole barrel of mm. vodka is the way to kill <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. And now, the most barbarian thing I ever did. One, one last thing I'll say is uh, that that this approach, uh, you, you guys not having to, uh, to to get hurt by my beautiful Nightwalkers, was thanks to uh, Daniel's wish from Ganlin, but also Fire Bowman, who came to see us. We, get, we gifted. Uh, five Bowman or wish coin. So thank you for oh, using that. Uh, five Not having to get hurt with that Oops. fifty damage you all took. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for the wish. Otherwise, you get a short session. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's the six-hour session done. <laughs> done. Uh, I guess. I guess we're just hanging out now. Hanging cool. out now. <laughs> all right. So I've got the initiative queued. We're ready to go. I think it's time for some awesome battle music. Let's go with. Uh, are you guys feeling like you're winning? I think you're winning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us. Oh, yeah. 
winning players starting, it is. We're starting a fight with a, a CR God knows what monster uh, without uh, being on full hit points. We're definitely winning. <laughs> Doing so well. I love this music. And I'm using my my very special uh, my my very special anniversary die set uh, that I only use for special occasions like this. Um, oops. and. Okay, well, they're not rolling well. You'd think they would if I saved them for special occasions, but they're still <laughs> dice. They still have randomized numbers on them. So, uh, first up, talk. You see this? Right. In, yeah, you guys would be within 60 feet at this point. This huge, huge slug like creature uh, is holding this this star, again, drifting from its mandibles after it roars at you. Is this, this saliva that almost seems to catch the darkness and the light that, that's abound? What would you like to do? I'm gonna give Kragnug a gesture and say, all right, mate, let's give him a play 32. And I'm going to... <laughs> you know what that means as much as I do. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> play 32. <laughs> let's just make it. That's awesome. That's so and, awesome. <laughs> and I'm going to bardically inspire him. <laughs> I am. This is the weird <laughs> class, okay? That's so good. Um, and then I will brace up my shield and start to run towards this creature. Hell yeah. Now, quick question. Yes. In your inspiration, does it say any? Does it say the word magical? No. Then, then, then you are inspired. Then. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna probably be asking like rules or uh, answer uh, questions I should know, but it's only because I've got so much going on, and so uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna thank my my beautiful rules people here helping me uh, compute things. So uh, is that your turn? Um, I guess I'll take the dash action if I can. Yes, definitely. To um, double my distance. Yep, and you want to be right up on this creature. Yeah, I want to run into its stomach and use my charge feet in order to try and push it back five feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yep. you, world. <laughs> does does it perchance say anything about size categories on there at all? No, maybe. <laughs> uh, actually, wait. Does charge require your bonus action? Oh, it might actually. Ignore that then. Yeah. I'm okay. Just, I'm just oh, yeah, in its face. That, that was the reason it wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guess was like, oh, unfortunately, just I need to do a little too much of this turn. That would have worked, guys. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I use an inspiration. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm still gonna dash up in there. Amazing. And, okay. And and no, just for future rounds, in case it comes up again, there's no size limit. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. Yep. All right. Yeah, I got a, I got a paladin in one of my home games with charger, and he pushes back all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. So By the way, I don't even have charger anymore. Oh my god, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> okay. As you you. Oh, are you having an identity crisis again? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not again, mate. <laughs> Garland had charger. Talk does. <laughs> Talk does not. Yeah. As you as you stand up on this this uh, space slug, you can see its like writhing form. It's got this vein, as you can see on the picture, that sort of pulsates. Uh, as it looks down at you, uh, you can see it like it's titanic in size compared to you, uh, and it's going its mandibles shake and shudder as it uh, lets out a booming roar at you. <laughs> Spittle flies all over you. <laughs> Ew. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Out of curiosity, was yes. Kragnog still on the back of talk? Um, I haven't said I wasn't. So then <laughs> you would, this is is also covered in the spittle. Uh, you were there as well. Question? Uh, yes. Is my crossbow still on fire? <laughs> yes. Okay. The slug <laughs> magic. Oh no! Is it is it, is it saying magic? It's Hemocraft, which is blood magic. But does it say magic in anywhere in any of the wording? Let's magical I'm magic. Almost, I'm, yeah, I'm Death almost certain it's magic. Fear. Then it's not on fire. Yep, I will triple you check. My, uh, then get back to you. Thank you. Uh, yep, go ahead. Isn't yes, right damage is magical and lasts while yeah. you hold the weapon. So yep, anything yep. that has magic in its description goes as long as it's got you in its sight. 
Um, I lost 10 hit points for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's technically just suppressed. So, like, if you yes. get out of its thing, it yeah. will come back. It will yeah, exactly. start up yeah. again. Exactly. You just okay. need to get out of its cone. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marimbe. All right. So, I've never played a sorcerer before. So, let's just go. Except, except for this time last year. <laughs> Yeah. We didn't do any well, you know, combat. You probably <laughs> presently cannot cast a spell, though, Izzy. Yep. Yeah. So that is a question. Split up. But yeah. Um, would I be able to get out of this line of no magic? I'm just building the 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 scene yeah. in my head. Got thirty foot, sixty if she dashes. Not this, not this turn. You would have to push behind the creature. You can see that there is a clearing behind it. You just need to to get over there. Okay. Well, um, I will dash there then, um, and that'll pretty much be it because I am a sorcerer and that's all I've got up my sleeve. <laughs> Hell's yeah. Is that turn? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dash and. And I feel like there's lots of ducking involved oh, and, yeah. and lots of fear and screaming. Again. Actually, no, I think she's just screaming the whole time. She's running <laughs> and just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> feel free, feel free to use reactive descriptions. This battle scene, this whole thing is yours too. So if you're like, if I've put out a descriptor, you can always say from your character, oh, it's like that. You you duck and you scream with the battle exploding behind you with these celestial warriors fighting by your side. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with running and screaming <laughs> until she gets, until she, she sees like a little bit of frost come into her hand and she's like, oh, okay, 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 and then... Hells, <laughs> yeah. Dead. Okay, you do make it behind the creature with the 60 feet or you're just off to the side if you continue to maintain that distance behind, uh, you will be able to um, cast spells as long as you're not in front of it. Now, quick question. Um, what is your, what's your passive investigation and perception? Mine? Um... Let's find out. Uh, passive perception is 14, passive investigation is 11. Okay, thank you. Noted. I don't um, one thing anything. I will say, Josh, is um, just in case you're asking for the reason I think you are, which I don't know that you are, but um, last year Krell did roll like a 30 something on an arcana 35. check on this creature and gave us like yeah. the entire thing stat block basically. Okay, so give, me, just, give me the I characters gotta, sort of know what we're talking about. Yeah, I got yeah, a 35 in, uh, on history check and you were just like, you can just, you can just read the stat Hell's block. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So, so I, told know every, I told everybody, into. it's a, it's a yeah. bast bastard of a monster. It's got big bite and claws. It's it look at you with anti magic, and it, if it swallows you, it goes into a different plane of existence. Can you um? Can you actually give me a quick? Uh, can you send me in Zoom what you were thinking, just in case I don't I misstep here, uh, Daniel? Um, Wait, me? Yeah, just tell me what you no. think for the reason you think I'm, I'm oh, asking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, then, I could be completely wrong. I was just no, no, you that's know fine. that piece of information. No, yeah, no, that's a that, that I actually remember that now. Uh, it, it's been a year since this one shot. Um, yeah, yeah. But, that's, uh, one the, that's one of the things that I got my I used my net twenty token on is it, I got I got a plus ten <laughs> and then I used my uh, I used my plus ten and my my um, what's it called my flash of flash genius, genius and yeah. then also a net twenty token. <laughs> so I was just like, I am going to know about this creature. I want to know everything about it. I want to know where it lives. I want to know where its favorite <laughs> food is. <laughs> what happened to it in the in the past to make it this way? Oh. <laughs> Let's give it a therapy session. Um, amazing. Uh, scrolling down. Is it um, oh, no. Delilah so or the creature it's, next? It's something else. It's got to be Delilah Thanks. next. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Has it got any trauma? <laughs> What's its trauma? <laughs> <laughs> What's its trauma? <laughs> um... I was wondering if I was to try and find something to hide behind, do I feel the sensation of the magic coming back? Hmm. One moment. Because if it can't see me, <laughs> then it's... I'm going to say... You will have to move. Uh, you, you, there's a nearby bit of rubble that you try and test that with, and then mm -hmm. it, it, it concludes that no, as long as it's in an area, uh, mm -hmm. you will have to move out of that zone. 
Okay. Um, so little Delilah, her feet uh, kicking together as quickly as she can, uh, utilizes a bonus action and her regular dash to run um, as 50 feet to the side, if that makes sense, um, out, of, out of its range. Um, and then I will use my action and I'm going to try and hide. And as I do, I'm bringing myself down to sort of watch its movements a little bit more. Give me a uh, give me a stealth check now. Just a quick question: uh, yep. Whereabouts in the battlefield did you position yourself? If you were sixty feet in front, were you going towards where Mirimbe went, or were you trying to? Get um, I I would like to sort of move to uh, off sort of if like ultimate grid world would be diagonally uh, adjacent to it, so uh, I'm heading diagonally towards it, but okay. it's still away from it. Okay, sick. Uh, stealth check. Uh, get advantage. Uh, also, Schnitty G, thank you so much for your $40 uh, donation. We are at $14,842.89 for Starlight. That's massive. Boy. Our actual goal is $15,400 because that's exactly half of what we achieved last year for, you for mean the foundation. Double? Yes, double. <laughs> um, We're aiming for half. Not a good year. Uh, my brain, my brain, it's doing things. Yeah. It's, it, I'm, I'm doing my best. Uh, but we've been here for 66 hours because we we firmly believe that uh, play, imagination, and 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 love and light and laughter is something that the whole world needs, uh, especially children and teens that are in hospitals where it's scary and that darkness hangs around every corner. Um, Star like comes in with as much love and laughter and play as they can i'm not gonna cry um because it, it's important that kids feel like kids and uh we, we we can certainly do that here uh with each other as we we have a fun time playing dungeons and dragons together um uh, okay what was your result sorry 29 <laughs> I've done so well, well all weekend. <laughs> I've done so well all weekend not to not to burst into tears. That's probably gonna happen in the wrap up party. Twenty nine. Hell's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. That's your turn. Uh, yes, that would be my turn. As as Delilah um, finds the more rubble or uh, even more fighting that she kind of blends in from behind. With. Hell's yeah. All right. Uh, as you hide, uh, we have that cinematic view from uh, below. We can see that combat happening above now. You can actually see uh, Corbell push off the ground with her halberd and strike one of those night walkers down and it explodes into multicolored light like we saw yesterday, uh, making you look ever so cool and setting an awesome battle scene. Um, so. Hey, no matter what game I'm in, I'm gonna hide behind Corbell. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, it's your turn. <laughs> Krell shouts out, uh, just as we talked about, we're in a anti magic field. Wherever it looks at us, split up. And as he, I'm shouting this, as I'm splitting up, I'm going the opposite way to Mirembe. And I'm shouting, split up and try and blind it. Aim for the eyes. All attacks on the eyes. And I'm just shouting and sprinting. I'm using my action to dash. And I'm, and I'm sort of trying to spark my glove as I go to see when it comes back to see when I'm out of its range. Yeah, you get, you do dash and you do find while you're out of that range, because it is a cone, uh, you, you you do get your magic back after that dash. Cool. Uh, in that case, I will bonus action uh, cast something. Let me double check. Uh, what can I do? I can do this by manage... Ah, shit. I thought you could sort by bonus. Oh, there it is. Bonus actions. I could healing word, sanctuary, sanctuary maybe. Expeditious retreat, just to get even further, I guess. Um, so as I, as soon as I feel my magic, I'm out of its range. I, I, I reach down um, and and tinker with like I, I press a couple of uh, buttons on the sides of my my ankle manacles, and they shock the shock uh, the muscles of my legs to uh, into overdrive, and I just dash as a bonus as well, get even further. So I think by now, me and Mirembe are probably like on either sides of it, but like not mm. up against it. Hells, yeah. All right. Uh, next up, it's going to be Torig. All right. So Torig finds himself in the awkward position of every side is currently taken, and we don't <laughs> want to stack up. Um, <laughs> there are more than there are more than four positions on a clock. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cone. So. <laughs> um. So. Seeing above, it. <laughs> above or below? That's not taken yet. Why? 
Dig. Oh, Dig. Can you get off the ground? <laughs> is the it floating? The the dreadnought? Yeah. Right now, is no. it on the ground? It's okay. on the ground. Um. Well then, okay. So Torig wanting to still keep things correct will go the same way as Krell because Krell got a lot further than Marembe. Um, so around to that right, he is pretty slow. So with a dash, he only goes 50 feet. But if he's trying to just beeline straight to like, so that he's trying to go directly on the right hand, the left hand side of the creature, his right, its left, does he end up out of the anti-magic cone? Um, With 50 feet. 50? Yeah. You're 10 feet out. Yeah, I figured. Um, yeah, that's his turn then. Okay. All right. Now, at the end of your turn, this whole time it's been focusing its, its, uh, it, it's been focusing on this, this thing. It's then going to see you guys all surrounding you and it's going to whip its eyes around, its eye around to see the fight. And it's at this point, it's going to let go of the star. And as it does, it's going to look down at Torig. Uh, sorry, not sorry, uh, Torque and um, uh, Kragnag, and it's going to make an attack. So, it, uh, I would gonna, say it's been nice knowing you, but it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Spittle still like dripping down your form. Um, what are you guys doing as you see this mat, like gigantic claw pull off this star? It's still glowing from touching it. It's going to strike down. I would like to do my best to dodge this if I can. Okay. Let's do that it. was not prepared though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to use my. Wait, is it attacking me? Or... It's attacking both oh. of you. So I was thinking that if you guys wanted to like describe how you position yourself to decide who it's going to strike. I'm, t I'm gonna do my best to defend Kragnog. One moment. So sorry. Oh, I've. Just got told. You. Oh, I, I didn't think you counted. Yo, I, 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 I was counting down. I was like, I wonder when he'll see it. Yeah, he just <laughs> literally just ran into the room to say, hey, there's a new donation. $1,541.11 towards Starlight, bringing us to a total Holy of $16,384. Wubba Jack, you that. absolute champion. You're the. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's incredible. I'm trying to impose it, 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 so much dread here, but it, it's, it's all being replaced by love. <laughs> Josh, it, flashes of the sky coming back. You're, yeah. you're, all in, you're all in danger. You're all in danger right oh, now. Danger, danger, that's danger. right. Danger. Oh, scary. Rob had to scary. remind me yesterday. It's like, no, we're, we're, we're at this demon infestation here, Josh. <laughs> we're in a dread, dangerous situation. Dreaded situation. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get all the hearts in chat for everyone oh. that has supported us, including the the, the Wubba Jack who's just donated and brought us to our, our goal? We're over it. We're, 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 looks we're, like we're over the fifteen. We're over four. The 15 our four. actual Probably. goal now is twenty thousand. Our actual goal is twenty thousand. <laughs> official now. It's official now. We're we're probably in second second place as well. I imagine. Yeah, oh, I oh, yeah. Are we, oh, can we check that just quickly? It gets updated, but yeah. Who's in first? I've forgotten the Bird word. Is and with over a hundred thousand. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh mate, let's let's go. Let's do it. Leaderboard. <laughs> go right. Wubba Jack. <laughs> My brain switched off for a second because I are we are we ahead? Did it update yet? Oh, okay. Don't get distracted. Okay. Yeah. No, oh okay. my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. You're you gotta an give them worthy of the money they get. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, this this gigantic claw is now crashing towards Tork and Kragnag. Um, you want to dodge Tork, so I'm I'm gonna say that it, uh, if it's okay uh, with the both of you in this moment, it's gonna probably come towards Crag. Unless okay, you guys want to. Just... I have a reaction. Yeah. If it's coming at me. It is coming at you. Uh, blood. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it's magic. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Crack. No, no, it's, it's, I knew no. this would happen. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, think it actually says magic on it. Oh wait. For blood curses. What? Um, it is. 
Oh yeah, it doesn't it doesn't specify. Yeah, it has to say magic for it, it has to, to be to say magic. magic. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Very In that specific. Case, I can roll a D eight and subtract it from its attack roll. Uh, and yeah, it, is, it is it is it is immune <laughs> to this. If it is immune to blindness. And it is not immune to blindness. <laughs> oh thank God. Okay, yes. well whatever you Not only this, you... but if sorry, if it's attacking Kragnard, I will also my fighting style protection was is gonna play. Ooh, nice. And um you're gonna have disadvantage on that attack roll as well. <gasps> and you nice. can subtract so you're a bad with fighting styles. You can subtract <laughs> okay. I'm gonna right. work out what you are. <laughs> <laughs> so it's minus eight disadvantage, right? <laughs> Okay. Minus, minus D8. What, minus D8. Roll? What would you roll? A one. A one. Oh! <laughs> <That helps>. <laughs> <laughs> so that's So that's only a 37 to hit. <laughs> uh, so with a minus one disadvantage, it's actually going to be a... Uh, it's actually going to be a 20... Yes, uh, 20... <laughs> disadvantage. Uh, it's actually going to be a 20... Five. Oh god. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so yep. does it hit? So so even if you'd have rolled an eight, it would have been a seventeen to hit. No, it would have been a eighteen to hit. So for reference sake, I believe at one point in time the astral dreadnought was the biggest biggest of the gargantuan monsters in the monster manual, and it is right now slapping a gnome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Off my back. <laughs> Here we go. Um, okay, this is... <laughs> that precision? It's like someone swatching a fly away. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just like this, this tiny like, little and, point and from the, the precision And yeah. the gnome went, No! <laughs> she had to be like, Stop it! And then, Stop, stop it! That's uh, what you think! Blood magic! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gonna be 22 slashing damage as this claw oh, rakes across fine. you. That's fine. Um, can I, uh, 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 so can you describe how you maintain your hold on the back of Torque as this, this like, strikes into you? Uh, okay. He, he hits it off me, and I start flying back, and then I see he's got like this, do you have something like a hood coming off the back of your armor? Oh, please don't pull on the hood. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as I fly back, I'm gonna kick my foot up and like jam my foot in the under hood, and so it just like kind of gets caught on. And then I go swing back around and like just, I'm hanging upside to down. To upside down on his back. That's, that's better than just being oh, knocked man. off him. Oh, that's so great. Oh, thank yeah. you so much for gifting Schnitty G a, uh, a dragon egg. May you name it well, mate. Grow to age, perfect drink, mate. Use the breath up and all those on you and kill it. Let us accept all the shinies. Welcome on in. Enjoy the emote. That's definitely not a mimic, no matter what people tell you. Um, okay. That claw crashes into the ground, and you see this, uh, uh, this cloud of sand kick off in all directions. Uh, that uh, that is that what that's what happens there. So um, we are now going to go into. And that's not how I remember thirty-two. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, although Sentinel's going to kick in as it's made an attack against <laughs> a creature. Uh, uh -huh. well, maybe it yep. was. Is, yeah. Is protection reaction? Oh my god, I see. I don't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, check, I'm checking fighting styles right now. I can't remember. I think it might. I think you, it you, might use, you used yeah. your reaction yeah. to give it. Uh, no yeah. worries. Okay. Uh, no, we however, we do have a homebrew rule that I'm. I'm really think I'm enjoying. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make it more often because you um you um helped with the rules there. You guys get inspiration that you can uh you, you get inspiration or you you can give it to someone else if you like as well. Uh, because we're we're running a cleaner game, which is awesome. So I will yeah. take my own inspiration, as I am the only one without inspiration. Sick. You get it. <laughs> yeah. Over it. it just takes the sting out of us uh, making those calls, which which I really really do enjoy. We've got a hype train going, guys. Oh, if we get it to level five, we get ten HP again, guys. Yes! <laughs> Stack in that. Come on. <laughs> um, okay. So cool. the plus three stacks. <laughs> At the end of this current turn, um, the the uh, astral dreadnought is going to make another claw attack actually no it's going to use it's going i need a charisma saving throw uh from 
someone. I'm gonna let chat choose just quickly as we speak about uh, Starlight. Chat choose who has to make a Christmas saving throw here. I, I, everyone has equal reason to. Um, so please choose who you want it to be, and then we'll do the Christmas saving throw after this. These just quick words. Thank you so much for everyone that's supporting us tonight. As we do, uh, we gather funds for Starlight. We've been streaming for 67 hours now, collecting funds for critically ill children, teens, uh, and their families in times of, of great, great strife. Uh, so I, I can't thank you enough. We've done so much good. Uh, we're fast approaching our, our other goal, which is 20,000. That's nuts. If we get that, we are actually going to run a massive, massive game of Werewolf that's going to be uh, like a LARP, but a virtual LARP. We'll, we'll build a town in the Discord and we get to play together. There's a good chance that hopefully if Rob would, uh, would grace us with playing that he might be, he might reprise a role as a mayor. That sounds like fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm hoping that we can hit that 20k because I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we are getting names in chat now to deciding who's going to be making the Christmas save. Does anyone else want to say anything quickly about Starlight? If you donate $5 towards our incredible raffle, there is a whole bunch of prizes to win. Um, we have D&D Beyond codes. We have books as well donated by EB Games. We have so many things. We've got dice. We've got World Anvil subscriptions. We have an incredible, incredible art ba uh, dice bag crafted by the one and only Ardana, one of our moderators in chat. Um, we have um, dice boxes that are handmade as well. There are so much amazing things. So please donate. Uh, you will go into the draw. And yes, Starlight is an incredible foundation that is all across Australia that help so much, uh, not only kids, but teenagers and their families through many programs such as their wish giving and live wire. Uh, so please donate. It's an incredible charity. And we really want to hit 20k, guys, don't we? Yeah, let's we do. go. Let's hit 20. And you know, it's kind of perfect for a D&D stream to hit 20, right? You got it. Yeah, hit. you got to hit 20. Yeah. It's natural 20. 20. Let's get it. Uh, by the looks of it, it's going to be Rob. It's going to be Rob. Rob, can I get a Christmas saving throw from you? Also, uh, Renegade Chicken says, uh, thanks for bringing that rule in just for me so I can get more inspiration for all the rules learning that I do. Uh, you're very welcome. <laughs> so, I don't... All right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thankfully, I failed that with an eight. Ooh. No, sorry, uh, I have a ring of protection, so that's a 10 total. Um, ring, isn't ring there a poll in chat? Is, oh, is there, there a poll? Oh, yeah, there is, there is actually a poll. Oh, the, oh okay, so currently it's between Rob were... and Ellie. I was gonna oh, say shit. it's Rob and yeah. Ellie. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? All right, well, let's, let's, it's all, the poll's almost done. We just got In a massive... In the chat, only two people said L, but apparently, <laughs> apparently everybody yeah, everyone, else. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, by, by the way, for that massive hype trade. It does look like it's only Rob with 49%. Yeah, it's just at the end. Um, Final second. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let me let me quickly do something. Where are you? Um, Rob? Yes. Hello. The creature that you are fighting, the Astral Dreadnought, is going to move its titanic form towards you. Thank you so much, Robert Jack, for those all those shinies. So look, it's, it's formed towards you, and as it does, you see its irises flash both pincers snap in succession I, and then good my, my, my eyes go wide as i've uh, in the in the previous session we talked we, I, talk, I talked about how i knew all of this information and i i said i, I read read an account from a um, a crazy gnome um artifi uh, arcane wanderer and researcher who had gone to the astral plane and seen this so now i'm excited that i'm like i'm gonna get to experience it <laughs> i'm like yes here we go here we go hells yeah you disappear. I sit like a calm stance right before. Suddenly, you are shrouded uh, in, in darkness. However, it is not featureless. You can see around you that there are these giant orbs that are suspended inside of this creature, all tethered to what looks like a throne. Silvery cords connecting it, and sitting upon that throne, you see a decrepit uh, looking creature, humanoid, wearing robes and a big hat. For anyone that has the DMG <laughs> sitting on the throne <laughs> is a Syrac. What? I can take him, guys. It's fine. <laughs> you got this, girl. Easy, easy. <laughs> I'm just gonna Fine, I got a over here. This. I got, I got we this. We are so screwed. <laughs> We're good. Watch this. A oh boy. 
Oh, no. oh god. Oh, I, I don't. I can't see. Like Cracknock has no idea. It was like Kendall's like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that he's like, he's got his little wrist things going. Like, ooh, buddy. <laughs> Okay, Amazing. awesome. So good. Never have I been so happy about one point in a poll in my entire life. <laughs> we... We got a divine intervention? Oh, we did? Whoa, we did! My finger That's slipped. Actually, actually, Label already gave us one. We got yeah, two no, doubles. We already... uh... Oh, so we already had one at the start, didn't we? No, <laughs> Miss Roman did use the witch, never mind. Yeah, we Scrap have just got Scrap divided into me. Scrappy points out that I might be making out with a lich again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> not for the first time in a dread stream. Oh, okay, look, uh, just for a little context for our, our new friends, uh, Kendall no, no, and no Thomas. No, no, context needed. No, no, okay, okay. <laughs> they, they play D&D. &D. No, no, they okay, we get it, they get it, we get it. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I just want to know, does Aserik have his sphere of annihilation with him? I would say so. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Goodbye, Crow. I could save that from him. I've got a, I've got a probably a smarter oh, sure. mind than he does. Possibly. You could hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, the to the divine intervention work, maybe? Let us do a little bit of role playing as Krell is bamfed into this place. This astral oh, dreadnought has been feeding on stars, and not only has it been feeding on stars, it's been leeching that power to some sort of archaic artifact, a throne that now is uh, suspended in this silvery light. Upon it, a Sirac. All right. Um, so, firstly, what does Kren know about what he's looking at? Okay. Krell, uh, sorry. Give me an Arcana check. All right, this is a plus 10. Uh, that's a 29. A 29? <sighs> okay. What in particular are in you fact, trying to in fact, draw information In fact, information in fact on? just for, just to be, just to double down, make okay. sure that I'm, I, I know everything that there is to know about the upcoming situation. I'm gonna give myself a flash of genius. So it's a 35. A flash of genius, yes. a 35? Oh yeah, okay. What are you what are you trying to draw information on? The stars, the tethers, the throne, or the, the creature that sits on the throne looking creature at you? Creature that sits on the throne. Okay. For those uh, who don't know, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a Sirarak. Yeah, I just googled a picture, that's horrifying. Yeah. Bring Please do, because he turned up in, in a game I DM'd that Tom was in as well. Hell yeah, and actually... <laughs> and I'm, you were in, you were in. I was in that, and I, I yeah. love that so much. So when I was geeking awesome, out, yeah. I was geeking out about the one shot that was coming up that we were going to be playing with you, uh, hopefully being on. I, 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 was, I, I was hoping that you would come on, because for this reason. Sirak is such such a fun character, guys. Um, And, yeah. Is he, is he, do you get it? Oh, He's... another level five hype train. Yo! Yep. Yeah, and also, thank Can you so the much 10 for that HP? massive 10, H 10 temp. Yep. 10 and temp, guys. Thank you so much for that 10,000 uh, shinies that was given to us by Wubbajack. Thank you so gosh darn much. That's massive. Jesus, uh, so Wubbajack. Yes. Take that. Do please do take that hype. Uh, <laughs> that hype bonus. Um, I'm gonna bring the the ace picture up uh, on the on the on the stream here, uh, and I'm hoping that. Um, I'm hoping that people get my my little my little joke that I've laced into this situation, which is a Sirac is my ace in the hole. So uh oh, <laughs> nice. 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 <laughs> um, here is a Sirac. Um famous across the lands in many stories and in, in many places, uh as much as like Kendall has said, uh Sirac appears everywhere throughout the multiverse. Um what is written here? Uh, is uh, a Sirac is an archlich who travels between worlds and is known to take sick pleasure in devouring the souls of adventurers who uh, whom he lures into trap-ridden dungeons where they suffer horrible deaths. Uh, one such dungeon lies under the lost city of Omu. Uh, this dungeon is called the Tomb of the Nine Gods. So this is from the Nine Gods thing. Uh, needless to say, uh, a Sirac is a lich who travels the multiverse um just for, for any reason consumes um, this is a very dangerous individual and you may even have heard of of this uh this creature before uh Krell, uh, in your many readings there is theories yeah. on on lichdom and it it has been seeded into into this world of okanash that you know about though the ritual hasn't been fully uh fully uh, propagated uh so the fact that one sits before you 
It's very scary. Did you... So, important to know. Yeah. So, uh, apparently, I don't know enough about the lore of uh, Sirarak because um, I don't use Forgotten Realms stuff, but yeah. uh, Kendall says that he normally has a Sphere of Annihilation. Is that right? Mm. And are you saying that he does or does not have it? Because this may definitely change what Krell does. He definitely has it. You can see he has it, it bobbing nearby. And I recognize what one is because of my plus 10 arcana. Yeah. I know I've, I've heard of them or whatever, mm. read of them. Okay, um, cool. With your 35 arcana check, <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can tell that what is happening here is a Sirarak has been eating the stars, draining them of their power. To what end, you are not sure. You can see several stars that are blinking out uh, of light at this point. You know that the Astral Dreadnoughts aren't generally allowed to leave the Astral Domain, the Astral Sea. Mm -hmm. However, one that's been harnessed by a Sirac most certainly can. Yeah. Okay. Um, Krell instantly just goes into assess the situation mode. He doesn't say anything, doesn't move anywhere, just, just takes it all in trying to... He's in the data collection phase of the uh, experiment. <laughs> Not to metagame, but I ran Tomb of Annihilation once, and I think a Cerex are higher CR than the Astral Dreadnought. Awesome. <laughs> that's, Sweet. That's just for that's us. That's just for, that's just for you for having... I, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I can't... I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the case. Awesome. Anyway, it's... Uh, have fun, Krell. We have a dragon, though, so it'll <laughs> be fine. I'm, yeah. I'm all good. I got this. I'm pretty sure both are higher CR than the Brass Dragon as well. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Not by a lot, what? but by a little bit. By, by a level, by a CR or two or three or four or five. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. It's really hard to harness Dread in such a positive space. <laughs> We're all just having so much fun. I'm happy. You're happy. We've raised so much money for, for Starlight. It's really hard to get back into this like this this space. So give me a second as I gather my thoughts as we watch Krell flick his eyes back and forth. Um, the, the BBEG has been revealed. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need some... It's not my turn in the initiative, is it? No, but we're in a uh, we're in a uh, role play break. We're point, in a pause. So, okay. Yeah, I, so we're, we're in I a pause. I think I'm going to need to, and then I think I'm, we can go back to the initiative while I think on what's happening because there's a lot to take in. So I, okay. I I'm I'm currently just standing there assessing what's I going like on. I like that. So let's do that. If that, everyone's okay with that, uh, we, it'll yeah. help me rebuild up the tension as well. But thank you for that reveal. I was I was. Oh, you have to rebuild the tension. You have to rebuild it. You rebuild the tension. <laughs> Sorry, Kendall, this is the most Kendall. tense I've ever been. Rebuild the tension. <laughs> rebuild the, the tension. There's the most dangerous lich in existence inside, inside the actual bread north that you're fighting. So, um, as, as luck, I guess. Yeah. As, as, as a whole army of night walkers gradually push in against you. But, you know, yeah, if it's not tense enough. Had the opportunity to become a god, turned it down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because he would rather be able to manipulate gods with endless power that he can get from Lichdom. Sorry, I'm not a fanboy. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Kendall, could you? Could, uh, you you're doing a much better job with me uh, with my adult adult mind right now, uh, filled with love and positivity and weariness from streaming for 67 hours. Could you give us a little bit of a rundown of who Asirak is uh, as a fellow fanboy? Uh, look, um, well, now that you put me on the spot, I'm probably going to screw it up so much. But, you know, once, once a mortal became a lich and has just ascended above and above and above, the only way to kill a lich, as we all know, is to destroy its phylactery. A Sererak, however, has created a demi-plane of existence where no one knows where it is or how to get there, and that's where his phylactery is. So, you know... So, I'm just saying that he'd be able to do this. <laughs> if you reduce him to to zero hit points, he's just reborn again soon and comes back and will, instead of trying to kill you, screw with you for the rest of your life, and your <laughs> and your children and your children's children's children, because that's just the kind of guy he is. Oh, I love it! I love it <laughs> okay. so much. Krell, we hope that you start with like something positive to say. Maybe ask him how his day's going. Try <laughs> <laughs> uh, diplomacy. I think that might be a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, I think that might be the off? only way. Oh, ha, ha, give, give me the layout of distance between him and his, his sphere of annihilation. Uh, how far his sphere of annihilation is from here? Yeah, where is it? Is it behind him, to the side of him? Is he petting it like a dog? What's, is it like in front of him? Has he put his foot up on it like a footstool? What's, how's, what, where, where is it in relation to him and me? 
It's just next to you. It's just sitting there. It's just, it's just, it's just hanging here. <laughs> he put the keys on the side table. <laughs> it's, in a, it's in a mini bar fridge. Just <laughs> opens it up. Just opens it up. Like, oh, do I want a beer or do I want uh, annihilation? <laughs> the beer is called annihilation. He just has to cover it up. It's a yeah, it's intense. Uh, some annihilation. <laughs> let's say it's about 20 feet suspended above him and it's just sort of like it's, it's just uh, moving around. Uh, aimlessly, okay. almost like you would imagine cool. a fidget spinner. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> just, just, just like a, a just, halo of annihilation. Yep. 20 yep. Feet <laughs> just, just playing fidget with this spinning. fidget spinner. What happens? What? Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you, you had your hand raised. It's like, oh, what's nah, going on? I was just doing the motion he's doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Well, uh, Kragnag, it's it is it is your turn now. Oh, great. Uh, well, I don't know what's happening inside its stomach or donjon, as we know, Nicole. Uh, so, I'm trying to remember what uh, what tactic 32 is. Uh, I believe, <laughs> sorry, get back at the character. I believe it's when I jump off his back when he gets into melee and try to get it on the side. Uh, so, I have 40 feet of movement. Do I run... How, can I get around, or, or, or not in its eye, but... From your current vantage point, being at the axis, you could easily break to either side and get, get behind it, yeah, with your, oh, with your not, movement. Not leaving melee range, though, because that could go bad. Sure. Anyway, do it if you want. so as I, um. as I leave its eye, does my crossbow reignite? Yes. Excellent bathing your face and your mask in that beautiful warm light and i look up at it trying to devour the light and i say you beautiful bastard <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is not you are a fool though you pretty thing it is not the role of the darkness to devour the light but to be a canvas upon which the starlight can paint and you will Die! And I shoot three arrows and just like and I will roll. And hope I hit it. Get it. <laughs> um also that line mm -hmm. that was dope. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Yeah. I've been trying to I've been trying to think of something for the last oh, hour. <laughs> it's so sick. It's a weird well, it's definitely idea. paid off. Yeah, it's like a cool one line is. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just like I'm a I'm a dark edgy character, but we're trying to destroy evil and ed, be good edge it up. kids and stuff. I'm, I'm I, like I need to I need to bring it anyway. Yep. Edge it up. <laughs> um okay, so just quickly I have typed in yeah, chat yeah. for you guys and the Zoom chat. We have two divine interventions on the table uh, by my count uh, at any point if you want to use them let me know um if not we'll refund those points uh when when we'll they, they have one per game yeah well, that's okay <laughs> one per game and uh, uh, lab labels actually gifted too so labels been with us for a while just uh, 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 in the in the background uh, I've, I've seen them uh, so they have a, they've spent a hundred thousand uh, omens uh, on on the starlight so far uh, thank you so much for that that interaction that's huge uh, but uh, but it, if you if you guys want if you guys don't mind taking two i don't mind but at the same time uh let's just whatever you think is fair okay that's it sorry that, that's a 22 at 25 and a 30. 22 25 30 all hit but i will take away the 22 and cash in Ooh. Yes, I, the crit. Oh yes. yes. So that is instant max da max damage. So if you have anything that goes on top of it, like a uh, like a smite or whatever else you can you must do, you can you well, can add that. It's a, it's a D8 of crimson right damage. Okay. Mm. On top. So that's so it's twelve plus sixteen is twenty eight plus seven plus seven thirty five yeah. thirty five on the first hit. 30, Unless there's uh, any more damage to add. Yes. 35, then then the other two hit as well. Yeah. So 37, four, I'm just counting up. 42, 49, 52, 58, 61 damage, half of it magical, piercing the rest, fire. 
Okay. As your flaming uh, missiles screech into the darkness, you start to paint ac across that canvas. As you do, they dig deep and you start to see this uh, this sluggish darkness start to billow out of its wounds. Plus and nine it, extra. Plus nine extra. Oh, yes. Okay, three so hits. 70, uh, oh, which, is, yes. which is awesome. Uh, you can see the Astral Dreadnought uh, look over with those first two uh, that got hit. That darkness glugging out of the wounds and uh, 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 this uh, extinguishing the light from the fire. But that's when that last uh, flaming missile screeches into its eye, blinding it temporarily. You see its eye, is cl its eye, its eye close um, and it lets out that, that horrendous uh, sound again. Its mandible shaking and shuddering in, in response to that. <laughs> You um, nearly adopted the dark. I was born. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, that that's exactly what happens as you see its eye closed. Um, guys, uh, for now, it has the blinded condition. All right. <laughs> is that your turn? That is everything. Yep. Okay. At the end. Uh, sorry. At the end of that turn, do I want to do anything here? It just took 70 damage from a gnome, so I, I assume it's, <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's I feel pretty there, humiliated. There, 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 there's a new legendary uh, entity on the battlefield right now. Not this battlefield, but another battlefield now. I'm just double checking to see if anything is going to happen with that. Give me a um, give me a wisdom saving throw, please, uh, Krell. Oh, Krell. Uh, mm. Wisdom save. Yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Oh, yeah, that's a. That's not good at all. This might fuck up my whole devious plan. Um, does Krell see anything in combat? Does he know what this effect is? is it, does it seem like it's an aura of being in here? Or is it coming? Is it like a spell that's being cast from. So, what is actually happening uh, as mindlessly so I I Sirak to... plays with the sphere of annihilation? You see him drift his gaze from looking above at the stars that are being leached by this magical rite. Yeah. They drift down, catching that silvery light, illuminating the, illuminating those eyes. Um, and then you are now being gazed upon by a in that case, I will. In that case, I will use my inspiration. <laughs> okay. Because I don't want to take that nat one. Oh, oh um, wait, 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 oh. wait, Bountiful Lava, you're I, not losing anything. Not, no, you... I'm not even on the same plane of existence. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, and I, I, I really, it. really, really hope that M will draw this art piece, because I this Sirac sitting uh, on a throne with stars that are being... M leached. has a lot to draw. Yeah. And I you're guess. meant to stop telling her to draw things I know, when yes. you're on stream if, and if, people can hear you. If, yeah, I know, but if I have my word... That's like a rule that's been <laughs> set. No, it's been a rule. That's the rule. You do it like three times a session. I know, I do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Emma's been drawing an incredible oh, art yes. piece. So. Yo, if you guys haven't seen the key art, oh, this could be a, this. What, okay, just just quickly. Okay, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Probably doing a very very special very, very. save. Yeah, I am going it. to. I I don't I don't know what the effect is. It may fuck up my whole plan, but I can't afford to lose a wisdom save against whatever this is. So I'm going to cash in my nat twenty token. Because uh, my, my inspiration roll was only a seven. Okay. So uh, with your a nat inspiration 20... got replaced as well. Oh, and I've got it back in immediately. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, so that is a total of 23. And if I... Let me just double check my flush of genius ability check or saving throw. I can use my reaction to add six to it. So I'm going to do that again. Uh, so I'm going to be... That's going to be a 29. A save. 29? Okay. All right, as a Sirac gazes upon you, you do feel at the edges of your, your will, fear setting in. With that, that, that spark of uh, that, insp uh, that inspiration and also flash of genius, you push off against that, 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 flash of that. flash of genius is me going back to reading about the biological effects of fear on the brain and how it's how it's just a surge of certain uh certain in, not in often certain um I'm trying to think of the word 
what is it that causes fear it's the adrenaline and the you know the, the different parts of the brain that are causing me to feel this fear and so I, I i sort of use my intellect to push through it and be like nope mind over matter i'm not scared he can't he can't do any more to me than being out there <laughs> would anyway I love i'm no so much. more i'm no more in danger here than i am anywhere else so. i love so much that you're changing Just your where... brain chemistry to push back against fear with yeah. flash of genius <laughs> I, that's so cool i believe i believe the fear center is the amygdala but i amygdala. Yeah, i was gonna say amygdala and i was like it. i don't know because i just learned about this in therapy and but can i remember <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so i'm like nope nope i'm 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 in charge of my brain i love that push back so against it. much okay so as you push back against that um you're going to hear sirak say one word it's all he needs oh oh i see you got the uh, shit so you got the turn before me damn it interesting you see him shift in his throne uh with every movement you feel the power as he leans forward maintaining that gaze there's a great deal that i find interesting a rack, right that is one of my names yes is it is it my turn? Can I actually move? We're gonna leave it there in tandem. Cool. Building that incredible scene. Um, who's are we? Uh, it is uh, so that was the end of Krogneg's turn with a, a legendary action. If I'm tracking correctly. Yeah. All right. It is now the Astral Dreadnought's turn. You can hear it roaring. Its mandible shaking in frustration. It's flailing about at this point. As the Sorry, I accidentally pressed my, my mod button. Uh, as as the, the arrow is still inside its giant eyeball, um, it is currently blinded, which means that for uh, for the going forward, um, you guys don't have to worry about the current just yet. However, that doesn't mean it can't make its uh, attacks. Um, it did shift its gaze towards Krognag. It's going to try and attack you with disadvantage due to the blinded condition. Um, it's first going to um, make a, a, a bite attack. You see that mandible shake and shudder as it starts to lurch forward. Uh, this this incredibly uh, huge uh, space slug is going to try and bite you. Do I get my reaction back because it's been my turn? Yes. Let's try this a second time. <laughs> uh, also, pink magic. Not magic. Uh, also, pink, pink deadlies are on as well, so I'm gonna use my oh, pink deadlies. No. <laughs> okay. Minus three from the roll. Minus three from the roll. I love it. Blood magic. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Disadvantage. So it's going to be 19 to hit. That'll hit. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> oh wait, no wait. Uh, it was minus, how much was it? Minus three. Minus three. Sixteen. Sixteen will miss. Oh, Ooh, okay. Yay! There you go. All right, all right. So, uh, how can you describe this? This we're, we're trying to make sure we're trying to a new way of describing about the combat battles here in Theater of the Mind. When a miss happens, you describe the miss. So the attack is being pushed forward. That huge lumbering uh, astral dreadnought is diving towards you with its double jawed uh, bite. As it comes in and it gets caught by itself, I say blood magic, and then I spin to the side and i find the area where like the teeth don't quite clamp down and i'm just like in the middle of it silt kicks all over you at this point sand and debris but you did manage to to miss that right there <laughs> Uh, however, finding not finding you there, it's going to reach back and one of its pincers is going to come forward to you uh, at you at disadvantage due to the, the, the blinding condition. Well, so is this while it's next to me as well? Uh, yeah, so it's 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 next to you. Uh, so it, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't target multiple attacks at once. So it is deriving most of its attacks into one area. So you aren't mm. being targeted uh, at the moment. Okay. Um, however, did you would you like to impose yourself? Uh, so that you you do take the attack i'm open to that well I, i'm yeah can, okay. can i force myself to in into the yeah. situation yeah exactly yeah definitely do you, do you have your reaction back yet it needs to so, be like no, no. Your so you don't need a reaction i just is just going to help me choose Sorry. a target uh so we're doing uh so for that for sure oh, um oh. yeah yeah so i don't know i i'm i was targeting you 
uh, Krognag, but I'm more than happy for Torque to come in and be targeted instead. Uh, so please describe how you impose yourself to help. I'm going to use my massive shield to, to once again try and find that space between uh, the pincer and, oh, I, I guess, this monster's now mouth. Yeah. <laughs> where he's, he's seeking to strike Krognag as... Yeah. I, 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 yeah. This is... I'm sorry, Krognog, you gotta live, mate. Yeah, I love it. So here's the thing. Um, it would have been a natural 20. However, disadvantage due to the arrow in its eye. Uh, it's actually going to be a uh, 30 to hit though. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are going to take 20 slashing damage as the, the claw comes out flying towards you. I'm just going to belt the shield out of my hand and scrape along my chest. <laughs> um, feeling that connection, it's going to maintain its attacks against you, Talk again, making an attack at disadvantage. Another pincer comes out flying towards you. It's going to be a 23 to hit. That does not hit. Ooh. Ooh. Now, please describe how it misses. This time, now that it's swinging from the other direction, I find the strength to maneuver the shield back into place. And instead of glancing across my body, it, it, it grazes across the metal, sending sparks Hell into the air. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it looks so sick. Hell yeah, that's dope. Um, all right, that's its turn. I'm almost dying, but it looks incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so how much damage is it? Arrow, you beautiful angel. Uh, 20 damage? 20 damage from the first, yeah. and then the other one missed, which was which was great. All right, cool. Okay. All right. We're going to just pop in ever so slightly back inside the dungeon where Krell is right now. What does your name know? My full name is Okrella Krella. Hmm. People call me Krell. I love what you've done with the place. Very bright. Starry. It's poetic. And I'm just starting to walk towards him as I'm going. Is that a sphere of annihilation? First time seeing one in person. Yes. It what's is. the what's the distance between me and him? Um so I am gonna say we're in a role play scene here, so technically you're not in combat yeah. until yeah. we kick off. So you can move as close as you like within one action. Oh, in, uh, yeah, so within one cool. action. So got, you can got, dash if you I got want. All the I got all the movement, so I was yeah. just wanting to know like how much of it I would need to mm. use to get to him. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll actually do movement and stuff on my turn, but yeah, I'll, I'm just kind of looking around the place, trying to keep that fear down. I love it. We're going to pause it here with that and then move on to Talk's turn, who's just uh, pushed off that massive blow. Talk, what would you like to do on your turn? Um, now that I'm so close to it, I'm going to grab my meat hook, which is attached to the chain around my waist. I'm going to sink it deep into its flesh. Yes! Make an attack roll! Uh, Ignore that noise. Uh, you, you, you roll the d20, and then... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's only a 17. A 17? It does dig deep and rake across the form. However, it's no, not substantial damage. It's very much like a paper cut on a giant thumb. Uh, you do see some of its gluggy uh, darkness pour out of its wound. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't seem bothered or phased by it. So that's technically a miss, but it's uh, it, you still hit. Okay, miss for the hits. Yes. <laughs> I, I will accept that. But with my... Uh... As it is an attack, I will now tr attempt to make an even like a, a bigger attack in the other direction. And this time I'm going to drive it with both hands and use that critical. You're using your critical? Okay, uh, yeah, I would love yeah, to use that get critical. it. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I'm so happy I gave you guys these critical targets. You're using them so <laughs> flipping well. And I want to drive that into its stomach and I want to make that attachment. We are not leaving each other's side now. Yes. I, I am not getting... 
It's a poor decision. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm going, going to so regret much. it. <laughs> no, you gotta roll with the alligator if you want to survive. Okay, now you get to do instant max damage. You don't have to roll dice. You just need to total the 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 max of what it would be. Uh, if you are adding anything at all, just take that into account because that's also uh, a part of the max damage. Well, it's adding the divine smite. <laughs> <gasps> yep. There we go. That's that's why. Yep. That's why that disclaimer is yep. there. <laughs> go ahead and pump into it. So, so you, you have paladin as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so using a level three um, okay. divine smite. Yep. Yep. Here it, it comes. Is going to be a total of. Oh my goodness! I haven't even done the maths yet. It's okay. While you're doing the math, let me take this quick moment to say why we're here. We're here for Starlight. We're collecting funds for sick kids, teens, and their families in times of darkness. Much like this, um, being in a place of great fear can be can be terrifying. Obviously, because you're in you're in a fear place. Um, but it doesn't have to be. If we 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 uh, we build and foster community and support wonderful foundations like Starlight, um, we can push back that darkness and we can help people by being creative. Um, and doing amazing things together and starlight does that in spades what they do is they bring love light and laughter to uh these terrifying situations maybe not a sirac uh maybe not a sirac won't be there but uh it definitely other things are there that need to be pushed back against uh so i think i'm making sense here um you are. yeah uh what starlight do is they bring uh they bring that love laughter and light to those situations by bringing um video game consoles uh, uh art packs shirts that have uh like your favorite character on them so you can feel like yourself again and, and show people who, who your favorite character is uh, excursions making wishes they have an amazing uh uh program called livewire which is uh, a, a, a digital platform that it, it lets them communicate with each other uh in in these times because community is important uh, and they do a great many other things and that's why we're supporting them and we've blown our, our original goal of twelve thousand dollars out of the water and we're fast approaching the twenty thousand mark which i really hope that we can do because we get to play werewolf together in a live role-playing game with as many people as we can get 99 people is the max so uh yes uh, uh, please consider donating if you if you've already donated or you can't donate that's more than okay thank you for being here and supporting us uh, as we as we tell our story so uh did you did you get that math yeah so it is yes. a 41 total so 41 Ooh. total hells yeah um now is that is that double so you get your 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 smite and then you get to add another to, to, uh, top on top of that so like uh, I have not added beyond what is the the total. Okay, so you get to uh, you get to double that total. That's ridiculous. And no. The eighty-two. But that's 82? that's why it's a nat twenty token yeah. and amazing. Yeah. Smite and crits, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I was like forty seems a bit low, so I'm just double checking. Yeah. Did you double, yeah. double that? I think that eighty is about a good range. Yeah, well, that would be it. Yeah, sixty-four damage from the smite itself, and then your other stuff on top of it. So yeah, is it so it's meant to be more? So and 64 and then plus the the my standard little meat hook thing which mm -hmm. is the reskinned um war pick which okay, is so 1d8 plus 16. one so sorry maybe i didn't maths. get it. 80. Maths. 82. 80, 82. 82. We'll go 82. 82 i like 82. 82 is a add <laughs> another three because of the uh the hype train oh, bonus, yeah, hype bonus. So 85. 85 yo okay so please describe this this staggering blow that you reek, reek across this space slug that looks like a thumb with a big eye it, on it it's a strange <laughs> it's a strange moment as it isn't a huge strike but instead like a consistent application of force and then hooking it into its skin and turning it back out i've created this anchor that i am known for oh i love that so much And blooming light starts to kick out. Uh, you've done a massive amount of damage, and uh, I'm just gonna say it without description because um, m my brain be doing weird things. Uh, yeah. The creature is juiced, aka it is bloodied. Oof. All right. Um, you are inside this after that staggering blow from Torque. You are going to hear this this roar, uh, Krell coming from all around you. The stars shudder in response of this and Asirak looks to the to the surrounding area and as he mm. does, he's going to say, oh, you're resisting. Good. 
Seems like your pet is having a bit of a harder time than you might have expected. Hmm. So tell me, Ocrelacrel. Did I get that right? Ocrelacrel? Yep. Ocrelacrel. Ocrelacrel. Why are you here? This is this is uh, the thumb with an eye and yes. claws. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that? Can I get a screen for that? I'm gonna try and get it. It's a, it's gonna get it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Amazing. Why Tent are you tense here? Moment. <clears throat> Why are we here? I'm looking for her. She has the power to bring my family back. Someone of your power, someone of your knowledge. I wouldn't be surprised if you know where that. And I curse at him in uh, in draconic. I wouldn't be surprised if you know where that Uchtak Gal Glittergold sent her. I want to know. I know, and I can tell you. Then what can I do for you? I'm gonna leave it suspended right there as we move on. I'm hoping I'm doing really well with building this tension. Yeah, man, it's good. Marimbe. Okay, um, well, I have become exhausted from the dash, so I will kind of crouch down and <laughs> lean on my knees, catching my breath, and then do trying to get my magic back again because I'm so startled that it disappeared in the first place. Kind of like someone trying to light a match, but it's just not working. There it is. All right, and then let's just let's just do a sixth-level witch bolt because I've never played a sorcerer before. So let's just do it. Start with that. Get it. <laughs> let's just. Roll, damn you! Ooh, wait, Izzy, Izzy, transmute it, transmute it. I transmute it as well. To cold, because you're a you're a draconic sorcerer with cold damage. You want to do cold damage? I do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was my idea. Oh no! Wait, did I already roll that by mistake? Anyway, um, do I have inspiration? <laughs> I'd be surprised if you didn't. No, you do. Yeah. Yeah, no, you did. You got it at the same time as me, and I used my. Wonderful. Again. Let's go to my real dice because they're nicer to me. Oh, that's cocked. D four on it. Hmm. Put the D four on it. If it sits on it with the D four. I already picked it up. No, no. <laughs> okay, that's much better. That is twenty nine to hit. Twenty nine hits. Okay. It's huge. Yeah, I have a plus 10. Oh, now I have six. I don't think I own 60. Oh, no, I do, but I'm not getting them out. So let's use D&D Beyond for that. Yeah. Oh, there's so many dice on the screen. <coughs> that is 28 cold damage. 28 plus six cold from damage? Draconic Saucer plus, plus three from Hype. So. So 37? Yeah. I forget what number you said at first, but yeah. 37 damage. Hell yeah. Um, At the end of uh your turn actually no 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 never mind never mind never mind yes however yes so can you please describe what it looks like <clears throat> well the 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 cold frost finally catches on my hand almost like the opposite of um blue flame it's it's like you can see the heat being sucked from the air and then she's gonna throw her arm out and shoot for its head aiming for its eye because she not paying attention she's scared she doesn't know its eyes already blinded <laughs> she's just gonna shoot straight for the eye uh you see it hit that lid and start to frost back from the from the 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 transmutation that you you did uh starting to frost kiss the eyelid uh as as you can see the arrow start to just sort of like fall out at that point um yeah hell's yeah Turn. she is visibly disgusted <laughs> Is that, is That's that your my turn? turn. Hells yeah. yeah. Okay. Back back inside the dungeon. 
you see the uh the room shudder and shake again those in tandem stars shrink and shake uh, as well doesn't seem like you've got a lot of time to kill yes it tell does me where she is i can help you seem like i will need a new pet what say you oh krilla krilla would you like to be my new pet tell me where she is i'm making no deals I don't believe you have a choice. <sighs> you want to know how I know about a, such a rare item? And I look up at his sphere of annihilation, and I've, sl I've slowly been moving towards him. This bauble. Such yes, a rare I do thing. wonder how you would know of this. I read about it in a library. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called the Accursed Archive. I, 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 I sort of smirk and I say, or oh, maybe you know of the man who runs it. He's a oh, fuck, and I swear again in uh, draconic for the uh, sort of a derogatory word for a gnome. And I say, he's a gnome, Kieran Inkblood. I believe he has aspirations to be like you one day. I've noticed Kieran, yes. Maybe you tell me where she is. I help you take him out. And then you swear fealty to me, then. You we'll see if your information is good first. This whole conversation is coming from behind a uh, a hand, almost like this, resting. You have stirred this slumbering uh, entity's interest, and that's why its word at the start was interesting. Mm -hmm. One of Krell's favorite words. I'm hold that tension just a little bit more. We're going to go to... Uh, Delilah. You did, Ellie. Okay, okay. Uh, so, um, Delilah seeing um, the enormous crab monster um, just behind the, the legs as she's walking past, um, she lines up uh, her eyesight to where uh, this monster's eyes are, and she says, um, uh, Okay. Oh, no, wrong voice. Oh, sorry. Right. Anyway, she grabs out her little pendant around her neck uh, and it starts to glow as she's like, he, Krell's taught her this spell before and it, he's always told her to look for what's around her to find the the answer. So she reaches in and gets a bag of ball bearings, uh, opens it just a little bit, and she casts catapult on the ball bearings, aiming directly at the eye socket of the monster that's now got the fresh frost on it, so the intention is for balls to stick into the eyes. Get it. Yeah, boy! Get it. <laughs> so, cool thing, this is where I don't know how it will go very well, because uh, it has to make a deck save. Okay. <laughs> This 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 space slug is incredibly dexterous with, with a minus hey, modifier. Only, and I rolled a natural one. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, then. Okay, now, sorry, I didn't need insult to injury, but uh, okay, dice gods, I, I see how it is. I see how it is, dice gods. Uh, however, luckily, I am going to use a legendary resist here. I am going to change that legendary resistance to a five. With my portent. Mm. You change the legendary resistance because you only change the base roll. Uh, no, uh, the portent actually works to replace the roll entirely. So instead of him even making a roll, he, it just becomes a five, which means he can't use legendary resistance on it. Yeah. Technically, uh, you have to say it before he rolls, but I don't know uh, if Josh wants to be that pedantic about it. Well, the dice gods gave me in that one. So, uh, I, I, the writing's on the wall at this point. Guys, guys, just note, witness me. I'm going to give them the, uh, gonna give them this, this, go ahead. Yeah, that's gonna fail. Just, uh, don't give me another nat one, dice gods. <laughs> or give him all the nat Don't ones. do that. <laughs> okay, so, the catapult damage is not that great. It's 18, 
uh, as the ball bearings fly up, but it's the result that I, I am hoping for okay. is uh, a thousand, <laughs> a thousand ball bearings <laughs> going to its eye. <laughs> <laughs> shut. Fuck you, shut. <laughs> All right. And that, I don't know yeah, if I should add sneak to that. You're using the ball bearings, uh, the, the the ball bearings item the, from the from the PHB. Yeah, so it's just a little sack of ball bearings. Okay, she's see. opening it just a little bit, and she's gonna cast catapult to. Yes. Okay. So fire it forward. They fly off and they uh, hit against the eyelid, and you see several of them stuck the fresh frost uh, as described that gluggy darkness from the wound from the arrow is also pu uh, pouring on and holding on to them uh, and it's almost like throwing um, a, a glitter bomb <laughs> uh, at, at someone that has glue on their face it's just stuck <laughs> there uh, okay is that your turn um and then she will yeah I i'll bonus action hide again okay because i'm a rogue and that's what they do now i am going to ask for a wisdom uh, saving throw from everyone that is 60 feet with uh within 60 feet of the uh this space thumb what saving throw? does this count as 32 space does this count as a magical effect on which a gnome would have advantage on the <laughs> roll no Okay. Um, um, and what saving uh, cover cover doesn't uh, so the you still need to make it as well wisdom. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Um, also, are we are we marking them off uh, on the if mods are you marking them off if you're here? Um, and you just let me know if you've got them or not. We're not using brutal I, saves as well, which is great. I will use lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will use lucky. <laughs> Fine, 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 dice. I will take oh, the fourteen. Is it not I will take the fourteen. I also got fourteen. Eighteen. <laughs> so. Thirty-two. So <laughs> it says on on the stream that I have inspiration. No, but you used it I... last time. Okay. Yeah, used it on your turn. Yeah, Everybody's. Everybody's yeah. just re redeeming them as soon as we've using them. Though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I you will. Don't oh, see, I don't see another one for, oh. for Marembe. So okay. that's a six. Okay. So <laughs> who got uh, who got higher than um, a twenty? Who got twenty? What did everyone? Uh, what's the next one down from that? Eighteen. Okay. Anyone higher than eighteen? All right. Uh, you're going to see this uh, creature pull back, snapping its pincers like this, its mandible shaking, kicking off spittle to the air as it lets out that roar. <laughs> uh, that happens. And then there, there is this, this projection that's pushed out in all directions. The battle of the night walkers and the, uh, the celestial forces get kicked off as well. Uh, Everyone uh, from uh, everyone apart from uh, Torig, uh, Torig uh, is going. Yeah, Torig is going to take uh, twenty psychic damage. Oh. All right, Torig, you're going to take ten psychic damage. All right, there's the temp HP gone. Yeah. All right. Um. Now that was um, that was your turn, uh, Marimbe, and no, then Delilah's turn. Oh, it's yeah. Delilah's turn. Thank you. Sorry. We're back uh, inside, where uh, a deal is is not being made because you're not here to make deals. Uh, what were the last words? Uh, <laughs> here, 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 here amazing. Me. Yeah, no. Uh, I I said that I'm. Um, I want I want to know if his information is good first before I agree to anything. I'm not making deals. Look, Cradle Cradle, you understand that I could kill you with a snap of my finger. I would then take your soul and exact... Sorry, not exact. I think it's extract. Extract that information from you. But you have interested me. And so, I ask you, are you able to maintain that interest? 
Because if you are not, well, you are just like the pests that surround my pet. I think you'll find this very interesting. It's my turn now, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. I, I say, I think you'll find this very interesting. You see, as grotesque as that gnome is, the information in his library is beyond compare. Not only did it have information on how to brew potions, I pop a, I pop a, uh, a potion that's in my, in my bundle here. I chug it down, and my um, my ankle bracelets stop. They, they die down now as I, as my expeditious retreat is oh, is gone. But then the the potion kicks in, and I cast haste on myself, and I start to move faster, and I move, and I start to walk faster and faster towards him. Say, not only did he have informations books on how to drew, brew various potions. Not only did it tell me what a sphere of annihilation is, I get to within ten feet of him. And then I say, as I reach down to my, my bag of holding and I open the flap from it, and I start to pull the bag of holding forwards as if I'm going to show him something that's inside it, I say, but it showed me how to control one. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to try and uh, contest a check, arcana check with him uh, to try and control the sphere of annihilation. Yes. Now, it's a contested what, sorry? Contested Arcana check. Arcana check. Using. Oh, get uh, it, Krill. <laughs> using using a like a supreme god level demi uh, le liches. Arcana. I've rolled a natural twenty. <laughs> oh, shit. I was afraid of that. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I, I, I my hands are up now. I'm gonna take my phone. I was afraid of that. I'm gonna use my inspiration to I'm roll take a photo to see if I get it. one anyway. I, I'm gonna roll take a photo question. of this. Yeah. Rule question: Is Porton? Do I have to see them for Porton? Uh, double check that for uh, me. Yeah, I think it says so. I'm pretty, pretty uh, sure. Da, 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 the role you can da, da, see, I'm pretty sure. When you, da, da, da. Now, if you, you check back the instant yep, rape, so replay, which I hope everyone does, you see my hands went straight up. I didn't touch anything. Taking we, a photo of it. We believe you, Joss. Yeah. I know. I just don't want you to think so, I'm stealing your start awesome now. <laughs> I'm not a fudger. Not a fudger. So what is his modifier going to be? It's going to be through the fucking roof. Okay. Let's see. No matter what happens, it was a great plan. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still going to work. It's still going to work. I have I have contingencies. It's still going to work. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. This is, this, is, we, this is how we play Dungeons & Dragons, Thomas. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we don't play around. <laughs> All right. So with, uh, I'm with my... So sorry, I'm going to send this to the Dreadstagram so everyone can see the natural 20 on my beautiful uh, 45th anniversary D20, which has a sapphire in it. So go ahead. My... Uh, my group are like cobalt shit. droppings into a leather pouch. That's what happens. In my <laughs> <laughs> with my uh, with my insp uh, with my inspiration, I rolled twice. I got an eighteen. Eighteen plus ten, plus six from Flash of Genius. I'm gonna that'll take it to a thirty-four. Still pretty compared. Let's. Thirty-four is pretty good, but it is against a nat twenty with a, a lich. It's not gonna be enough. Yeah. It's it's gonna be close. Which is fine. Forty-two. <gasps> okay, okay, that's fine. It tells me what Plus tells me what I'm going to be. Twenty-two arcana. <laughs> it's fine. I got this. We can. I can still do this. Fuck. <sighs> you can't oh, make you just, this you up. Just, you can't make it you up. Sure? You just pissed it off. Like, yeah, I pissed <laughs> him <Yeah>. off. <laughs> <Yeah. But laughs> made him angry. I pissed him off, but there's things up my sleeve. This because. Um, however, so it is, it is. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. For the people who, uh, that would be my action, my hasted action, so action to drink, hasted action to try and use object, um, and then my movement to get to him. That would usually be about the end of my turn, but for the people who are watching at home that don't understand where I just pulled out this library and character from, Renegade Chicken, one of Dred's uh, common, uh, common uh, players. Amazing player. Private messaged me <laughs> saying, if you want to, I have a take a turn uh, token, an extra turn token or whatever they're called that you can New have. Time token, yeah. Okay. And I yes. said, I can do it if you tell me some backstory about why it would have inspired. So because I was at his, because I was at his uh, library specifically, I'm going to 
take one of his three time to tokens to take another turn immediately, which, because I'm hasted, means I have two actions, and I'm going to try again twice if I have to to move to get control of this uh, okay. sphere of annihilation. All right. Uh, it, it stands. Okay, so you're using you're using Renegade's time tokens right I'm now. I'm using yeah, I'm using Renegade's um, time tokens. So you're trying you're going one at a time. So okay, go. Go and ahead. I have I have uh, so I have my first my first of my two hasted actions. I'm gonna try again with an, another ar contested Arcana check. I'm gonna try and steal his steal his sphere of annihilation. Okay, so we go Do another contest. Yeah, Emma gave it back to him. Uh, now, awesome. just awesome. just, you, just to give a little context here, uh, context here, these time tokens are only available during our twenty-four hour streams. You can only get them by being on the twenty-four hour stream, a uh, marathon stream, and uh, for every four hours that you're a part of, uh, you are you are a, you get one token, and then if you go, if you last the whole twenty-four hours, you get a time. You get a time charm. Um, Thank you, now, Jack. <laughs> uh, I know it's epic that we are being given um, time tokens from from uh, from Zach and then, specifically uh, Zach as well. He doesn't use his uh, yeah. items. So what I'm going to say is that we are currently on a massive marathon stream. It may also makes sense to me here that everyone that's played here for at least four hours gets a time token um, uh, that they that they can have so uh zach thank you so much for offering it but rob played four hours on the marathon you can use your own uh, but hold that for, for for yourself dear friend because they do come in handy in these situations uh and that this is rob's time token that we're using if, rob, right. if, he, if he wants to use it after this one i'm okay with that as well so we'll see how his one goes right now all right <sighs> okay I only need to I only need to outroll him by six on the dice. Okay. I can't I can't check as I try and grab the sphere of annihilation from you. You have advantage. I don't. Right. No, I got given uh, advantage by Phoenix uh, Iwaki. Hey. Yay! Was it for, was it, oh, was it yeah. for anyone or was it for Scrappy? Oh no, Scrappy the Goblin gave Scrappy it. Scrappy, Scrappy. Scrappy I've got Phoenix. Scrappy. I've got a Phoenix Iwaki to, one. To so. But we can't stack inspirations. What do you mean? I I have one. I'm gonna use my inspiration here. <laughs> it's not stackable. Scrappy got his. So what you're telling me is, if I die as Krell, it's all Phoenix Iwaki's fault. Yep. Everybody, yep. Think. You can take yes. it up with John. <laughs> here we go. How and, do I give you inspiration, GM? You're not <laughs> actually allowed to do it if you're playing. If you're in the playing, game. You can't, <laughs> but you can do it. You can do it. Uh, you can do it if you are uh, a player from a different game. Okay, cool. I've got I just my want resort. to make Ace Daddy happy. <laughs> Ace Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got my result. The uh, the, the 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 flooding um, potion that's coursing through my system it's it's throwing my brain off a little bit. I got a little bit cloudy mind. I only got a, I only got an eighteen, so I'm not even going to bother with my flash of genius. Twenty. Ah, uh, sorry, forty. <laughs> but hasted action use object i'm gonna try again okay i don't have inspiration so it's just gonna be my normal roll at this point and rob didn't get his back either so this is straight roll to straight roll oh i got this what did you get oh do you want me to say first uh yes yeah 27 you've got this rob oh you've got it without even having to use my last flash of genius i got a, I got a 24 uh, uh, yeah 24 so what'd you get a 27 27 24 plus my last flash of genius for the day takes it to a 30 and as i take control of a, a, a serorax sphere of annihilation that was by your own word 20 feet above him i can now move it five a, a number of feet equal to five times my intelligence modifier of six i can move it 30 feet i'm going to bring it down on top of his head <laughs> and even if he succeeds the save against it i'm going to try and annihilate the throne that all of these stars are tethered to <sighs> i'm going to bring it down down onto onto him he needs to make a dexterity saving throw question yes head or throne i uh, he's sitting on the throne right so i'm going for i'm going for his head going and then the if head he, first. and then if he succeeds his dex save then i'll i've still got 10 feet of movement with it that i can do something else with Dex save from the is the deck save is from the sphere, right? Yeah, deck save. So he has to make a deck save, and I think from the he has to make it DC. It's I think it's only like a DC thirteen for the item. Yeah, DC thirteen. All right. Oh boy! Oh boy! 
Okay, so deck save. Just checking all my. Just checking everything right now. Just checking everything. We gotta get it. Okay, um. Okay. Now. That is going to be a. 16. That's fine. He dodges. He sees it happening. He realizes that he's lo he's losing control of it to this this somehow stupidly intelligent tiny little kobold <laughs> who brings it down towards him and he dodges out of the way of it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of the rest of the movement. It's pretty much the same space as the throne, so I'm gonna yeah. bring it into the throne instead. Um, it just down one side if I have to, but if I can break more of the tethers, I will. And it obliterates all matter that it passes through. So right. I'm just gonna <laughs> obliterate the throne. You start. It artifacts starts... are the exception. What's that? Artifacts are the oh, yes, exception. Artifacts. I don't know what the throne is, but yeah, true. artifacts if it's an are artifact, the exception. <laughs> then, then it will be. It won't be obliterated. All right. It's... I still have a secondary backup if this <laughs> doesn't get obliterated. It strings <laughs> across the throne, and as it does, uh, a, a chuckle comes from uh, a Sirac as this happens. It doesn't affect the throne, and it hasn't All hit right. a Sirac. You do hear him so go. <laughs> All right. I still have 10 feet more movement that I can move it. And I said that I was 10 feet from him. I'm gonna, at the last second, as it, as it sort of glances through the throne without affecting it, I'm gonna pull it 10 feet right towards me. And then I'm gonna, that's why I was holding out my, uh, my bag of holding. It's going straight in my bag of holding. If the sphere comes into contact with a planar portal, such as an extra dimensional space, oh, such God. as a portable hole, we have to roll a D100 and it could, the sphere could be destroyed. It could go into the space, or the third third option is what I'm hoping for because it's the most chaotic and amazing. <laughs> Do you want me to roll and narrate what happens? Yes, please. I, I, I am oh more God. than happy. <laughs> Bro, I am happy that you're having so much fun here, and I, I am hope, too. I'm just, hoping I'm gonna ask that it's you, above an 86. I'm going to ask you to maintain that fun. It's, it's peak as I just let everyone know we're here for Starlight. Please consider donating. Go ahead, Rob. Having a heart attack. <laughs> it was an 81 okay oh! so not an 86 meaning the sphere moves through the portal into the extra dimensional space and the sphere is now no longer on this plane of existence it is in my bag of holding as i as i grab it okay. i close up the bag and i say <laughs> Try and control it now, and then I use the rest of my hasted movement to get as far away from him as I can. <laughs> now, quick question. I just want to remind everyone, we have a divine intervention on the table at any point from LaBelle. So if anyone wants to use a divine intervention anywhere, let me know when and where. Uh, but for now, uh, this if you're, could, if you're this happy with this situation... This could be a fun time to use divine saying, intervention yeah. to, make, to make that an 86. You want to make it and I would like to if if that's something I can do, I would like to if, make if that. If the an party's are okay with that, and if everyone else is okay with that, uh, if we want to head in that narrative direction, I'm more than okay with that. So, what does everyone say? Thumb up from everyone at the table. This is okay so with it? Uh, Yeah, do it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So as the as the as the arcane magic of this sphere of annihilation, this this exceptionally rare uh, item enters this other realm of portal magic into a different dimension the two magics collide the two the, the weave the magic of the universe that's holding these two items together just can't handle this it doesn't know which one to to, fo to focus on above the other a spatial rift tears open between the two and each creature and object within 180 feet of the sphere including the sphere get teleported to a random plane of existence Holy moly. That could be any plane of existence. I could be in, in the elemental chaos. I could be sent with... I'm sending me and Aserarach and everyone else to, like, the the negative plane of energy or something. Now, now How does this work with the Astral Dreadnoughts? Yeah, that is, that is yeah, question. that's the one thing that I'm wondering. It specifically... Thing, yeah. No, I've looked this up as well because I knew that this was my plan. <laughs> and I've had lots, <laughs> oh, of, oh, lots of you, to look ahead. Even, yeah. Getting into the Astral uh, Dungeon is only accessible with a wish spell. But getting out of it, you can get out of it by any any planar transportation, any planar travel, and this is definitively planar travel. So this will this will take us to a random uh, plane of existence. My big question is, what is technically in range 
is the astral dreadnought in range of their own it, it, interdimensional the, space, the, or is it just the, an interdimensional space? Look at us peeking out. It's interdimensional this... space within its thing. It's it's this not like, actually inside this it. It's peak D and D. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, however, yeah, the the, the, the reason, pocket like, dimension say, does have true. bounds, right? So it's like yes, it does have it does. a wall. It does have a floor. Um, the question so technically is. The, Technically, the ceiling and floor are within range of the spell, but the walls of the, the cave are not. Arguably, Actually, they're because... not, because the demiplane is a thousand feet in diameter. So the ceiling... Diameter? hundred feet. Sorry, yes. so yes. I said ceiling hundred, and floor. I said ceiling and floor yeah. are within floor, range, uh, the yeah. walls are not. Yeah. Shall we... So Shall I would we... I would argue that the Dreadnought is not going to be teleported anywhere, but me, a Sererak, if the throne counts as an object, uh, if the stars counts as objects, they're all teleported so to a different plane of feet. So it's feet, just yeah. a Krellacrell, uh, the throne, and the the Krellacrell's Krell ready is, to go down. Is what you're proposing <laughs> here? Is yeah. what you're proposing here? Me, me, a Sererak, the throne, and potentially the stars or their tethers or something, all teleported to. Fuck knows where. Sorry. Okay. All right. No, no. It's fine. It's a big D and D. Um, he apologizes yeah. for that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I want to complicate this more. Yeah. But dungeon visit as well. At the end of the target's next turn, I, reappears. I reappear back where I came at, from. Yeah. At the space they just came from. Oh, uh, 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 you're talking about the uh, the the legendary move. The thing that sent me here. Yeah. The legendary yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you blip back out. Is that what it says? This, after. The targets next turn they yeah. reappear in the space that is left behind. <laughs> How many turns have you been in here though? Is this the first? This turn? is the end. This, this is, is the end. This of is the, the end. Of this is the end. Of the now. Okay. Does he use the time thing? So is he just going to theoretically teleport a Sererak and the throne and then <laughs> teleport them elsewhere? He go to like and just the other back? Uh, or is he going to pop back? Did it say? <laughs> did it say from? <laughs> we'll find out. Did the keyword say in that description from. You At teleport. the end of the target's next turn, the target reappears in the space it left, or in the next, or in the nearest unoccupied space, if that space is occupied. Just reappears at the end of my next turn. I reappear where I was. In the space it left. If you if you want Krell to just end up wherever, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with I'm you're happy with taking. You're, com you're combining two very out there yeah. effects and deciding which one takes I, precedence. I wonder if this is the first, <laughs> first time that this has happened ever. Before. I hope so. Partly brain. It's, and dragons it's, live on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably the first time that's been caught on Twitch or or live yeah, with like, an audience of uh, 136 people. <laughs> Congrats, so, Josh. You're the first GM to probably have to make this ruling. What happens when someone willingly leaves the demi plant? Like if they spend yeah, does they come back again? Plane shift or something? I imagine that one's been answered. Somebody, somebody's yeah, asked that, that on Twitch well, that would before. Be the surely, same. Twitter. That is effectively Jeremy the same Crawford, thing. If you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> please weigh in. <sighs> Dungeon visit. It would be amazing. What I'm what I'm hoping for is that you roll a random plane of existence, and it's just like the negative plane that just immediately annihilates both of us. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, or it's like, oh, it's the positive plane because then it would annihilate both of us more guaranteed than a Sererak in the negative. Oh, probably up. survive it. Okay. Uh, Sarah right. will come back in one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he's just gonna come back. Um, I could, I, we could, it could <laughs> teleport us into the heart of the elemental chaos, and we just both burned up and crushed and suffocated yep. and drowned and instantly. Where's this table I'm meant to be in rolling in? Uh, it just randomly, it just says a random one, so. <laughs> We would we would have we would have a little have... bit of downtime in the time that it takes for the lich to reform and get back again. We'd have that <laughs> yeah. that time to deal with everything. Uh, let's see. D five A random playing on our tables. I'm gonna read the Twitch chat and see if all the most most importantly yeah, though, what's, most what's importantly happened? for the greater story, oh, I might have teleported. If nothing else, I might have teleported the throne out of there, which means the stars will no longer be tethered to anything and they'll come mm. back. Okay, we've got Hopefully. we've got a we've got a plan plan our table. Uh, Rob, how how. How badly do you want to? How badly do you want to roll on the the planar table? <laughs> Very. Okay, uh, my dear friend. Uh, thank you so much for for everything. Go ahead, roll on the planar table. Let's let's find out. What's the dream plane? Where are we? What's where? What am I rolling uh, I in? D D100. There's oh, also one there's, in Twitch chat. There's one in Twitch chat. Uh, there, if you uh, click on that. And and what's up? Everything's okay. 
Oh, in my whispers. Table Thank of you so much. all of the planes. Ah, cool. Yes, uh, guys. Just while Rob's rolling on this, uh, again, we are collecting funds for critical, uh, so for sick kids, children, and uh, and their families in in hospitals. They bring this level of happiness that is on Rob's face right now. That's <laughs> that's what happens when when Captain Starlight bounds into the room with all their their vigor and then throws consoles and art packs and sits down and plays games with them. Look how look how happy Rob is right now look how happy rob is right now <laughs> look at it. it is it is pretty much exactly what i wanted yes okay all right i'm gonna laugh if it's cassery nope. <gasps> me a Sererak, the throne any objects or creatures within 180 feet as soon as i try and capture his sphere of annihilation are teleported to the negative quasi-elemental plane of vacuum <laughs> Is that, is that the negative realm? I don't even know. <laughs> like, I feel uh, like that's yeah, that's on the all planes one, not the not not, not the It's simple not the plane negative plane. energy plane because that's our different one on the list. You so much future vacuum. Negative. The negative yeah. quasi elemental plane of vacuum. I'm looking up the forgotten realms Please wiki look right it up. now. <laughs> oh. It's an inner plane at the intersection of the plane of air and the negative energy plane. So it's between air and and negative energy plane. It's in there. Place of utter emptiness. All right. We're gonna what, hold the, the, the gravity there is subjective directional. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna yes. hold. Sorry, good. Kendall. No, no, no? my brain broke. No, oh, no. <laughs> I think all our brains are breaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna hold that point there and we're gonna find out what happens next um, uh, it's now Torig's turn Torig, you do see that this creature uh, seems like it's on its last legs at this point uh, you can see its pincers are flailing it's just kicked off this this uh, psychic uh, projection uh, its eyes still fused shut from ice and, and steel uh, so Torig, having no idea what just happened inside it, um, you know, since it looks like it's on his last legs, I'll do something I wasn't planning on doing. He, once again, he brings up his hammer, slams it down on the anvil at his side, except this time you see the hammer itself actually starts vibrating and starts going hot red like it's just come fresh out of a forge as he raises it once and then swings it forward and there's this sound like this impact on the air directly in front of him as though he's just struck an anvil the sound rings out um i'm going to sixth level guiding bolt get it yes. i am using inspiration if, if no don't use inspiration oh, my God. oh okay i won't use inspiration sorry uh if it's on its last legs um Delilah's gonna reach out, and then you can see just in front of you where to aim, and there's just a little four leaf clover. As I'm gonna use my port to give you a natural 20. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> but so but it's on his last legs. <laughs> as Torg swings, as the, the sound of like steel on steel, hammer on anvil rings out, this beam arcs out and goes straight through this four leaf clover, impacting on the astral dreadnought it would actually leave at that point a mark on it a burn mark like a four leaf clover yes. since since our natural 20s <laughs> scar anyway um, <laughs> so that is a natural 20 on a sixth level guiding bolt so that is oh maths how many extra d6 do i add five more so that's 96 so that's nine times six would be 54 um and then i'll roll on top of it another 96 <laughs> <laughs> for another 31 so that is 85 radiant damage 88 radiant damage okay <laughs> finish it yes <laughs> All right, so Torig, yeah, not knowing anything about what's going on inside, just coming here to do the job that he wants to do. He makes that motion. The arc comes out as it impacts. It impacts sort of 
just below the mouth, sort of, you know, it has that wide gaping mouth and there's a chest there and it just, this bolt of energy just goes clean through, leaving this actually quite small mark of just a four-leaf clover pinprick just straight through it, straight out the other side, as light just emanates from it. That's what I call sneak attack damage. <laughs> <laughs> Hells yeah. All right. That's where we're going to take a break. So we are going to take oh a quick God. break. Um, and more? we. <laughs> Thanks for that. All of this resolves yep. itself. <laughs> yep. We're going, to take, we're going to take a break. Guys, we're going to, we're going to go and uh, get up, stretch. We're going to unhydrate. I'm going to take this quick second to uh, talk about Starlight. Uh, and then we're going to go to take a break screen. And then we're going to find out what, what the, what, 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 what's happening in this chaotic, chaotic game. Uh, what a grand finale, by the way. What a grand finale for this massive event. We're at 68 hours streamed right now. Now, and uh we are at peak D, &D. i'm so gosh darn happy right now uh we've managed to uh gain uh, g uh gather uh, sixteen thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars for six kids uh <laughs> teens amazing. and their families we're fast approaching that twenty thousand mark if we hit the twenty thousand uh we are going to do something very cool at dreadcon and that is a lot yeah a, yes <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're going to play werewolf and we're going to have a live a, a live server where we're going to have a whole town where people get to pee folks in that village and there's going to be werewolves among them and other things among them that are slowly well we got to figure out who they are uh so if you haven't played werewolf before um i will probably tell you about it later but trust me it's going to be awesome it's going to be like a virtual larping experience uh which will be a lot of a lot of a lot of fun uh so consider donating we're very very close now um and uh yeah so thank you for being here um i can't talk anymore because my mind is going a um, uh, uh, buzz uh, <laughs> let's have a break <laughs> yeah um yeah. does anyone want to have any closing uh, remarks before we go to the break screen <laughs> please donate to donate yeah donate go to, to starlight <laughs> oh yes heaps of prizes we got so much stuff to give you just let us love you <laughs> and thank you to everyone who has already donated oh yes and and everyone that's watching along uh, at, at this crazy game of dnd thank you I'm getting silly, guys. It's been, it's been, it's, it's been, <laughs> uh, it's been 68 hours. We're approaching 69 hours. Nice, uh, nice. Yes. Uh, we are, we are approaching the nice number, uh, guys. If you, if you don't know why we're here, we're collecting funds for Starlight uh, that help uh, sick children, teens, and their families in times of of great turmoil, strife, and fear. Uh, there's many words for it, but uh, no matter what word is used for it, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. Um, and it doesn't have to suck if you're surrounded by an amazing community uh, like ours or uh, like Starlight. Um, Starlight's an amazing foundation because what they do is they, they breed a culture of, um, of just love light and and happiness they 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 come in there and they chase away those those, those shadows uh and, and and bring as much uh, uh glee in in times of, of uh, again many words for it strife uh, as possible by uh, giving consoles um granting wishes uh art packs excursions um there's live wire uh which is an amazing uh, uh uh, it's an amazing service that they have that allows everyone to uh, be connected and talk uh, in uh, that are in the same situation they play D, &D. um there's there's all kinds of things there's so much good that this does and we've managed to gather so much good look at that be proud of that number because we've done it guys we've absolutely done it um it's huge we're, we're fast approaching our 20k goal we're hoping to hit that because not only are we a D, &D stream and that would be an actual 20 if we got that um, uh, it would, it would also, yeah, sorry, <laughs> uh, it, 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 20, uh, uh, it also means that we get to do some really cool things. Uh, not only are we going to have another ink heart join the fold, uh, a friend of ours, a friend of, uh, Atlanta said, uh, during one of our streams that she was going to get the mimic heart tattoo if we hit 20. Uh, but not only that, uh, we are going to, uh, do a, uh, a massive game of ultimate werewolf, which will be very LARP like. We build an actual town on our Discord, and it's at our virtual convention that we're, we're bringing out in October called 
Dreadcon Asterix Fest. <laughs> Dreadcon Fest. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the worst of both names. <laughs> Just pick one. <laughs> I, 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 I'm undecided. I, 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 Welcome to ConFest, where we con take fest. a... <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and look, we, we've, uh, our good friend um, Dapper Boar uh, on Instagram, and he's uh, one of our, our players here, especially on event streams. He went and did this amazing uh, art piece for us to celebrate us hitting our goal and also to celebrate the thing that we're going to be doing in October. Look at this beautiful thing. I'm going to read out these words because they're awesome. Thank you for your astounding charity in blowing away our goals for Starlight. I'm gonna cry. I'm, I'm <laughs> Starlight Foundation. Thanks to the generous support of the community, exciting things are on the horizon. It's going to be intense. <laughs> um, guys, I am so, so humbled and happy to be here, but we are here to play Dungeons and Dragons. So we are gonna kick the rest of this story off. Um, thank you for being here. Also, thank you so much, Thara, of Art for $3. And um, we just got donated oh $3,000 from Chumberwork. Um, Jeez, thank you oh so much. For, we've hit it. $20,000. It's done. We're playing Werewolf, guys. $20,000 for Stella, and I'm crying oh. now. You did it. You done broke me. Wait, no, no, not quite, right? No, oh, no, actually. 471 more. Oh, we're 471 <laughs> more? No! I thought it was it! No! I'm sure, okay. I'm sure no. we can make 471 in the remaining oh, couple hours. Oh, come, come on. on. Rule of, but rule technically, of cool. we haven't hit it yet. Oh, Seriously, man. rule is cool. We're that rule close cool. to it. Just like say it. we got it. All right? Just oh, say man. we got it. Oh, gosh, golly. Oh, gosh, golly. We've got, we've got so much more time to get. Um, <laughs> whoever whoever Wabajack Wagon is, wow. She's, oh, man. She, 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 she popped into my stream the other day and was just like, here, have just a shed load of money. Um, and I was like, thank absolutely. you. I'll take it. Ow. <laughs> oh. And then she went to a different stream and another stream and another stream and did the same thing in all of those. And then she came by this one. I went, here, have all of the money. You've, you've, made, oh. this, you've made this dreaded GM cry. So you've done it. I don't, I don't have to fear being hit by... Uh, <sighs> by my wife <laughs> according to jp <laughs> i'm crying now i'm crying thank you um look i, I do go tears there's tears here there's tears oh, man. <laughs> damn webber okay. that's incredible so in this <laughs> dreaded <laughs> negative energy plane of existence <laughs> <laughs> where i'm facing off against the most dangerous arch lich of all time thank you rob <laughs> thank you for helping me gather myself <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's get back into this story. You know, the rest of us, we just we think you're dead, uh, but we saved the day. Yeah. Job done. Yeah. 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 What's yeah. Us? <laughs> What's up? Right. Easy game. Right? Most of you probably don't even game. notice because I was like, I, we we were flanking. Right? I was like a tiny kobold hiding. Cards the sword crawls his gear. Oh, sort of like him. Oh well. Uh, so <laughs> <right. out. laughs> We're just, <laughs> We're oh, just like, Crowley, you can come out now. I know you're hurting. You didn't do anything. <laughs> to be fair, I've only been gone six seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, um, this, this is the craziness of D&D. I've, I've been, I disappeared from my place way over there six seconds ago. Um, so let me, uh, let, back, uh, I love what Wubba just said in chat. So, so anyway, back to fear and terror. Back to fear and terror. <laughs> uh, so as the astral dreadnought blinded by the the, the 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 heroics of those gathered in this place looks to the sky that is shrouded with night walkers fighting celestial warriors it roars as its mandibles shake <laughs> It explodes, expelling all darkness in the area, and you see stars starting to fly towards the sky, placing themselves back where they're meant to be. The Nightwalkers are gone. The heroes that fought on this grand day start to uh, come down and surround you all as hope has been restored. However, as you search the um the explosion, you see that our friend Krell is not here with us. Fear and terror. All right, I can I can do that for a moment. We find ourselves in a place 
of deafening silence and darkness. Standing there, looking at Krell, is a Sirarak. The throne behind him. They have very little air in this moment. Krell, you hear in your head the following. sacrificing yourself. You can't stop me. I am internal. I am beyond beginning and end. Look at you. Struggling. You're going to see a Sirak approach with absolute power in his gait. If it's Not a if it if it's two way telepathy, I say I say is it two way telepathy? Can I reply to him? You are uh you do have your thoughts whether or not a Sirac can hear them. Uh we will I, find out. Well I I think Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? Yes it is. Even now, you are defiant. He's going to reach his hand out, and as he does, you see his ancient hands. He's going to cast Time Stop. Oh. Ah, oh, shit. Can I? Will this be fun? Oh, I don't have it. No, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. He's going to move over with all the time in the world. Well, I mean, there is mechanics here, but nonetheless, he gets really close. He's going to put a hand on your shoulder. This is where your story ends, Krell. And then he's going to teleport away, leaving you in pitch darkness. Are we, the track. are we in turn order or can I act? I'm going to turn on a, a track, one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites. Um, guys, we've hit the 20,000. Uh, we are at $20,040. That is huge. We've done it. Thank you so gosh darn much. Um, let me let me play this, this track. Rob, would you please tell me the end of Kral's story? As Krell comes to, after the time starts for him again. From his perspective, the lich simply disappeared. He looks around in this floating vacuum, his lungs feeling like they are bursting from his chest, using every bit of strength he has to hold on to the last of his breath. His eyes are burning. He can't see, even if there was something to see. The moisture on his skin and his eyeballs are it's instantly boiling in the vacuum of space. And in the last few moments before he dies, he starts to see spots, twinkles of light as the blood constricts behind his eyes and messes with the senses that are being sent from his eyes to his brain. Oddly, it's comforting. He's flooded with the endorphins that come with an impending death when the body knows that you're about to go through something painful. And he feels oddly calm. 
as he looks around the darkness, the void, and sees nothing but twinkling lights. Those twinkling lights start to tunnel in from the sides as he realizes he's never going to succeed in his mission to find the Cobalt God, Kirtlemak, and where she was sent by the gnome god, Gal Glittergold. There's something about the twinkling lights in the void that look familiar, though. And he's brought back to a moment recently when he met an astral sphinx who destined him for greater things than this. And as the last of his strength in his lips is about to give out and he's about to lose his lung full of breath, he remembers that he was granted a wish by that astral sphinx. And le loosing the last of his breath as it forcibly is sucked through his vocal cords, he forms the words plane shift and uses the, wor uses the wish to cast the seventh level spell for plane shift sending him back to the material plane from when he came. And then he passes out. Operating out of nowhere, you see Krell falling from the sky. <laughs> he starts sailing towards the ground, unconscious. I can't spare the fall. What does your feather fall look like? Please describe it. Oh, okay. So as he falls, um, Delilah catches a glint of, of, a, of a, the dark red uh, cobalt starting to fall. As she does, she reaches out her hands uh, and, and cries out uh, as a little bits of uh, gold and little clovers just sort of float underneath him in this sort of spectral cushion as a, he lands. He floats back down and lands amongst the debris of this battle site where hope is restored the many you see heroes that his sorry you go oh, the many heroes that had been brought here start to surround you all they are they have celestial forms they are made of like void and starlight and you can see that they're slowly fading Paul Bell he looks down at Krell and nods an approving look at this situation they turn you back can, to the stars, you, and you start to see them fade away into the night sky. Go ahead, Rob. You can see that as his very dark scales are normally almost black, he's, and, and his horns indicate that he's probably from a descendant of uh, some sort of black dragon draconic heritage um, with his kobold clan. He now, however, looks very red as all of the blood in his body has sort of burst through capillaries and in the, in the vacuum of space, he is not looking good. His eyes are dripping and he is not, he looks like he's not, you, you weren't able to save him. But then he coughs. <laughs> and you realize he's still there, just not conscious. I don't have healing. Could I interest you in an ice pack? You, you do see a bunch of healing potions on my bandolier. On it! <laughs> <laughs> um, do I have to guess which one, or are they neatly? <laughs> depends, how, it depends how well you recognize healing potions in this world. I don't know if they all look the same. Oh, I feel like you That'd be a potion them. of poison. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of potions. I, I could roll to see which one you grab. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I feel like I'd, yeah, I'd gonna, do all right being show up. a court mage. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of potions. Which one are you going to grab? <laughs> um, the the pink one that says health potion. <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying draconic. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually draconic yeah, he knows it. Hey, there you go. All right. I'm gonna smack at that and be like, yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 chuck it down your lips, buddy. <laughs> All right, I will heal myself that amount. Plus, I get temporary hit points because it's one of—it's not a regular healing potion. It's one of my um, alchemist infusion things. It's one of my alchemist uh, everyday random things. Incredibly expensive potion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quickly, while this is happening, I go over to talk and go. Talk. 
stay distracted. We can look for, like, body parts from the big thing to sell on the black market. Let's go, let's go. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you get your harvesting on the line, mate. This is our big pay day. That's, that's, that's the whole reason we're here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You start gathering the... I'm uh, going to pick up, like, an astral dreadnought tooth and be like, ah! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, what's Do we very, need the fat or the main? <laughs> what's amazing with you starting to harvest the various parts of this thing, you start to see this silvery cord that was attached to the back of the dreadnought start to shrink back into some coalesced darkness up in the distance. You see it slurp into what you see as a portal affixed with multicolored uh, black holes almost, or, or vortexes. As it slinks back into that place, you see this this tear in the fabric of reality starts to shrink back in on itself. If any would like to go beyond that portal, you have that time now, but it's fast, uh, fast proceeding. I, I... You don't have to. It's not expected. I, I want to, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, no. This is a big payday for us, mate. We've got a whole life ahead of us. Yes. Catch! I throw him the tooth and run through the portal. Screw oh, it. Okay! <laughs> no! Oh, no! <laughs> you see Crag you see Crag Nug run through the portal, leaving his his companion talk behind as the as the tooth hits the sand. However, talk you do have a few moments if you'd like to follow suit. If not, that is more than okay. You bastard, you'll die without me! And I'm gonna run for it as well! <laughs> Alright, Talk and Krugnug do go through the astral tear and it shrinks in on itself, disappearing. Um, right right as they disappear, actually, just because Torg doesn't mind them, he stands in the middle of everyone and once again slams down on the anvil and I'll just throw out another mass cure wounds for everyone so that maybe they live a little longer. Uh, so everyone gets another solid 28 health back. Oh, nice. Um, now, I'm just going to type something in chat here. I don't know if I should say this out loud or not, but um, I'm... I'm... <laughs> I don't know if I need to just... say this or not, but I'm going to say it to you privately and then if you... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just as quickly as Kragnug and Talk appeared in front of these strangers, <laughs> so did they just randomly disappear. <laughs> for about a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We... we... We join, you find out that they joined in to save the Earth just because they wanted to sell body parts in the black market, and then they ran through a portal. Tori like that about them, and figured he'd send them on their way with a little extra help. I'm uh, nearly full health. I'm, I'm now back above half with that exceptionally good mass, mass healing. Yeah, it was six, six and seven, I think, on the time. <laughs> nice. So I guess I'll, the, the, the capillaries all reform themselves and I can go back to a darker scale skin colour. Are you all, are you all right, Mr. Krell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I ain't seen anyone fall from the sky before, but... You weren't started there, that's for sure. No. no I, I've got things to sell you. I'm gonna be okay for now, but hanging around me is probably not your safest pursuit. There's gonna be a powerful man after me soon. No. Our job is done and we need to eat. So let us head back to my home, okay? Yeah. I, you can um, meet my family. Okay. I was hoping to return to my court, but I can't. Now, first, you must eat at my home. Can't it's only a few days travel. Um, if, with, with AJ, with AJ's request, this is what's going to happen. Running from amongst the crowd, you can see a a, a, a war war torn uh, goblin run out and crash into to, to the crowd. Scrappy's <laughs> giving you a squeeze hug. Uh, I don't do I'm hugs. Just, I'm so glad that you're okay. <laughs> Get off me! <laughs> I think he's still healing, actually. You might get some blood on you. Was it? So uh, was it? Grappy, we, we were just gonna go get a bite to eat at, at Toig's uh, family home in a couple of days. Did you wanna come with us? Krell's gonna come too. Right, Krell? Yeah, I guess so. You're inviting? <laughs> of course, everyone is welcome. I make big pot of paprikash. 
Can you get can you get off me now? This oh, is oh, yes, this has gone long enough. Um, yes, quickly. <laughs> Feeling hands. Uh, lay on hands. <laughs> no, okay. What is happening? Um, and that's where we're gonna leave this current scene. Now, with with us reaching a point in the story which feels like a natural end, I am gonna ask for an epilogue from everyone. Um, let's decide on a span of days. Let's let's take uh let's take let's take this. Uh, you guys all level up. You all gain oh. a level. Uh, oh, a wizard of now oh. we use a downtime rule here which requires downtime and gold to nice. be able to level up. So we're gonna use that time uh, as your epilogue and how you take that next level. Um, not only that, uh, you guys will all gain a very rare item. So you can take Ooh. that choice of, uh, of your, uh, you can make a tra that of a choice of your, your your decision either now or later, um, and that will come from a, a, that'll be from Sauer, who is Doom's oh. premier magic vendor. Um, <gasps> yes. Ooh, this party crosses the other party. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, the world is very thankful you restoring the stars in the night sky the stars that are the catalyst for so much good in the world let us uh let's take a, a brief break here as you guys compute and figure out how exactly how you level up and and uh epilogue out well, well Tarig is physically dragging everyone to his home yeah. <laughs> and he is much time. stronger than everyone else present so no one can resist yeah. um and now everyone was involved here, so all the other Starlight characters will go to level 13 as well. Um, and uh, they will be given a, 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 an award as well. So if, if people, because we play in a persistent world, the, the, the efforts of everyone from last year and this year, um, they all go, go towards that effort that we, the thing that we achieved here uh, on this awesome day during the night. Nice and if number. they're all still alive, they also get dragged to Torig's home. <laughs> <laughs> Hells yeah. You've just got like one of those dog walker leads that has lots of different clips on it and you're taking all of us. Amazing. I'm so Ooh, happy. Oh, this is gonna be good. Alright. I have a I have an idea if you'd like me to go first. Yeah. Yeah. Give you give the rest of you some time to think. So at level 13, artifices uh, don't get any any special abilities other than access to level 4 spells, which is powerful enough as it is. So I spend the next while, however long the downtime is, I spend the time thinking about how I've just pissed off an archlich that, that I've heard about and how he, and how with the destruction of his dreadnought and whatever plans he had for this material plane, he's probably going to pin it on me. And so I spend some time researching. I, I research as much as I can. And I spend time researching specifically a spell known as Private Sanctum, which can ward me against divination spells and uh, planar travel within a particular area. And then once I've once I've once I've uh, established that. As an artificer, it has to be from an object of sorts. So I think it's a, it, I think it's a mixture of. <laughs> that's that's what I do. First day of the downtime, I go back to try and find where my uh, instant fortress was. It's there. <laughs> and yes. I and I find my instant fortress, and then I in, into the walls of the adamantine walls. I make I, I turn the instant fortress into the area of um, the the private sanctum. And then once I've got that area that where where I know that Asirak can't spy on me, can't scry on me, can't locate me, I then have a I then have a safe study space where I spend the rest of my downtime studying all of the other spells that I will then have access to: blight, death ward, elemental bane, fabricate, stone skin, things to protect myself, the arcane eye to be able to scry on others so that I can see where he is, uh, the blight so that if I can if I can suck away what li little uh, he he has left of his bones, and the elemental bane to to uh, to do extra damage to him with my acid and such. I'm working a way out. Uh, I spent all of my time working towards how I'm going to defend myself and more to the point how I'm going to impress him with my uh, my <laughs> how I'm going to keep him interested in my abilities next time we meet 
I'm just I'm just asking a player in chat a question. Just in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just a really quick one. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 he, he, he said fine. You're going to hear a rapper tap tap on your door. Shh, shh, shh. I say the word, well, I, I conjure the arcane eye on the outside of it um, to be able to sort of see CCTV and of who's, who's knocking at my door. Mm. And when I see who it is, Rakot, and I open it. Kieran is going to walk in and just say, Three words. <sighs> Let's just begin. And then, and the door closes behind him, and we study. Yep, <laughs> study bros. <laughs> I'm gonna tell I, my with my intention being, I'm going to help him. Uh, I'm going to help her, assist him on his way to Lishtam, with him helping me on my way to finding Kirtlemac. Yep, I thought that would be a matchup. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I'm glad I asked that uh, permission. But we'll find out how that story ends later. Because we're in a persistent world with characters that can interact and have things happen. Uh, but, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm so I've been sorry. Echoed. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I think, uh, this character, is this, is that, so, uh, no tangent. Let's continue. I'm, I'm going to talk in chat. Go ahead. Um, so, Tarek does actually physically drag everyone who doesn't physically resist to his home <laughs> it takes a few days it's it's in phaeton so i don't really know exactly where we <laughs> were where's it's phaeton compared phaeton. to where it's, we were you're on the coast of phaeton so it's not cool. the most phaeton-esque place more <laughs> inland not close not super close to dweem but like part way to dweem um to uh maybe maybe like 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 a couple days out of dweem um or doom um and there you find this small town um and this rather large ramshackle house it looks like it's undergone many many home renovations over time as just extra rooms have just been added on to the existing house that's there um as as uh everyone arrives you do you are greeted by uh Torig's wife uh another dwarf similar to him but at the same time many of his children many of his grand grandchildren so all his children obviously being full-blooded dwarves but many many of his grandchildren just having smatterings of whatever in there um and all his children-in-law being from all walks of life uh he, he literally goes around and introduces everyone to every single person this is silly and um you have their the, 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 the twin Billy over here and their older sibling Mildred she didn't want to go by Millie for some reason uh, you have Gregor over here he's getting married next month to a lovely half orc fellow from down south very very excited for that one I'm going to have the rings ready by the end of the week that's very very exciting um, uh, after all that he does he, he does his usual daily routine um he gets on a massive pot of paprikash to cook for dinner for that night for everyone um before instead of going to his forge in fact he goes out the back and he finds you know big open area in his backyard and um he sort of thinks to himself and thinks on the powers he's been giving and what he has accomplished with them and he knows that they've come from some divine being but he has no idea which one so he meditates on that for a while and he sits in the middle and eventually he sets down the small anvil on his hip and he starts hammering and it resonates out and he hammers more and he keeps going and going and going for the next hour um and then as he finishes the final anvil ring rings out you see from the ground the ground starts shuddering and this temple rises from the ground this huge temple uh on the back of which is the uh religious symbolism of of every god of oak and ash uh there is there is a this is a temple to all the gods in Torig's mind um and he 
will continue doing that, not just for the level up, but he wants to stay with his family. He will continue doing that for the next year of his life. Hells yeah. Because he's going to build a permanent temple of the gods here. Oh. And he is going to send messages to everyone he knows, including Krell, letting them know that he has a place of safety that everyone can return to, that extra planner beings can't find you there, can't intrude on you there, and if they do, he'll beat them up for you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a percentile to see what the chances are of me being yeah. in my no divination spells thing. <laughs> you might get a, you might get a, uh, an, a this number is not recognized. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, you get a, this number is not recognized when you send a message to Grill that day. But, it, but you try again the next day. I'll keep doing it. And doing eventually it. you catch me and say, oh, sorry, I've been out of out of cell range. Uh, uh, Grell, you, you're ignoring my messages. All right, I built a big <laughs> temple. You come visit, I make you paprikash. I give you sight, okay? I do like your paprikash. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I would um, take off fairly quickly. Maybe, oh, I want to rest up. So I spend about two days at uh, Torig's place, meeting the entire family uh, and not really enjoying any of it. Although I think you see on a different level, she's like, I, yeah, I'm meant to be enjoying this. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> I'll make myself enjoy this. Then she steps off home, but first she sent a letter to have an escort because she's done her freaking job <laughs> and she's going home in style. So she she takes the carriage home and arrives back at the court within the week. Um, and then you can see it's a massive court. She's actually really high up. There's this grand staircase leading up to her rooms. And um, she goes in and sits on the bed and thinks, I, I did a really good job. This is, I did a good job. And she's going to realize, wait a minute, I did such a good job that I can become more than just the court mage. I can become a court mage advisor. So she's going to get to her pens and her books and start writing up notes on, you know, everything she experienced and how terrifying it was and how her vocal cords hurt for some reason. Um, and then she's going to approach her lord and lady and be like, no, I can do more. And she's going to start learning different types of magic. And that is all I have because this was on the spot. Love it. So much. Um, okay. The other heroes uh, of um, the 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 other heroes that fought on that day um, they shift throughout the rest of the lands of Okanesh, all living out the rest of their stories, at least for those thirty days. Those that were there were marked. Whether or not you noticed your mark or not, but there was a star-like shape that was upon your form in some way some some it's in it's it's in the inside of their lip others it might be uh on the palm of their hands where uh, wherever it may be it, it 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 marked you but in a good way uh they they um they theorize that it is because you have been star kissed is what they're calling it. Perhaps it brings luck, perhaps it forebodes something in the future, uh, but for now, uh, returning hope is a good thing, so they believe it to be good. That's, uh, that's one thing. So, uh, who else is... I know that we've still got three other people on the table who, uh, who haven't done their epilogues yet. Well, I can, I can do mine. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so the starlight shape seems to uh, shimmer upon the back of uh, Delilah's wrist, uh, of just above her, yeah, just above her wrist. Um, over the time, she spends a fair amount of time 
uh, with Torg and Torg's family. Uh, and then when time has come, um, little Delilah decides to go and venture back to Dween uh, with Krell uh, during their adventure back to Dween. Um, in that time, they part their ways uh, and Delilah takes on a new identity uh, as she has been a charlatan this whole time, um, faking who she truly was. Um, she starts off in Dweem uh, looking as though she is a beggar girl and she eyes the, the pouches of warlocks and wizards um, quite sternly and closely. Uh, during so, she pickpockets wizards' books and textbooks during her time there where she can. Uh, and then, upon one day, she sets her sights upon a new target, a tall elven woman with lilac hair and feathers upon it as well. That's one little caveat actually quite short for an elf actually she's quite <laughs> short for an elf although quite tall to a half <laughs> <laughs> um believing that she's a good, she good a... save yeah, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> <Tracks>. <laughs> Yeah, it checks, it checks. Um, so believing that she must be of some kind of magical uh, properties to have such beautiful hair and just walks with a, a degree of curiosity, the newly dubbed Lily Summerfield uh, begins to stealthily try and pickpocket her uh, moving throughout the city. Although for some reason, no matter where she goes, the purple-haired woman constantly is ahead of her. She stealths, she can see her, she tries to pickpocket, she already knows that where she was. No matter what Lily Summerfield can do, this woman just seems to always be one step ahead. On one particular day, even calling out what Lily is doing and even challenges her on her name, even knowing that she isn't using the right name. Um, this sort of sparks curiosity between the two of them and Delilah learns that this woman's name is Thorn and they decide to teach little Delilah about how to use her stealth and her uh, pickpockets and her insight quite reliably uh, over the course of the next few weeks as Delilah learns reliable talent taught by Thorn in doing. <laughs> I'm going to bring up an awesome picture that our illustrious artist Alicia drew of Thorn just for everyone's everyone to see. Now, we, Thorn is from one of our continuous games that we play uh, on Sunday, uh, which, yeah. So I'm going to bring it up for you guys to see because it's awesome. And uh, I'm going to continue on with the, the, the other epilogues. Um, so th Thorn, who we know absolutely nothing of, and Delilah, <laughs> who has lied through her teeth throughout the entire time, <laughs> finally meets her match. <laughs> no, look, you're not going to get me, okay? So, like, I'm going to teach you how to get other people, but you're never going to get me. Also, I think there's someone named Richter. You're probably never going to get him either, because he seems very similar to me, and just don't target a tiefling that likes to talk about his <laughs> privates a lot. Anyway... <laughs> You can see there's like a small stack of wizard books that she's collected. She can't read much of it, but she can read as many first level and second level spells. Uh, if she had gone with Krell, I would have gone with more points into wizard, but she went with uh, her roguelike passion and uh, will always be a little charlatan. <laughs> I love it so gosh darn much. Okay. All right. Um, Prag? Cork? Uh, you are in the Astral Sea, a place of great many possibilities, uh, uh, a hallway to many realms, to many spaces, uh, other planes of uh, existence, other prime material planes. However, where you go is totally up to you. Uh, if you want to leave that question unanswered, it is more than okay. Uh, the scene is yours. I would like to just turn to talk and say, Sorry, I get a bit excited sometimes. Um, it's when I was you're young, ass, I, you do. When I was young, I always looked up and I had a favorite star in the sky, and I, I was really sad when the people took it, and and when I saw a portal, I was like, maybe I can go be near it. Also, 
two words came into my head when I saw the portal into space, and I wonder if you might be interested. Was it space portal? No. <laughs> Close, though. Oh. Space pirates. <laughs> yeah. As if that I... isn't the best idea I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I've read about I've read, I've read about this place. There's portals to everywhere. We can like steal stuff from the, this plane to get it, come back, sell it on the material plane. Just go around and have no a inter interplanetary interdimensional plane black market ring that starts with us. You see, that's why you're the brains of this, <laughs> and I'm the broad, right? I yes. mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and no one will ever tell that. Although. How do we get out of here? I don't know. Right. What? <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> Perfection. I love it so much. And I already want to see the, uh, the, 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 the Disney Plus special, for sure. <laughs> I think I need to see the I title. need to see it. <laughs> Space pirates. Space pirates. <laughs> Guys. I think that's everyone. That's the epilogue. We've we've done it. We've come to the end of this massive game. Um, we still have plenty of time on the clock, uh, so we might start the wrap up party early. Uh, but mm. before we do, I think we should do favorite moments. Favorite moments is something. This is how we. This is this is what we do at our, at our tables, and it's something that helps us build a culture of uh, creative confidence. Uh, speaking to a, a new friend of mine, Matt, Matthew Perkins, on the Peapod uh, podcast coming out to you soon. Uh, we spoke about. Creative confidence and creative confidence isn't just bravado it's also making yourself vulnerable putting yourself out there doing a dialogue being silly uh, all of that and that's what we try to make sure everyone here feels okay playing a character uh and know that we appreciate and thank you for your creativity here uh, at our table because that's that's something that should be celebrated uh so uh let us start favorite moments i'm um, feeling all the feels do we want some lo-fi music Mm. Yeah, yeah lo-fi. Okay, let's get some lo-fi happening. Yeah. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was all right. <laughs> okay. It's just a, it's, as far as D&D &D goes, mm. it was like, you know, it was like a six. Yeah, so. six, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, it's sort of like what you'd expect, like, any time you pick up D&D &D and play it, yeah. you know? Like, I, I think mean, it was fine, those enemies but... together are so cliche. Yeah. 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 It, it was a bit, it yeah. was a bit on the nose. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. When, Astral Dreadnoughts again. When we first, when we first got hit for 50 damage from an aura of annihilation from the, the Nightwalkers, and then we went into the city and saw Dreadnought, I was like, I bet that Dreadnought's got a Sererak inside him. So, you know, was, and then it turned out. The writing was on the wall. wall. The writing was on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so. really, uh, okay. Rob, Rob wants everyone to think he's really smart for coming, with, coming up with all that in the moment, but he just knew that a Sererak was coming and just had yeah. contingencies. Yeah, just had, had contingencies. <laughs> man. Oh, man. I he spent the past year figuring this out. <laughs> yeah, Dread told me a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it's going to play out next year. It's not like... <laughs> <laughs> to this to, 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 uh, the precise second of when it was yeah. going to happen <laughs> or orchestrated uh, and then, okay and then oh 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 if if he can have a sphere of annihilation but i'll make it seem like i didn't expect him to <laughs> amazing what we'll do is we'll I make we'll, we'll, i'll be able I'll to have like, three that checks to take it so like i'll fail the first two checks and then on the last check you have me succeed okay yeah. the and we'll, we'll bring zach in and, and he'll be in the chat and he'll be yeah. waiting and he'll be like, have a time token yeah. <laughs> the whole token thing was that this is where you came up with it you're like i got yep. this idea in a couple of years from now <laughs> all right so we're going to start this token system and then we're going to do this thing <laughs> <laughs> just how he does a flashback right after the end of the last session where um, Rob's just laying in bed awake just like <laughs> running out of the it's like the Charlie meme of all of the numbers <laughs> or the, the Charlie meme yeah. where he's just like this links to this and this yeah. one yeah 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 <laughs> okay. guys uh, I'm just gonna say thank you one more time uh, to you all uh, uh, thank you so much for playing tonight and thank you so much for bringing your creativity to the table in full force uh, and uh, yeah 
uh so let's start favorite moments how it works uh we start with the person in the the top left and then we go down and we give favorite moments to each of them um i think for uh for kendall and uh thomas uh, is the first time it, it can be a bit tricky uh but all, uh, once you once it clicks it clicks so we start with that person in the left corner they're going to praise themselves because self-praise is very important um and then we go down the line and we give that person a favorite moment there's something that we really appreciate what they did uh after we're done with them we can just move down the line so self-praise and then followed by everyone else uh chat you are absolute best not to ramble or it takes three hours yes <laughs> yes chat um you have been watching this show too so you can also reach out and give us your favorite moments at dreaded gm and i'll read them for you if you don't have one for everyone that's okay but if you can uh muscle up uh that wholesomeness uh for everyone that would be much appreciated uh but let us let us begin uh, early what was your favorite self moment Oh gosh, I have been so excited to be first for so long and <laughs> <laughs> I get to take all of them. Um, so my, my favorite self moment uh, was uh, rolling a natural 20 on Portent and being like, I'm going to wait for a very particular moment and um, giving that to uh, Torig here was definitely my favorite moment for me. I was very excited. And that this clerics are so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Kendall, what was your favorite? The Lala moment. My favorite. Oh. Sorry, I thought we were going like down, so I was like thinking of a Oh no, um... you're right. Yeah, as I said, it's it's very tricky. Uh we we had a we had a new friend come on last night, Tato. Uh and uh Tato uh Tato uh Tato was like, Oh I'm so sorry, I didn't know how it worked. It's more than okay. It's your first time. We okay. get it. Yeah, no, uh the <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if it's like a character moment or more of a role player moment, yeah. but uh, when you were asked to describe how the feather fall worked uh, when you're coming down, and then just that interaction with finding which potion it was and how it worked, that was beautiful. I loved it. Dory, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, God. Rimbe, what was your favorite Delilah moment? How did it get to me? And no one, <laughs> neither of you mentioned that epilogue for, oh, I'm Lily now. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, oh shit, maybe, maybe I can get away with getting it. <laughs> I know, I was like, oh, okay, so that happened. <laughs> changed the name, changed your identity. And that was definitely my favorite moment, because for one, what a way to end. And for two, was not expecting that. <laughs> she seemed honestly pretty simple. <laughs> 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 I, Keep you guessing. It was, that was amazing. It was, it was a pretty huge thing, and you were like, "Oh, and I've been lying this whole time." <laughs> um, my my favorite though is how you were you were really on you were really turned on as a as a party buff in the in your portents and also just your uh, halfling luck thing your bountiful luck and how every time any any anyone rolled a one you were like wait 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 before you re-roll that i've got to, <laughs> i'm on a different plane of existence but you're still like can i give you my portent no, <laughs> no. that was it was great no, it's very you. helpful <laughs> yo uh, go ahead sorry I gotta say, it's like the combination of both the description of the featherfall plus the the what, what Rob just said, like the speed at which you were you were straight on to the fact that he was he's out of the sky, and it, it didn't make me bad an eye for a second that you would have been right on top of that. <laughs> like you you were yeah just just big party mom vibe. Oh, thank, well, you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. I. I'm mostly going to add on to the epilogue because while the name change itself was completely unexpected and <laughs> and amazing, the whole vibe of uh, vibe of the epilogue was great. From stealing magic books to learn spells from, which is just such a rogue wizard thing to do, but to bringing in Thorn and being like, "Oh, I'll pickpocket this this elf lady." I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, teach me. <laughs> I, mean, I just love that that idea of a uh, of character interactions and that you thought of that is so amazing. I love that they'll they'll never know anything about each other, but they'll know <laughs> each other is lying. <laughs> that wasn't the truth, but <laughs> but <laughs> little mini thorn. <laughs> gonna gonna learn about each other from process of elimination. <laughs> well, at various so that's times, a lie. So. <laughs> yeah, at various times in their life, they've told me that this, 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 and this were their backstory. So it's none of those. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, chat. What do you have to say? I saw that uh, Renia Chicken 
added you, but I'll read it out regardless. Uh, at Ellie Rose one two three, the reveal at the end was so priceless. But god damn, I loved the catapult ball bearing cannon. It was so great, an incredible choice of flavor. Uh, Scrap it a goblin says at Dreader GM Ellie, I second Zach's ball bearing catapult shotgun moment. Amazing. Um, okay, my favorite moment uh, was stolen by uh, by Rob, but uh, uh, little did you know that it was all a ruse and we had planned him to steal it this whole time. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, like I, I really loved how like involved and in, in the moment you were with everything that was happening. Uh, it really shows that you were immersed, you were present and uh, you were there ready to go to the point where I was like, you see Krell falling from the star, uh, from the sky and you were just like, I cough for the fall, for the fall, I cough for the fall, for the fall. I, for the fall. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I loved one, it so much. One, one thing that we didn't uh, actually say on stream, but before the the thing started, we talked about how we've leveled up since level three to level 12 in the meantime, yeah. and how you've taken levels in wizard and yeah. you were in rug. And I was like, oh, it really works with the last time, the last session we did it when you were casting minor illusion and Krell was like, no, you need to hold your feet differently. And you, yeah. it's all about self. <laughs> and he was teaching you spells. Yeah. And so then to be able to use one of the spells that Krell probably taught you yeah. to then catch Krell from the sky, brilliant. 100%, that's Hell exactly yeah. how I saw it as well. It's a lot, all of the oh. spells that she picked up um, were from, <laughs> from Girl. That's so cute. Yes. No. I love it. Guys, oh. I love it so much. Oh, um, by the way, I tried to say this during the during the stream, but uh, my my brain is filled with all manner of, of feelings, emotions, and, and awesomeness. Um we are going to add the final number uh onto the key art piece that M's doing. And there is a space for this game on there so i would like everyone to come up with what we would want on the key art uh that's going on to a shirt from this game uh, it, it, uh just let me know uh, in chat or in the discord or wherever and then M's going to put that piece uh on on there with the final number as well that we that we got during the 72 hour stream thank you for that little tangent um okay so uh, i think we're up to uh we're up to crag cragnag cragnog's uh favorite self moment what was your favorite self moment my friend uh um uh dodging the astral dreadnought's bite by standing like yeah. um, yes that was <laughs> in, its, in its goose gap i think yeah that's, <laughs> that happened. that's my personal favorite that that's, yeah, that's how i dictated how i missed getting bitten by it it's just it's it's, little, yeah I, 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 I meant, little I'm, gaps in their teeth that's just, i stood there I, I mentioned this to the rest of the cast uh between in the break but i was so focused on like trying to work out how my insane plan was going to work that that <laughs> That all of the fight with the dreadnought, no idea what happened. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to any of it. I was just like, oh god, how does the sphere of annihilation work? Oh, does it, oh how could I do this? Oh, I've got a flash of inspiration left. So it's that like, that was news to me. <laughs> that would have been amazing to visualize. Well. Yeah. Hell I just yeah. Could blood magic and then spun and and then got in between its teeth. Awesome. That's great. So good. Um, yep. uh, also, Rob, thank you so much for your two hundred and thirty dollars yes! donation towards the final number. <laughs> Hell's yeah! It's, it's, uh, I, I've done it on uh, most charity streams that I've been on with you and others, um, but I keep a track of all of the D twenty rolls that I get during the stream, and then I add them up, and that's what you got. I love it so much. Is I, can we can we keep track of the high score? I really want to make a, a mini game of this if you uh, so, that if, so that we can see when we get the high score if you haven't tracked that that's fine but we will 230 okay that's a lot that's a lot mm. of rolls <laughs> this is the current high score <laughs> um all right all right all right all right uh so we are up to ellie's favorite moment of crags oh gosh i feel like i'm spoiled for choice because i wrote down so many <laughs> um but i would like to go um i'm just gonna take this one up your voice acting was phenomenal it had me in <laughs> stitches it was so entertaining um oh my goodness everything that your character said that was dialogue um i loved it i was so entertained by it um it was wonderful <laughs> This is the voice. This is the voice that I'm having for this. This, 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 this really serious circumstance. Serious yeah. circumstances. <laughs> yeah, it's this just, is the voice I've chosen. It's comedy gold, so and I was so, it's so funny. <laughs> on the same comedy gold moment, I. Uh, oh no, it's my, not my turn. Yeah, it's it's yeah. hard, it? right? It's hard. <laughs> I, I was getting in trouble with it uh, uh, earlier on with one of the favorite moments. Like, no, Josh, 
Let them have their favorite <laughs> moment. <laughs> uh, there's just so, so much happiness here. Uh, so, you know, uh, first AD. Marimbe? Okay, well, I was actually going to mention the voice acting, but as um, what I'm actually going to go for is a player moment, not a character thing. It was the dedication to wearing the mask the whole time. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. We've all worn masks now for long periods of time, and they get hot and they get moist, <laughs> and you just kept it on. <laughs> it was on. And it was so impressive bring it out my, <laughs> yeah, my nose is my nose is quite red because i couldn't find a mask i am wearing i was i tied up a shirt from our, our friend's <laughs> oh, <this way. laughs> yeah it's, it's a, yeah and i just had the arm so it's not the best to breathe through so i did have to take a couple <laughs> that was really that's even more impressive <laughs> um my favorite moment was you describing how you got Beep slapped by the by the drink dreadnought at the very beginning, the first first person to get attacked by it, you're just like right there up in its face, unwillingly as well because you happen to be riding the guy who charged at it. <laughs> like, well, I guess, I guess we're getting into melee then. It was tactic thirty two, and then oh, well, slapped off of the slapped off of his shoulders. So good. Um, uh, cock. Oh, I've, I've got to say, man, the fact that we took 15 necrotic damage, and then the first thing you do is, I'm going to cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is an edgy character, for sure. <laughs> Cuts myself 7 okay. damage. And then having to add the plus 3. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts myself this much damage, and then it, and then it just didn't really do anything. Because <laughs> it oh, immediately no. went, anti-magic field. Oh. <laughs> I love the small amounts of banter we had, but just that moment was why? <laughs> <laughs> how I do this? How I do this? It's how fun thing. <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, oh man. my goodness. <sighs> okay. So um, Corey. Apparently, I get this one. Um, Space pirates! No! <laughs> Stop! No! I don't know how it gets through to me. No! But the, 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 I was not expecting to go back to you as to like, all right, I've got two words for you. Which, no, I won't say the other one because if it gets to me, that, that's my favorite word for that as well. But um, but like, no, space pirates will control the astral seas. And will run the black market here. <laughs> Although, just as a little add-on to that as well, then like, so do you know how to get out of here? No! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he thinks he's in a position of power to make an entire crime organization ring from the Astral Sea. He doesn't even know what the Astral Sea is or how to get out of here. Make it till you make it. Uh, we'll I, have it an e I have an extra one as well when uh, um, we're all finished. I have an extra one that doesn't get said. Shots, what do you have to say? Scrapping the goblin says, at Shredder GM, Kendall, blood magic to hide between the teeth of the dreadnought. Hells yeah. Uh, Re uh, Renegade Chicken says, at Treaded GM, Kendall, I love Kragnug. He needs to meet Meek, who Dread or myself can tell you about later. Uh, uwu face. Uh, uh, that being said, uh, this uh, was my first time seeing you play and it was a hell of an introduction i absolutely loved uh the exclamations of blood magic uh whenever he used his blood hunter features incredible <laughs> man yeah look okay my turn now obviously uh with that ex uh, big exclamation uh, ex exclamation uh, uh bringing that up into topic uh daniel stole my favorite moment i thought that i was going to have glory i was like yes no one's noticed it it's right there it's amazing it's the perfect end to an amazing character who is like just running first head first into an astral sea it's mine here we go and then Daniel just stole all nah, my hopes and dreams all from mine. To be yeah. fair, I, I didn't write it down because I thought that he would take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, it's, 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 uh, there, there's no actual ill will here. Like, that's something that we, it's a mini game of this of this thing that we call Oh, yeah, moments. you got to go first yeah. so you can get the, the first yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> we, we like to, we like to have fun with stolen moments and it's okay to have the same moments. So one thing that we do is we add ribbons on top of that. So that was by far, like, amazing. Uh, but your whole play, you're you you're very you're very very good at embodying your character, mask, um, being there in the scene. I threw you descriptions and you were just like on it, which was amazing. Your character was like this awesome 
awesome thought out thing and i loved it so very much um so a ribbon though josh you said you were going to give a ribbon i absolutely loved when you used the nat 20 token to blind the astral dreadnought you were like i'm gonna go i'm just gonna shoot and then i was like okay i'm gonna take that and we're gonna do it even better and it was just sick um thank you so much for for for, for krug dunk <laughs> And let's hope that we get to do an Astral Sea Pirate game soon. Oh, please. That would be wonderful. <laughs> um, my like little... you might, but Craig not, might not be there because he has no idea how to start a... Yeah. <laughs> let's, 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 How let's do you get a ship? Dies. Where are we? Can can I, what part of the Astral Sea did we turn up? May, yes, yeah, do we need a boat? Or do we just like... You're just walk? floating there. You're just floating there. Now, well, the good question is... A good we, we move at the speed of our intelligence. Intelligence. That's intelligence. what I was about to ask you. What was your, yeah, what's your intelligence yeah. score? Mine's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, which way are we going? <laughs> for someone, for someone who cuts himself after taking fifteen necrotic damage and then runs into his portal to space without the plan, yeah, have a surprisingly high intelligence modifier. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, the little extra one that I have um, is that isn't how tactic thirty-two works. Yes, that was so good. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> and I and and I love that you guys just had that bit ready to go, and it was oh, oh, no, so actually no, it was, I'm pretty sure it was improv. No, no, you're no, right, you it was improv. Ready to go, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah, no, it was no. What I meant by ready to go was that you guys had that that quickness of your improv is what I meant. Ready to go is in like you guys oh. have fostered that. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on set together. Yeah, okay, yeah, they're very. <laughs> well. um, thank you so much, so so much for uh, Craig Doug and. Uh, Remember yeah, your favorite. Th 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 thanks for letting me be a part of it. <laughs> You're an amazing group. I love you all. Oh man, we just cuddle puddle. That's what we do. Okay, here. Okay. I Come this group. Group. <laughs> Come on, get attention on me. Go to the next person. <laughs> Marimbe. Um, well, color me crap because I forgot it. What was it? I wrote it down. <laughs> no, no, I picked a different one after this. Um, okay, I I have an option here, and I, I think I'm going to go for it just because it was <laughs> the most in character I felt that I got, because it's very difficult coming back to a one-shot character after a year. Oh, yeah. Although Rob didn't have any trouble, <laughs> neither did Daniel or Ellie, so I guess I'm I, just... I, had the, I was lucky enough to have the time today to actually watch back yeah. the previous <laughs> episode. Torig um, is very I'm... simple, and his voice is based off a voice that I can easily listen to and get back. I, so. I wrote a play by post. That was where my voice came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go with um, sprinting out of the cone, uh, the anti-magic cone, and screaming at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. That one was mine. Was mine. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, gosh, gosh. Uh, so first, um, I absolutely loved your, your reaction at that start, just like, well, I'm gonna run and I'm gonna scream. <laughs> um, to, to just build off of that, and then when it came around to your turn, just like leaning over and just like heavy breathing out, it's just like I just sprinted. <laughs> hey, people sprint for me. Um, oh, it was very beautiful. Uh, but I will give you uh, a combat description. The frost on the fingers um, was epic when you were casting your spell. I thought that was so cool. Thank you. Yes. Oh, my, my next um, are the epilogue moments. The uh, I'm so much more than a core wizard. The sort of, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I was, was really I was good. Yeah. Very unsure of that. I was like, yeah. oh my God, we have the epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't know about it. Yeah, no, it was good. There were two or three others, but I now know if I keep talking, I might take someone else's. Still, thing. still so people. I, just, <laughs> I need to like just let out like. Uh, I, be so. I believe I'm next. Um, my yeah. yeah, I'm gonna expand on what you said of the um, the 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 running out of the thing because I was in the same <laughs> position as like all my stuff is magical. <laughs> we're, 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 as a sorcerer and an artificer, we were just like, all right. I guess we're shooting crossbows at it. <laughs> so, so, so you run in one way and me run the other, and you were like, I don't know what I'm and it kind of went and, and, and it was great because you were really leaning into the role of your noble sort of heritage and uh, and that the way that that tied throughout being just always in a situation where you kind of like 
I, I'm not meant to be in this situation. I'm not born for that. Politics. This I'm, is not yeah, politics. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not meant to be fighting dreadnoughts. I'm meant to have uh, other people that I pay to fight dreadnoughts. <laughs> and how that came through at the end, um, where you were like, uh, and I and I deserve to return home in style. <laughs> Putting the silver carriage. Yeah. So good. Uh, to focus in further of that moment of you running in the first instance, like, I don't know why, but it stands out as so iconic, of you sort of checking when your magic comes back on. <laughs> I thought oh. That was such, like, a minutely wonderful detail, as if you're trying to, like, come on, you little... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the light! That is so the moment, moment. And it was, it was, it was amazing. Win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Forever emblazoned in my mind oh, is yeah. the idea of that's how wizards work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if anyone's ever seen me trying to use um uh one of those um flicky zippo lighter, the zipper yeah, lighter. Zipper lighter. It's like that. It's just I don't have the skin for it. <laughs> My skin it is too smooth. It's I've got delicate skin. <laughs> Uh, obviously, a lot's already been said, but for me, it was right at the start, not wanting to run towards the group of floating beings, and then when everyone else starts, I was like, well, well don't leave me be high! <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so yeah, you know, you said you struggled back in the no, that was perfect, that was right so off the bat. Right, yeah. <laughs> Chat, but what I do love, you have to say? Yeah, coward! <laughs> Let's chat have to say. Josh is again. I'm doing so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, Scrappy says at Trinity GM, uh, Izzy running and screaming during the combat spellless sorcerer in an anti magic field. That's a favorite one for sure. Um, Jay Spigot says at Trinity GM, Izzy, and I've never played this class before, so I'll just do this. <laughs> uh, Renegade Chicken says at Trinity GM, uh, Marimbe, an incredible moment right at the end. I love that she was like i'm i'm so much more more than a court wizard that uh she could be uh so she could come to a court wizard advisor incredible moment and perfect priorities amazing um daniel's two for two and is stolen another moment from me what i loved about that is you set it up and then you gave like reason to continue going on so the reason i love that as a player is you were like okay my character don't want to go over there and how can I justify and make it my character want to go over there? Well, don't leave me behind. It was amazing. It was it was just this. Um, it was awesome, and it, it added a, it added good comedy to a, a very a bad situation. Uh, so it was it was it was masterful. So thank you so much for that. Uh, as a ribbon, I loved. I love. I uh, see. Even the witch bolt was stolen. You see. Even the witch bolt was stolen. I don't. I don't know how to do sorcerer, so I'm just gonna cast witch bolt at six levels. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. It was amazing. You did really, really tonight. Well tonight. I will. I will um, reaffirm what you said, which was, it's hard to come back to a character after a year of not playing them. Uh, that is a daunting task, and you smashed it. So you should be feeling really good about playing Marimbe uh, in that in that situation, uh, because I don't think that we we noticed that you hadn't played that character for a year, because it was so awesome. Hells yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, hey, Rob, what was your favorite self moment? Oh. Actually, Jim, um, your favorite uh, hell moment. I, I think my favorite moment about myself is the way that I adapt my plan to new circumstances. Because I'm always tr I'm always planning ahead what I'm going to do on my next turn. And so I go, I go, I went into battle thinking that the first thing I'm going to cast on myself is haste or i'm gonna the first thing i'm gonna do is this other thing or the first thing i'm gonna do is and like uh you still don't know what the big metal backpack on krell's back is <laughs> just, uh, still haven't had to use that um but i, I go in, oh yeah this is gonna happen and then you say oh there's actually there's actually these uh these creatures that are running in towards you and they do 50 points of damage to you and I, I have to adapt on the fly and be like all right i have to take this other thing and then I went into the Dreadnought going, okay, I've got a wish. I'm going to use the wish to get out of there once I've realized what we need to do to free the stars. But then you throw a, <laughs> a lich at me and I have to adapt on the fly and go, okay, I'm not going to use my wish to get out. I'm going to use this instead. And then I roll randomly and we're on a different plane of existence and I have to adapt on the fly and go, okay, how do I get out? Oh, I've still got a wish. I can use that to get out. So my ability to adapt, I think, is my favorite thing. 
Hells yeah, I totally agree. 100% agree. But uh, we'll get to that. Let's see if Daniel steals my moment again. Um, Delilah, <laughs> what was your favorite uh, Krell moment? Oh gosh. Uh, so building on what you've already said about that, I wrote down precision attack actions, uh, which I think I'm pretty sure should be a video game label of how you you plan each of your attacks um but i just want to go with the the quote and how you delivered it in that moment as well and it just it got left on a cliffhanger as well which was i find many things interesting um i was like oh yes happy snaps for that moment that was yeah. very cool um you're on fire tonight it was Thank amazing you. to watch hells yeah uh Krugna. what do you think he broke the game. <laughs> <laughs> he broke D and D for everyone. <laughs> the most amazing thing. Like it, it, it's just a lot. You got the two. Like, should I try to mention something else so someone else can use that? I was like, no. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> your favorite moment. it was incredible. And like that role play was built around it. Like bringing the other character, like walking close to Sarah as you were saying it. Um, uh, yeah, like trying to like bring it down onto him first when they're not knowing knowing you've got like this much movement i'm going to try to get him he dodged it going to try to get the thing the throne that didn't work well maybe got a bit and stuff that you like but i've also got a bag of holding and i'm still so you, it was like to the thing where it's like not just you knew you could get control but that you had this much movement with it if you hmm. did uh so how much could you do once you got it yeah uh, how close do i need uh, to be standing next to him and stuff yeah uh yeah it's yeah it was uh i don't know i, I yeah i don't know much about the inner workings of higher academia but that was like watching like uh astrophysics documentary. <laughs> 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 yeah it was amazing thanks man hells yeah marimba Oh, I can't believe I get to say it. Um, do I take the whole thing? Uh, you know, what? I'll 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 start with just the line, so that if someone else has it as well, they can go for it. But in the death scene, um, the intensity in your voice when you're like, "Yeah, but it's interesting." Yeah. So crazy. I was like, "Oh my god, he's actually gonna die!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was so good, and I loved it. So I'm just gonna take that one moment, uh, just in case anyone else has something else to say <laughs> as well. But cool. that was Thank amazing. You. Yeah, I like, I like to I like to sort of throw back when possible, and the fact that his one word and Josh Josh made a point of it being like one word. He says interesting, and so at that mm. point I'm like, okay, interesting is kind of the code word for what we're we're basing this entire scene around. Krell is gonna the only thing that keep, keeps him from killing Krell is Krell being interesting <laughs> so it was a it's a good way to sort of bookend he says interesting at the beginning and then I say yeah but it's interesting isn't it if I went up against that thing I would die immediately <laughs> <laughs> it was a relief when he didn't say kill as in power yeah, <laughs> yeah. I genuinely <laughs> thought yeah. I genuinely yeah. thought the yeah. when he goes he says one word I'm like well I'm dead because I ain't got I ain't got a hundred <laughs> points <laughs> um talk oh man like where to begin? I, 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 sorry, a bit of a tangent, but I said it on in the break. Like, as a child, I never imagined. Well, as a teenager, I never imagined going through an, a kind of experience that Rob has presented us with today. It, it, it really is like a clash of titans amongst a universe which is so so vast. Um, but like the the little things that you've got to hone into is, is the, the the unrelenting characteristics of Krell during the entire situation. Um, he never sort of once wavered from the character. He was never intimidated. He was never thrown out by the situation. It was always just a, a consistent and pure essence of, of, of something which has obviously been a very, a very passionate project for you. So I've got to say that, that that stands out immensely. Thank you. Hells yeah. Um, all right. Horik. Uh, honestly, the absolute visceral and tangible way that you described Krell slowly suffocating with the dots slowly as the vision it, slowly comes that. in. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> the dots slowly coming in as yeah, ah, uh, I'm yeah. You described it perfectly in the moment. I'm gonna try and repeat it now because I didn't write it down word for word. Um, but it was just absolutely incredible and just an amazing way to end that whole scene culminating in that tiny little 
plane shift just barely whispered out and then just as a tiny little bookend to that as well when you appeared back in the physical realm um you were a different coloring from before because of the the effect the vacuum has had on your body that was just also amazingly done from yeah just a, such a visceral way of describing this small cobalt just being completely subjected to the vacuum of this plane of vacuum apparently <laughs> Which we all definitely knew about before the, before yeah. rolling. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> it was all planned, all of it. I love, I love, I love, one of my other favorite moments was just the fact that I managed to get a table of however many DMs just all, <laughs> all looking at each other like, yeah. <laughs> what's the, yeah. the quasi planar so negative <laughs> planar <laughs> planar vacuum? And we're all like, never heard of it. Quasi elemental play. <laughs> no, no idea. <laughs> At this point, thousands, thousands of uh, thousands of hours at the table, uh, probably even <laughs> even the, the hundreds of thousands of hours at the table between the, the, the lot of us, and we were stumped. <laughs> See, and I were just yeah. like mechanic. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that a homebrew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is we, what it we is. Like, That's not fake plane. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Mr. Scrubs, I'm uh, Okay, uh, we do have more up top. I'm glad I scrolled up. Yep, I'm very glad I scrolled up because it's definitely up here. Okay, um, Scrappy the Goblin says, At Trinity GM, Rob now has a meta player type cast for all future sessions. Lich Magnet. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Um, no context needed was, I think, the quote when it came up. <laughs> no context needed. Lich Magnet. I love it. I love it so much. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Jay said, uh, Jay Spice says, uh, Adria GM, Mr. Rob, I have contingencies. Hartley. <laughs> 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 Mr. Rob, I have contingencies. Hartley. You had contingencies for your contingencies. Um, I, I, yeah. on that, on that note, uh, Dread in the break was like private messaged me and said, are you, are you okay if Grell dies in this? Because he's obviously like play, yeah. play, playing it out. How are you yeah. going to feel if Dread dies? Yeah. And I love that you, uh, you, know, you, you, you took my feelings into account there yeah. and being like, would Robert be really gutted if I kill this yeah. character, even though it makes complete story sense and stuff? And I was like, yeah, I'd be fine if Krell needs to die, he needs to die. And I thought he might, <laughs> because when, when he came over and touched my shoulder and cast time stuff, I was like, oh, there's, there's uh, uncountable things that he yeah. could do to me in the four rounds that he's got oh, to yeah. do whatever. So I thought he was just going to kill me, and I was like, fine. But I also reminded you, like, but I've still got a way out. I've still got a contingency. I could still. Get, I'm not dead yet. Don't write yeah. me off yet. <laughs> and had to remind you of the the wish that I have. Can I tack on to like the, that kind of incredible amount of storytelling between uh, a, a player and a DM? Like that that is that is immense. Thank the fact you. that you guys can come up with what like took Marvel ten years to do yeah. <laughs> that kind of scene, essentially with Tony Stark falling out of the air. You guys just did that on the fly, and you made it so real and so like. I guess heart wrenching. I, I I I'm gonna hopefully mirror on that and just say I think it's because me and Rob and and hopefully my other players uh, we we trust each other. Um, yeah. And it's it, a it's a big big part of its trust. Yeah, I think and, and, and we knowing, we're, it's knowing that the story is important. And... Yeah. And not only that we 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 build each other up. Um, that's something that I try to instill, and I think uh, uh, everyone else here tries to do as well. As you can see up in the corner, we're, we're very passionate, <laughs> so and we, we're filled with love, and we're, we're very welcoming. So um, I, I, I'm not going to steal our favorite moment here because it's not my turn. Um, we are going to—that was a small, wholesome tangent. Um, uh, are we up to Torik? Are we up to Torik? No, we're, 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 doing, we're chat. doing chat. We're doing yeah, chat. Yeah, look, we're at 70 hours now. <laughs> 70 hours. <laughs> yeah. <we've been> streaming. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we are up to scrolling down. Zax. Renegade Chicken says, "At yeah. Dreaded GM, oh, Krell, oh, Krell. Uh I loved, I, I loved that you roped Kieran into it, but especially loved the order, uh, audacity of the spear of annihilation in a bag of holding trick. That dimensional rift is an awesome trick, and it was great to see someone finally realize it in game on." the channel yeah it was it was like epic legendary proportions and it was uh, it, it 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 you could definitely we're, we're, we're joking about it but it does have a high level of consideration and play to its approach so i i agree with that for sure um 
because it was sick. And we utilized the divine intervention from uh, a, a level uh, as well. So, uh, and, so and thank you to thank you to Renegade for allowing me to use this character in right. and his token, his time token. So great. So great. So in it involved all the in interaction like mechanics that it like just mm. put in. So it was an amazing moment, but yeah. it's like it's like it's a community moment in a weird yeah. way. Oh yeah. Isn't it? It's mm. like Rob was doing it, but it involved mechanics that you guys put yeah, in. Yeah, I couldn't have done yeah. it without a time token and an, uh, an inspiration uh, divine intervention. intervention. Yeah, it's it's yeah. one of those uh, lightning in a bottle is like I, I like to call it. Yeah. We've had a couple of catches. We've caught a couple of lightning in a bottle, uh, but it's a moment that we'll walk away from just remembering this massive story. And we've managed to capture it on stream on recording, so that's that's very special too. Yeah, forever. Yeah, it's it's out there. Um, so um, noon set noon four one six says at Dreader GM a tiny gulp a uh, kobold leaping conf uh, confidently <laughs> at a lich a demi lich of the multiverses <laughs> as if uh, as if it was just for fun yeah that's like we're gonna get to my favorite moment um just checking there is there are thank you so much spinner 007 uh, uh congratulating everyone here for smashing the dono goal thank you so much um and fly bowman also says thanks for including my wish coin um, I'm actually really happy that I included it because there was probably going to be a small encounter there. We would have had extra time, but I wouldn't change anything about that session at all. Um, I wouldn't change it at all. So uh, it was very well used, uh, Flyer and Thank you for, for allowing us to use it in that moment and allowing for them to go straight down uh, the, the the throat of hell uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, uh, Adina and Z, call me a loving human, but it's not my favorite moments. We're gonna thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so uh, my favorite moment for Rob uh, was 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 stolen from from Daniel. You are uh, I loved that scene that we were weaving together in that moment, and I was just waiting to see what you were going to do with it. I loved it so very much. But not only were you doing descriptions in that moment, you were actually physically acting as well, and you were drawing us all in, all into that scene. It was like this this we were in a vacuum within mm -hmm. a vacuum within a vacuum and it was <laughs> it was it was so good because at that moment you were right um it's kind of telling that uh Asirak, as a storyteller I'm, I'm i'm hoping you picked up on this this uh this consideration as a, as Asirak has the power to kill you with the snap of his fingers but he left you yeah. there in despair he left you there in silence to, and he to left die you in there pain. into pain and suffer but you said no, and you had accounted for it. So it was amazing. And here's the thing, you had that wish, but there was no guarantee as a storyteller, you were going to use that wish. So yeah. like you could have made that choice for the story. Um, and and yeah, I was I was just as captivated. If Krell, if Krell was more content in his personal quest, he would have just died then. Yeah. Because he doesn't exactly like himself, <laughs> but, but um, well, we but yeah, he still had a, he still he still had a task to uh, yeah. to, to to fill. So he was like, no, nah, I can't die yet. Such an amazing, amazing portrayal of a character, uh, portrayal him a character with an epic story. I, I know it's been a year in the making, but it was worth the wait. It was yeah, worth the wait. Um, I'm 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 happy for Krell to be like an NPC of the world, oh, and yeah. like hel helping helping some gnome become a lich. <laughs> That's what's super cool. Like it's in it's in the canon now. We get to see what happens next. So yeah, yeah. Uh, hell's yeah. Uh, so that was my favorite moment, which was stolen from Daniel. Uh, as happy as Daniel is about that, I. Uh, I, I'm not. I don't hold any ill will about that. It's it's all in good. The, the best part is that I'm going sixth, and I'm managing to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I will give you a ribbon. I absolutely loved your uh, private sanctum as well. Your epilogue was dope. Uh, bringing in the yeah. the the tower, remembering it was there, and also just like <laughs> taking everything that happened the year prior and then bringing it into the forefront of the, a year later is is just thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so. Uh, it is it is talk's favorite moments talk what was your favorite uh self moment who, who wants to follow that holy hell <laughs> <laughs> so i i like to think carrying craig nug into melee <laughs> yes. genius <laughs> what, what, what's your blood hunter weapon a crossbow okay <laughs> yeah you, that's got pointy end, crossbow, it? it's fine. <laughs> yeah i completely uh mind lapsed on that and um bringing that in i was yeah just a wonderful celebrity moment of stupidity so good 
Delilah, your favorite oh. talk moment. Oh gosh, I think I will ask you one question that is, I think, on most of our minds, which is, what was the breakdown of your classes? Yeah, what was the breakdown of your classes? He cast the third, third level of Divine Smite, so I was like, yeah. okay, so to get third level but Paladin bard, is seven. Well, at least... No, but he's got Bard as well for He's got a Bard he's level. He's got a fighting style. He's got Fighter. Fighting style, there. you get at first level Fighter, I think, maybe sec or second level, level Paladin. Paladin. So oh, he, second level Paladin. You already a, a Paladin. <laughs> he's an Oathbreaker Monster Slayer. So Oathbreaker. Um... <laughs> Breaker Paladin. <laughs> yeah, Oathbreaker Paladin. Monster, Monster Slayer, Slayer Ranger, Ranger plus one level in Bard. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and it was. It, it all became so much clearer when, like, uh, before we were starting, you were like, uh, I said, oh, is anybody going to benefit if I take this spell? And you were like, oh, well, I kind of might get in, in grapple. And we were like, so what What sort of thing are you? And you're like, I, it's, I, I don't really know. <laughs> it's a thing. At the time, at the time I was like, what are you, how, do you, how do you not know? What are you and then you're like, oh, you took it three character. different multi-classes. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. Um, also, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta point it out. Um, the, twice now that I've played with, oh, was it three times? I play with you? Have you always yeah. drop a level in Bard? Uh, do I? I made no, no. two <laughs> times you have. Did you, did you do it yesterday? Did you do it yesterday? I didn't do it yesterday. Okay. I thought that was like, I thought that was your brand. It was like, there's always going to be one level of Bard. Oh god, no. If I, if I could live a day without being a Bard, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least two out of three. Yeah. Two out of three. Ah, two out I'll of three. It. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Because I think you did the same thing with um uh, when we played together with, on... With, with Dean Rick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He was champion slash one level bard. Yeah, one he? level bard. So I was like, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Del Delilah, what was your favorite talk moment? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um. So I think, like, oh, there were so many. Um. Okay. I am going to go with. Okay. All right. This was it. Um. So with the attack, where you missed the first one, and then with the hook, you just, like, slung it up and then, like, hooked underneath it and then you're going to be attached to it for the rest of the combat. <laughs> He's attaching himself to it. <laughs> this is maybe not a smart decision. <laughs> like the, I love that like the, the, the description of the combat side of it was phenomenal but I love this like itty bitty like office moment where you kind of just sort of turn to the camera and <laughs> I just attached myself to it as a <laughs> so visual it was so good just just like um it was at this moment he knew <laughs> he trucked up that's right <laughs> i'm pretty sure i haven't i haven't gotten one call on the the the, the swear jar at all this whole think, 72 hours i don't think hours. i have either oh really this yeah, I know, and everyone was worried about well, me. I, I got one, but it was under my breath, but people still uh, caught it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I said at count, least I stopped... one, so yeah. I will be dying for you. Um, but yeah, it was, it was phenomenal, and just, I love low intelligence characters. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It was uh, so amazing. Kragnog. Oh, um... Yeah, second day in a row, like... I think I've done a good amount of damage in a turn, and then you've gone shortly after me and just been like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, what? The expression. All right, that's how you do it. Oh, you yeah. double it. <laughs> uh, it's amazing, but yeah, the just the general build of the character, the idea, like you were saying, they were melee, but not necessarily melee damage, and it's just because you tank, you just like you hook yourself on. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, it's such a stupid concept, but if it works, it works. It works. Like, <laughs> works. Yeah, yeah, but that's sort of like the idea of like Tork and Kragnog like together, like you hook them on and like Kragnog with this like I love thing. it so much. And, and just it... the idea of yeah. Just but... saying like, alright, play thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that is. I love it, and it's also got it's also it's uh it's got like um comparisons to fishings, and now you're 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 sea pirates, you're space pirates, yeah. so you gotta be hooking all manner <laughs> of things. Got the hook. Nice. Was <laughs> um, Marimbe, your favorite talk moment. 
So the first one I had was immediately taken by Ellie, which was the Nat 20 token yes. on that hook was so good. And yeah, the no, you need to double that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with uh, blindly following your friend into a weird portal and saying, you'll never last without me. <laughs> Uh, with a special shout out to the ending, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had lost it at that. I couldn't keep going. So good. Um, uh, for me, uh, for me, it was a it, well. For a start, it was a real delight to play with you. You were a real blast. Um, I've got like two half ones, like a descriptive one and and more of a just a comedic timing one. The the this, the very first thing you said with the description of your character really hooked me in. I was like, oh, he's got a meat hook on a train. Yeah! That was, that was, that was, I was like, oh wow, yeah, it really hooked me. Um, hey. <laughs> Uh, nice. Yeah, so to, to having that as a character concept was great. And then the, the, the sort of comedic timing at the end with him saying you can you can move as as, as far as your intelligence allows and you just quick as a flush have been like, I move backwards. <laughs> 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 and, the, and then that conjuring the image in my mind that everywhere they go as space pirates, you're just traveling backwards. <laughs> like back you two are back to back with each other. You're, you're sort of leading the way, Kragnar. And you, yeah, well, you can only ever go back. He's got a train. I've got his hook. And I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> he's just dragging him everywhere. This, this gnome's dragging this, like, really <laughs> armored giant. You get, a re you get a reputation of space parrots that can't be snuck up on because you're always facing backwards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, for me, it was... Okay, well, I'm going to give first a prop because it feels like a little bit of a rider to what... Rob said, but just the actual character concept in itself, the description of it, and then the voice that you chose to match that character was so perfect. It <laughs> broke me when you first spoke. I was like, nah, nah, I'm done. Done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the comedic timing of um Kragnog being like, uh uh you know, you know, what, jumping through that portal reminded made me think of, made me think of two words. You know what they were? Space portal. <laughs> 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 that was that was so quick though. I hadn't even fully processed yeah. what Kragnan <laughs> said by the time you'd made the joke. It was so good. When that, that, when that portal so to fast. space opened up, it made me think of two words: space portal. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, just man. absolutely golden. You're an absolute blast to play with. Yeah. Oh, thanks, yeah. man. It's a real pleasure to be here. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, chat. What do you have to say then? Um, let me scroll up. Okay. Wait, where I'm lost? Can you guys help me? <laughs> uh, Lilac mage, void okay. privateers, planar buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I've I'm, got scrappies okay. if you want me to read if, it. If you guys yeah. could yeah. read it for me, I'm, I'm starting yeah. to uh, just the space a little bit. Yeah, so scrappy is the first one, yeah. Uh, Thomas, in the introduction, changing the characters' names, I've made improvements. <laughs> and then everyone was like, the overlay says otherwise. <laughs> surprise multi-classes that kept popping up, Bard, Paladin, etc. <laughs> <laughs> so damn oh, I give inspiration and, and I remember Daniel was like, oh, so you're a bard. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> One of my and then you're like, oh, I use my fighting stance to, and oh, I was like, oh, you've got levels in fighter. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> There's a huge chance that it's not like a, a completely legal character. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Uh, then our wonderful <laughs> renegade says talk this was my first time seeing you play and you were phenomenal the mechanics guy in me loved that you were just constantly revealing oh and i'm also this class <laughs> it was just reveal after reveal and i loved everyone it was <laughs> it was legitimate like it was legitimately only when you said uh, you cast a third level smite that yeah. i was that i realized yeah. that you hadn't gone one level in everything yeah. <laughs> there are 13 <laughs> classes and you'd given a you'd given a bardic inspiration which you get at first level you'd given a fighting stance which you'd given a, you get at first level i was like this guy's taken a first level in everything <laughs> oh, no, <he's> done it. <laughs> i thought that as well at the oh, start man. and then yeah it wasn't until you said smite and i was like oh yeah he's got paladin and then yeah. it wasn't until yeah, the end when you said ranger and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> so good. 
Spates, yeah. Spates also said, uh, talk showing loyalty and following Crag into the rift. That was epic. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, okay, my, my, my turn? Um, yes. Okay, uh, I don't think Daniel could have stolen this one, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> what, what I'll say is that there is something very special that happens at the table that uh, doesn't often get brought up. Uh, I think it's been brought up before with me maybe once or twice before, um, and that is being a font of just positivity, uh, immersion, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, just a whole... A gen, a gen, genuine... Gen, a, Genuine? Uh, Genuineness. Genuine? You're very gener you're a very generous and genuine player. Like you're you're in it with us. You're enjoying it. And not only are you enjoying it, you're making us enjoy it more too. It's something that I try to do as a GM and uh I feel like we're kindred because you're you are doing the same thing. When you look over and you're you're like going like this because of something cute happened, or when you're like in there because something's happened, that pulls us all in. Uh, and it should be appreciated and it should be a favorite moment so thank you for that because um i i absolutely loved having you and kendall here uh you guys are amazing absolutely amazing and i would i would be your gm any day of the week or your table mate any day of the week so um yes thank you so very much uh if i have to pick a favorite moment um, then uh, I would say that I'm not sure who stole it, but the aesthetic of your character was like top notch. I had mm -hmm. very um, uh, what is what's the character's name from? I think it's Dota, the one with the hook, me hook. Um, he's the, the butcher. Chain. Butcher is it just butcher? <laughs> butcher. Yeah. I had butcher vibes, but, but like butcher is very big and fat. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I just had that vibe of like, here's my hook. You, you're with me, and you you nailed that. Like I I loved it so gosh darn much, and um. It was just so great absolutely amazing um yeah like yeah, especially with you and uh Kragnug, uh playing so well together it just elevated your characters to like master tier it's so <laughs> great so so great so uh, thank you very much uh, for coming to play uh with us um, just a huge thanks for having the opportunity yeah. to be a part of this and like letting kendall and i jump in on the last one this is this is very much your game and it was super exciting to be like a spontaneous spark into this world which you guys have built for so long like it was really an honor it's an honor it's all mine it's all honest all mine <laughs> i'll say this a little bit of a, a little bit of story time um uh we 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 are obviously there's a lot going on in the world right now and especially with lockdown and stuff like that now uh, we were i was arranging this all up getting the schedule ready to go and um we almost had uh, uh had so not everyone here uh so what i did was i reached out and um i was like hey look we've got some spots would you guys like to would you guys like to come on and play and uh thomas i was i was worried that I'd, i had already asked uh too much because i had asked you to appear on the other game that we played and then uh, thomas just said yep i'm in and then uh, kendall said yep i'm in too and i was like okay hells yeah uh, and then and then we have this magical game that we've had so again a little bit of a tangent but i'm just very happy um and very 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 happy so yes. i did it <laughs> uh okay daniel what was your favorite self moment Ooh, um oh. i thought we've got chat but, nah. <laughs> oh, yeah. um i liked Torig dragging everyone back to his house to meet his family. <gasps> it's just, so cool. yeah, two yeah. years, and physically dragging those that weren't willing. Um, <laughs> it's just it's just who Torig is. It's the entire concept behind Torig, and I was glad that it got to be how he got to end his little story. It was just being like, now you all come meet my family and you eat my food. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, Delilah, your favorite Torig moment. Oh gosh. Um, so one of my favorite things that can happen in D D is um combo moments when in, in combat. I think it's just epic and it gets me so excited um about combat. Um so I get like uh I did the portent and uh, I described like just the just a little bit there and you just took it and you took the anvil and you just smacked it like almost like a baseball it was like a home run and then just piercing through it uh it was so exciting and i'm so happy guiding bolt is such an awesome spell because it's so unique to every cleric and the way that you described it with the anvil um was just 
oh, it's so cool. Um, Forge Cleric's awesome, and you played an amazing Forge Cleric. I'm so happy because, oh, epic, 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 epic. <laughs> Thank you. Pragnog! <laughs> um, yeah, well, just not so much a moment. It's just like a first things first. The voice was great. Uh, you. love Cragnog's voice. Uh, it was just perfect. You love Cragnog's um, voice? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I brain finished. No, trust me. I understand. I understand where you're at. But I was just so yeah. good. <laughs> I understand Rushed what you're at. Cragnog, and, and I knew I was next, so I just thought, yes. It's like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just left. Sorry. No, no. Hey, uh, I get it. Yeah, no. Dorg's, Dorg's voice was amazing. Uh, mm. Also, the how you're the support class in real life as well just like with the little mechanics not trying to rules lawyer and say i'm um, actually but just say like you could do more damage you could do the best uh thing you can do from this and just reminding everyone plus three to that damage plus three to that heal yes. like just oh, yeah. making sure everyone gets the most out of their character oh, yeah. uh so i think just that concept in general is just uh the favorite part of playing with you hell yeah, yeah. um thank you so much we um, well, so I, I have to start off with something that I think has been pretty much mentioned, but, um, the, the light at the start, you pounding the anvil and rushing forward was amazing. Um, but I am also going to just go with, uh, you building a temple for the gods and keeping on trying to contact, um, <laughs> Krell. <laughs> You're like, no, you're ignoring my calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was very good. Classic granddad move to yeah. leave like 15 <laughs> voicemails. <laughs> but not knowing how to hang up as well. His <laughs> oh, <laughs> message always goes the entire uh, 25 words, regardless of how long the message is. Always crash right, my house. Okay, and then I'm going to hammer this thing here. And <laughs> oh, do you want uh, more, uh, more food? Uh, yes, I can get. <laughs> yeah, where did I put the butter in? Where is the butter to finish the call? <laughs> so great. Don't Close turn it off this spell. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'll quickly touch on the, what the others have said as well. Similar, similar things that I really liked. Kendall's um, uh, knowledge of your, uh, Kendall's pointing out the, your knowledge of the rules. Um, I really appreciate that as well. It's always I was mentioning to these guys during the break as well, um, but for the purpose of chat, I really like that when you stick to the rules quite strictly you allow yourself those moments of but it, the rule of call becomes more important more um exciting mm. and you get away with getting amazing stories that we ended up telling mm. tonight <clears throat> and i appreciate that you know the rules well enough to uh to pull me up on things and be like technically you just use two reactions in a round and stuff, stuff like that it's yeah. uh, appreciated yeah. um but my favorite moment um oh i also uh, like the the lady said um i really liked your descriptions of your spells when you cast healing word on us and there was the sparks of of uh, embers hitting our skin and things um but my favorite moment was your epilogue it was it was tremendously sort of well thought out if you, you keep sort of like joking that your character didn't really have a thing and you were just like oh he's just he's a dwarf with a family that's as far as i thought about it but you made it work really well into a, like wrapping it up into a really satisfying end with building a temple to all of the gods and having it be a safe um sort of central spot that our little adventuring party could convene thank you um I want, once again i'm gonna tag in the fact that your knowledge of the rules it, it really adds to the game in a really non-intrusive way mm -hmm. i think that's a lot down to you as a player your experience and the way that you present yourself it's it's huge man like thank you so much and it's been a pleasure to play two games with you hopefully we get to do this in the future um as as for a favorite moment i i think like the the, the sort of the grandfatherly slap on the ass through the portal i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Don't die too fast. <laughs> Have that. <laughs> Serving the castle. <laughs> yeah. it's like, I don't want to prove, but do it. <laughs> and that was that was beautiful and a wonderful sort of part of who you are as a character and a player. So thank you. Good luck with your space pirate career. <laughs> <laughs> he don't puts a little call. photograph on the, 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 the shelf. Oh man, it's so great. Uh, okay, uh, 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 chat. What do you have to say? Could, could, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for aid. I got it. I got it. Uh, I'm from, 
from Renegade Chicken uh, physically dragging all of the party the, all the way to Phaeton for dinner. Just perfect. <laughs> we can all celebrate with dinner in like two weeks after we finish traveling. <laughs> <laughs> also, I never see people take, take Temple of the Gods. Mad props for picking that spell. Awesome flavor choice. There is also um, Tariq trying to get hold of Krell in the epilogue. I built this temple and if someone's trying to hurt you, I'll smash them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And from Scrappy, uh, forcefully dragging everyone to your house, and you meant everyone <laughs> to your house. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... <sighs> Daniel, you know I love you as a player and a person, and ca your characters I, I adore so very much, but I'm not gonna lie, my heart skipped a beat when you built that temple of the gods and that had all eight gods being a temple of the eight i i appreciated that so much and i'm gonna take a little bit of a selfish moment there because it, as a gm being represented in that way just and the world being represented in that way just just it just it's 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 very endearing it's respectful and 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 it makes me very happy i will mirror the fact that you and your rules and your approach to the game helps create this thing like you're 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 helping this in such a large way and the fact that you've you've gotten to a point not even you've always been there you've always been there so not gotten to a point it, to the fact that people are saying hey we love that and hey that wasn't intrusive makes it such an amazing thing and and i have to thank you and commend you on that but i'm taking a selfish for every moment and that is the temple of the eight <laughs> because i was just so gosh darn happy i was so happy uh, and and uh, and thank you for that. Thank you for bringing the world and uh, in in turn me into that uh, as well in in a way. That's that's why I love it because You're it could have just been. Also, now it exists. Yeah, so exactly. Now you throw people at it. Right? <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's go visit it. Um, like it, you, it, it, I, just to touch on it just a little bit more. It's it's like I very much try to celebrate the players, but when the players take the time to celebrate the world that, that I've created, it makes me. It, it's it's just a gosh darn sort of like. Feels good, so, didn't it? Yeah, it feels, feels real good. Feels real good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much. Um, that was here. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, no, it's not. It. You. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm trying, mate. I'm, I've not been awake for 71 hours. I'm not going to breeze past the fact that we haven't done you yet. I thought I'd, what's, I, your, I, what's your favorite moment? Uh, self moment? My favorite, my favorite self moment? Um, I'm gonna give myself mad props for holding on to that that uh, that big reveal for almost a year. Um, we didn't get to finish the one shot, but you don't understand how cool it was for me to be like, and then and then there's gonna be this Estel Dreadnought, and it's eating stars, right? And there's a Syrac inside, and he's sitting on a throne, and he's eating the stars, and it's gonna be so cool. And at the at the end of it, it was like, and that's where we're gonna leave tonight's session i guess and uh hopefully we'll come back to this i hope, I hope we pick up this story at some point someday yeah it's it's uh it's it's hard to hold on to your secrets um but it, it pays off when you do uh so it pays off when you do so i'll pay i'll pay pay myself uh, a favorite moment self moment that, that um holding on to some secrets as much as you want to share all of them with everyone is a hard thing to do as a gm but uh, knowing which ones to hold on to so that you can have the maximum amount of payoff um, is a tricky thing and uh, and and uh, it's something that I practice because uh, uh, you need to also know when to reveal things as well so um, yeah. it's 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 one of those unsaid things as a GM it's like oh I want to hold all my secrets you don't get to know anything it's like no you need to know them when when they come Cause up because so. then there's no because then there's no payoff there's no <laughs> exactly payoff if you right. haven't set it up if yeah. you haven't dripped if you haven't put the the breadcrumbs and the tiny clues and yeah. then the players don't get a chance to work it out and then yeah. it's like oh Serax here that was out of the blue we didn't yeah. get any yeah. we didn't get any hint that that could have been the thing and I, and I, and I, and I gotta say I, I absolutely love the reveal so much I looked at the table and everyone's like, "What?" And I was like, "Yes!" It was, it was because yes! uh, like I don't know the I don't know the law behind him, but I do know the DMG. Yeah. And, and you went, so what you see sitting on the chair, if you've got the dungeon master's guy, and immediately I went, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the front of the DMG. <laughs> oh man, thank you. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, Delilah, what was your favorite GM moment? Okay, so I have a small one, and then I have a big one. Okay. Um, but the small one is just a quote, which is, I am eternal, I am beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, Epic. That's, that's, thank um, you so much. 
but the the big one that I, I want to um, sort of encompass is that I love your world. I love being in your world. It's just so um, exciting and thrilling um, and just one thing that I always appreciate is how varied the world is and how different the stories are that come together. Um, I love that you gave us this opportunity to the epilogue and we had what one, two, three, four, five, five different paths that we had snippets of that were all so different but so enveloped and engrossed in the world that you've put forward. Um, it's such an incredible experience and and not once did you were like, oh, actually that, that, that doesn't happen because of this, like you've created such a vast es escape, I guess one word for it, but this v a vast creation of um, creativity uh, for so many people. And it's just so wonderful to be a part of and to experience. And I am talking too much now. Um, <laughs> uh, we love yeah. you for it though. It's fine. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's just, it's wonderful. And thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you. You almost made me start crying again. So Good. <laughs> what's your favorite dreaded GM moment, Kendall? Oh, it's, I don't, I don't know how to <laughs> say it distinctly um or just like pick it to one like um like i mean legitimate i think you're one of the best dms i've witnessed on a stream let alone have the ability to play with uh, i don't like i don't like to be competitive with stuff as well but best as in like does what that's I a like. lie <laughs> <laughs> oh this just in this that's is huge what, what i what i look for um what I'm entertained by, what I love about d and I think you are second to none in that regard. So watching you has been amazing and then getting to play with you is great. I think um, other than doing a great job on a Sararak, because you, you know my, my, my part perhaps unhealthy liking of that very evil <laughs> character. Uh, um, but I think once again like similar to yesterday is just the little touches in your descriptions of things like at first everything's dark but then when you reveal we weren't looking at like endless darkness but just heaps of those shadow walkers like slowly coming into the world and it's like that was yeah just an amazing touch that's yeah on top of everything but like the little details like that on top of the big details like the dreadnought yeah. and Sarah yeah so thank you so much yeah. so much high praise uh, thank you thank you thank you um uh Marimbe, Izzy, what you there? got well um nothing as good as that <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty good it's, next one <laughs> yeah, um, that's a yeah, right. one to follow uh i i was gonna say something lame like as a fellow creative i know how hard it is to keep those secrets um, for instance, you could ask me anything and I'd just tell you. <laughs> oh my god, it's so exciting. Get this. There's all this stuff happening. Um, and you, 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 you keep it, you keep it so close and you wait for it. And then you get moments for every single one of us. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and I'm, I'm probably not going to get that. By the time that my work comes out, I'll be like, oh, and then this happens and then this happens. <laughs> And you, you, you've got a really low, like a lot of strength for that. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, also, Sparrowfly away. Thank you so much for donating one hundred dollars towards Starlight. Ooh, that, shit, that is amazing. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate What's that, and we card? appreciate that so much as well. A pay, a pay card. What's a pay? Oh, that's like an <laughs> I don't know what that is. What's your credit card number? <laughs> oh, so oh, I, get it. I, get I get it. I get it now. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. I get it now. <laughs> I get it. What of another one? And I'll wait to see if someone else says it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, you've got this number first. <laughs> yeah. My favorite moment was probably the way that you really, really. Um, efficiently handled the, the splitting of a party <laughs> between two <laughs> planes of existence oh, yeah. <laughs> and and how you managed to keep building suspense in both places that's something that I strive to do and f fall flat on too often but I, I, I try and like keep people in two different places involved and how you kept sort of like just one or two lines as Krell starts to approach and then we cut back to what's going on in the battlefield and then cut back to inside and cut back outside it was great 
I could go on, as yeah. you know. But I'm, I'm, uh, gonna, I'm gonna thank you for that because that also takes patience as a as a as a player, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I think that again, that trust that I was this thinking is, about. This before. is my favorite moment for you. Oh, you okay. can't turn it back on right. me. You can't. You can't. Uh, no, you. <laughs> oh. No, you. <laughs> no, you. Not this. You don't got that Uno card. <laughs> Okay. Take the, take the compliment. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, You're a you. fantastic dungeon master. Oh, man. All right. You. All right. Uh, Thomas. No. Yeah. Your hair's pretty cool hair. Hey, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like your hair too. Thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, 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 yeah. Man, yeah, I love your hair. Yeah. It's so cool. I keep looking at so it. So sick. Uh, well, I mean. I'm, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I try, try to avoid looking at see, it. See um, what I did there? You have to learn to resist it because, like, I turned it back on you with a no yeah, you. I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna say, you just you immediately went back into a no you. I like your hair. I like your hair. <laughs> Shit! He's doing it. He knows what he's doing. Deflection. <laughs> Mirror. <laughs> I am rubber. You are blue. You are, you are the giant oh. hitting the tiny little gnome. <laughs> 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 Gosh, it's so, so much fun. Okay, yeah. Man, I, I've got to say, like, um, from from a perspective of j j trying to like, okay, so this is this is kind of personal and kind of like so much about you, and that is when I try and make props and that kind of stuff, it, it incorporates a whole lot of world building, and it's something which you just seem to not only comes naturally, but you channel so much of your energy and your your like your actual like your substance into it that it doesn't feel like your world has a limit. And that is super special. The, the fact that you, you can journey onto the edge and know that there's still more because like just beyond the cusp, there's a turn is, is an incredible feeling to be involved with. So I, I, I guess it, it is, uh, thank you so much for existing, but then also giving us a level of existence. <laughs> Within your existence. <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's, it's almost limitless, but we did learn today that his limit is the, the negative quasi-elemental <laughs> plane of vacuum. <laughs> Which is only an area to work on. I can't believe I can't believe that you hadn't put the work in to flesh that out. Yet, to be honest. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Back here, where I put all the dice in this opportunity. Completely broke my immersion oh. of the whole. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I think if someone could explode like a balloon from compliments, oh, it would be dropped. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then inside it, there'd be confetti that's compliments for everybody else. Oh yeah. 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 I might be like, exactly. oh, George. <laughs> Confetti wasn't in the balloon um, when you blew it up, though. No. <laughs> Daniel, what was your favorite? Um, yeah, look, I'm just going to give you massive, massive props for your handling of a Serac because, mm. like, so obviously the voice and the general air of foreboding surrounding this absolutely mythical character, but as amazingly as rob did with his contingencies on contingencies and whatnot none of it's possible if you're not in mm. the psyche of this yeah mega lich you know like <laughs> if you're not mega in lich. the headspace of this being that considers himself superior to everyone around him if you just play it as he's a lich he's got lich things power would kill <laughs> curl dies done yeah. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> everyone who gets sucked in dies okay like, <laughs> um, it's just like the way that you get yourself into the headspace of these mythical absolutely beyond comprehension beings is just always phenomenal and the way that facilitated that whole epic battle of the minds playing out was just absolutely incredible even culminating in him not finishing off Brel, you know mm. culminating in him being like no let's see you get out of this one you know it was just you get in the headspace of it so well and i'm always so impressed by it because yeah none of it's possible if you just play it you know as a stat block yeah if it's a stat yeah. block krell dies yeah like yeah <laughs> like like rocky rocky going into the ring and just boof knocking one person out yeah. like that's not interesting story that's not an, like you gotta have like the player won't feel like they've done something epic and they feel badass unless they've had somebody equally badass to fight against and like they're really like loggerheads and and you, you played it really well 
Thank you so much. He has guys. been raided by GM Workshop. Yo, GM Ooh. Workshop, hello! I'm Josh the Dread GM. These are my fellow storytellers from all across the land of the interwebs. We find ourselves here uh, at the end of Favorite Moments. I think we're going to read Chat's Favorite Moments in a second. Chat's favorite moments. Uh, we are going. We are collecting funds for Starlight. We ma we've smashed our, our goal of twenty thousand, and we're at two thousand uh, twenty thousand three hundred and seventy dollars. Uh, oh. In fact, that is massive, and that's all going towards sick kids uh, and and. and teens in hospitals uh in dark times we are we are we are we're coming for you darkness and fear and terror get out of here we bring in uh we, we're bringing mad love up in here there we go i'm getting <laughs> weird now because i'm so tired it's been seven it's been 71 hours in about uh what's that wait three two, three two minutes one in 80 uh, 40 seconds uh, so, uh, <laughs> like, <what>? <laughs> down to <laughs> down and down to 40 seconds yeah. um, <laughs> do you always do in, in, in new york times square there's a ball of rocks <laughs> <laughs> and then as it hits 40 the ball, seconds left <laughs> say 40 39 <laughs> we uh, have a bunch of cool chat moments yeah, so many oh chat moments. yeah, yeah. Oh, it gosh. starts with Starts with noon four and six. Say, in playing of the characters, the music choices, and other scene setting was amazing, and being so open to having the players add the flavor that made the whole encounter so amazing to watch. Thank you. Agreed. Uh, Spates says, "What an amazing story, and the way you all uh, you let all the characters live and breathe in this world you've created, just amazing. I'm in awe of your skill and talent. Well done, bloody awesome." Thank you. Uh, Renegade Chicken <laughs> Renegade Chicken says, I loved the part where you brought back Kirin and Ganelon without me uh, without me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always the fish that gets away with Zack. <laughs> now, nah, but for real, killer session, and thank you for allowing the shenanigans with the sphere and the bag of holding. It was great to see something that creative not go to waste, and an awesome story point made to boot. Thank you. Scrappy the Goblin, rule of cool to let Asarek escape in a vacuum no one can hear you use verbal components. I smell a sequel, Starlight 2022. <laughs> yeah, I thought of that as well, uh, Scrappy, but I knew that I had a lung full of air that I was going to use, so I figured <laughs> I figured uh, if I'm if, if he's going to let me get away with casting one more spell, he can let uh, Asarek get away with it yeah. as well. Can I, pitch, can I pitch that the sequel will be called Liches Get Stitches? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, pirates get so Iris. <laughs> Convene with our pirate space. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Fancies, oh, fancies. shit, it's that lich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's fucking a pirate ship. <laughs> 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 he didn't pay for his good one. Pirate ship. You got it. <laughs> you got your, your figurehead of your space pirate ships, the dreadnought tooth. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fancy unicorns! Fancy unicorns! Favorite dread moment was bringing back all of the deceased PCs oh. for the fight. Uh, yeah. Such an epic moment! All of the fields. Oh, yeah. even Makari as yeah. well. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, was pretty there awesome. Was, um, uh, I, I tried to throw it to chat, so I'm hoping chat threw some in there. But it was from all across the multiverse. They came. Um, it was like any PC that you have lost uh, was there uh, in that moment yeah. fighting. Uh, Spates has another one. The way you both played off of each other, me and you, yeah. uh, and gave each other room to create an epic story. Fantastic. Yeah, was, yeah. Sparrow says, my mind is completely on the fritz after all that amazing storytelling and immense overload of emotions. So instead of a GM moment, I'll have to go with a general praise favorite moment instead. I hope it's not too much trouble to ask you to read it from my donation message. But what I have to say is simply means too much to me to merely post it in chat for free. Okay. So it's it's whatever. I don't know how I'll, you um, get a hold of that. You, but you, I will get that up for you. Donation yeah. message. That's amazing. Sparrow, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Nicole Standing, in, while we look that up, says uh, your ability to adapt to unexpected situations and allowing players to create crazy plans and roll with it. Also to have so many small deaths. Uh, so many small deaths. So <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Anne. Two for, two for eight kobolds would be a small death. Um, <laughs> also to have so many small details and situations that make everyone feel included and make it so immersive. And same as Rob said, to be able to control two groups perfectly, mainly uh, how you've grown and created such an amazing world and with it such a loving and supportive community. Thank you. Thank you so much, oh, guys. I've got Sparrow's uh, comment as well. It's 
really quite beautiful. Oh, Stars give hope to so many people and worlds, real and fictional. Rin the cosmic dragon wishes you all the blessings of the star's light, love and magic, and declares everyone in the dreaded realm to be heroes akin to those witnessed this weekend. P.S. Thanks for being my inspiration. I'm crying, <laughs> I'm, I'm crying again. I knew that one would get you. And guys, that is a good way to conclude the favorite moments. Okay, yeah. well, we actually, there's one more oh. favorite moments for the chat. My favorite moment about the chat is the fact that we <laughs> oh, raised a nat yes. 20,000. Oh, yes. That's so good. Critical, oh. critical hit. Uh, Wabberjack donating $3,000 mm. on the 69 hour mark. <laughs> 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 <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, sir. I felt so because I, I could hear Jacob's voice in my head. That's the weed number. So I wrote it out and I was like, I'm gonna post it. And then we got that donation and I'm like, oh I already pressed enter. <laughs> oh man. There's so many beautiful comments throughout the donations yeah. as well. Uh, we're gonna yeah. go back and definitely read them. And guess what? They are there forever. So what's really cool about the uh the Tiltify is that um all those donations will be seen. Uh, throughout our, our 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 future endeavors, uh, they will be there uh, on the, on that donation page. And not only that, uh, so will our second place leaderboard placing. Let's mm. hope that we can maintain that because that's how we do. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. Uh, I I was I was I was hoping that we could maintain it, uh, 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 get it, and uh, we've we've done it. We've done it. We've, we're we're next second place. Twenty twenty two's goal is going to be hundred and something thousand, yeah. so that we can get first place. Yeah, yeah we're going to come first next year. It's, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I was talking yeah. to Storm the other day, and he, yeah, they were saying that they were just like, "Yep, next year, hundred thousand." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like. So you have already so you, did, you went from a 12 hour to a 72 hour. Yeah. So at that rate, you went, the next one's going to be another do, tr, another it's be a month. Oh, I need a multiple of six. So that's going to be 18 days. 18 days in a row. That's so, all right. Uh, okay. Um, so not do that. Uh, we're 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 going to get the uh, the uh, the wrap up party queued up, guys. Thank you so much okay. for everyone that's donated. Come along and watch us play Dungeons and Dragons. It's been amazing. So don't go night. anywhere. We're gonna we're gonna break it all down. We're gonna count down this last hour. Um, I want to thank everyone here uh, for coming and showing your awesome uh, uh, your awesome creativity. Um, just in case we are losing people, I am gonna get everyone to say goodbye here, but they may be back. Um, so uh, yes, yes. Uh, let's start with Ellie. Me? Yep, yep. You can find me here tomorrow night. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> you can find me then on Tuesday night. We play um, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. We play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> um, but no, hey guys, I'm Ellie. Uh, I cosplay and do uh, anime stuff on Instagram occasionally when COVID isn't running rampant. Um, in symbol.of.peach. Otherwise, find me here Mondays and Tuesdays with the couple of beautiful faces that you have that i have here with me otherwise i'm around <laughs> i exist i exist yeah uh, we just got another donation uh we we're up to twenty thousand uh four hundred and twenty uh thank hey. you so much <laughs> fancy for that donation <laughs> i see you <laughs> uh thank you so much fancy <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. yeah, man, amazing. Uh, 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 Craig Nug, aka Kendall the Human. <laughs> um, I not entirely sure I am existing because mm. that's their constant. <laughs> well, I can see you. <laughs> so you're existing. Me. Yeah, but a you a hallucination and is what this you is, just said. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I put my hand up right through him before. It was amazing. Just, uh, so great. <laughs> enough, I, enough, enough about our fanfic. Um, <laughs> it's it's coming. Existing. Uh, I'm... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kendall Drury, uh, the DM slash other person on One for All. You can find me on Instagram at Kendall the Human. You can find me on Twitter at Kendall's Dumb. Uh, and my my new farewell is Toodles. Eat lots of noodles. Hey, I love that though. <laughs> I, I, I love that though. For uh, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the shirt. That's gonna happen. Toodles, thanks for the noodles. I love that. Uh, thank you so much for for coming here, Kendall, and playing more Dungeons and Dragons with me. I'm hoping we can play with him soon. Oh, so maybe just a little bit more from some A little bit more from some A little bit more from A little bit more from some Grab the dice, boys. It's time to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, boys. Just a little bit. Get out of the kill. Get out of the bloody kill, boys.
it's time to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> we need JP here for that. Yes. Where <laughs> are you, JP? I wish I could do a bird voice oh, as well. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the kill. Good old Marty Campbell. Good voice. <laughs> Mar right. Marimba. That's me. It's you, it's easy. Um, my my only comment to that is that you'll have something you've said put on a shirt and then you will be one of the only people left that do not own that shirt. <sighs> so that's Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's how I'm doing. <laughs> you can oh, have my, my bank account number. It doesn't even have any money in it. <laughs> um, but um, I am Izzy. You can find me on Instagram. I will be here on Tuesdays. I'm more of a one of a week kind of gal. Mm -hmm. um this is uh this is a special <laughs> but i just wanted to say thank you to thomas and robin kendall i feel so honored to have oh. played here um oh, i i definitely don't feel like i <laughs> good enough player to stand in the ring but i am sitting so <laughs> I, it's okay uh, and not only are you sitting may i add that you look fabulous so oh, thank, <laughs> yes. you. thank you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually i i put off doing makeup i had like 10 minutes left because i made cookies before stream <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm so caked I, in I, it, but I just did my abs only, so <laughs> waste. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a waste. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we just got another donation from Bloody Zeros. Thank yeah. you so much. We're up to 20000 not 2000 $20,440 for Starlight. Thank you so gosh darn much. 18000 of it just went missing yes, somehow. 2000 Up to no when Dred's skimming off the top. <laughs> now, Izzy's bank account is suddenly full. <laughs> after, my, after my fee for appearing tonight, oh, it yes. will be about 2000 yeah. <laughs> I'll tax deposit. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, my dear, dear friend! Uh, where do you find me? Uh, I, I'll put it into the thing. You can find me here if you click my name there. I'm uh, here on the Twitch channel. Um, you, can, you can find my Twitch channel there. Uh, Robert Hartley GM. If you want to see me dungeon dungeon mastering, you can find me on my YouTube page, Robert Hartley. Um, or you can find me on the Viva the Dirt League Dungeons and Dragons page as well. Or, oh, coming soon, you can see a series that I've written and directed and things called D&D &D Logic over on the Viva the Dirt League main page. I cannot wait. I, I, I am so ready. 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 It's pretty amazing enough. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm more hyped for that than anything that Marvel has released. So, <laughs> <laughs> so That's high so praise. No I, I love so no pressure. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. I'm so but gosh darn just know it will be absolutely it soul crushing if it doesn't meet our expectations. A bag of holding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is now. I'm going to put that in. Oh, man. Uh, that's, not, that's, not, that's not too niche for the general public to understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a skit about sphere of annihilations and how to, how to attack a demi lich. It, no, you know, it, the, script, the, the, the script that I would, I would uh, put forward would be trying to explain the chaos that happens at a D&D table to someone that doesn't know and, and, and like the situation like well, well, this was happening so and that was happening and this was happening and there's like yeah oh, okay cool like, okay, yeah. trying to explain uh, any of Dred's stories to like anyone else who hasn't sat at their table is so <laughs> confusing it's just like and then a god showed up and then we went inside the actual <laughs> now this character is actually this then, old player's old character yeah and then he was a tree ago. and, and, and then it looks like two artifacts <laughs> okay so not to understand the context crazy. here, I'm going to need to tell you this other story. Right, so he was hitting on a cave? Like... <laughs> and then 500 years before that, there was this other character. <laughs> They're descendant with 500 other kids to this character who's the Avatar of Death, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> and Left is also no, right about 200 years ago. <laughs> avatars are all connected to the gods, but they not all the gods. <laughs> Yeah. We just say, you just have to play with us to get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and heirloom items, you only get them if you understand. Yeah, that. and actually, I forgot to mention, everyone here that appeared uh, during the start is going to get an heirloom item. I'm going to sit Ooh. down ASAP and figure out exactly what it is. I think Make I'm thinking Starlight theme. I think I'm making a starlight, uh, starlight theme for sure, or, or dragon theme. I want theme. a star. I it's want a star. Okay. <clears throat> make it anyway. Oh, something actually, amazing. We should, we should get him to make it now on stream, just okay. so that we can just take so advantage <laughs> of how sleep de deprived <laughs> Brooke is. Also, be able to balance things properly. Dan Daniel and I are playing tomorrow night, and we're potentially walking into a very nasty situation. Oh yeah, so if you give us a really <laughs> overpowered heirloom right now, then... <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Some kind of, like, inner vulnerability situation. <laughs> oh, slight right. tension. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this uh, is good. Talk, 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 talk. 
Oh, I, I was just going to go on about Bottom. like the sphere of annihilation becoming the beer of annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> That's considerate. We'll put yeah, I love know, that. What? I love that. Yeah. All... <laughs> every every time you you put your drink in your bag, you got to drink another I don't know. We'll, 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 progress, we'll work it out. We'll get together yeah. and in Farrah Art will do the beer label for it. So it'll be amazing. So <laughs> it'll all come together. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. My name is Thomas. Um, I'm, I go by Forgeling on Instagram and on Twitter sometimes. And I'm also part of One for All alongside Kendall. And we we really appreciate being a part of this. Well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't speak on behalf of Kendall, but I really appreciate being <laughs> part of this. This has been incredible, and you've done Kendall, an amazing thing. Give a charity. shit. Ken, Ken, yeah, Kendall, don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. No, Kendall, Never. Kendall's Never. actually uh, imagining you talking for him. So. <laughs> On a conceptual level, it makes sense. He's, it makes yeah, sense. He's, he's talking through you. He's, he's <laughs> hallucinating you talking yeah. for him. I've asked him, like, Kendall, can you give a shit? And he's like, yeah, go and tend to. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Bit of, bit of an joke. We just got another donation, oh, by the way. Thank you so much, Mary G, for donating fifty dollars to Starlight. That's two thousand. Hey. Did you say two thousand? I've actually looped. There's twenty thousand four hundred ninety dollars. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, go ahead. Uh, for, uh, go ahead, Thomas. Oh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just find oh, yeah. me on Um Yeah, it, like it. it I, I just can't get over how much of a pleasure this was. This is really exciting for me and it's been enthralling and i hope that you guys have enjoyed it as much as i guess all of us have because it's it's been, it's been a lot it's been so great no boys you forgot to tell them about the kickstarter oh of course kickstarter. Just a little bit. oh yeah just a little bit by the way guys if we've got a kickstarter we are funded in under 24 hours um <laughs> but we do have stretch ten, goals okay. 10 to be honest oh 10 hours <laughs> I, I under t under 10 hours um that's like ten thousand dollars an hour but <laughs> We also plan to do a D and D battle royale with all of our characters, which Kendall is currently writing at the moment, yes. right now as we speak, and he's going to give us a bit of a loop in as to what we should spec into. A little, little, little loop in, boys. Just a little, a little bit of multi class, you said. <laughs> I, I love a multi class. Is it space pirates? I'm pretty sure. Space pirates. <laughs> it's just you guys versus your characters from here. <laughs> I... Uh, I'm yet to have the idea fully, uh, fully catered to, but uh, whoever's hosting this uh, battle arena may be a character you have met before. <gasps> oh God, it's Craig Nugget talk. I'm the one for all universe. So, oh. someone, <laughs> someone out there owns a battle arena. Who could Sorry, it be? They're in the Ryan cut. It's it's an extended. Oh edition. yeah, sorry. It, we need to get to two hundred thousand dollars to unlock the Ryan cut. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about the Ryan cut, but there's a lot of mysterious footage in there. Yeah. Some of it good. Ninety percent of it's not. Spot. <laughs> Please go to the Kickstarter. There's a link in the chat. Click that link. Go check it out. Uh, if you Man, haven't watched on that, that like on, like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, this is me. I'm on. I'm on my vlog right now. Like and subscribe. Uh, uh, so uh, we just got another ten dollars. Thank you so much from Mike the Tall One. Uh, thank you so much. Um, click that link. Uh, go check out uh, Kendall and Thomas uh, with their one for all. It's amazing. We got another one. Mary G. Thank you so much for the ten. Uh, we're up to twenty thousand five hundred and ten dollars. Thank you so much. We're, 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 we're going. We're going. Um, okay. I keep posting the final number in this group chat. And I keep having to edit. Yeah. <laughs> keep making Ellie Mary edit. Mary G went again another ten dollars. Um, no, I did yeah. not mind. So um, <laughs> please, please uh, go check out uh, uh, Kendall and Thomas uh, and and Rob because uh, yes, uh, we we here we play Dungeons Dragons all the time. But these are our very good friends, and we're very excited to be able to play with them. Uh, and they should be celebrated. Actually, we've got a we've got a um, calendar coming out. All three of us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the yeah. three of you. Ooh. Where yeah, was my it's... nice? Where's my invite? Oh, you you feature is December. Oh, I'm December. <laughs> like, no, it's supposed to be a secret. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm, okay. I'm the I'm the We've secret. Been... I'm the secret. I brainstorming, <laughs> brainstorming how to cleverly put the Santa hats on you. You secret thirteen months that you know only what? a select few people know exist. Okay. Look, <laughs> we're, since we're since we're over the twenty thousand. Let's should, should we should, before Let's we make tangent a... even further? Okay. Should we get, should we allow Daniel to allow people okay. to <laughs> know where he's oh, speak? Can, can, can I just have this, 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 this little tangent more? Let me just say hi. Let, let me, let me. Oh, Please, Mr. Quick, November. Little quick, little dungeon boys. If we uh, we need a new stretch goal, let's just say twenty five thousand. We'll actually do a D and D themed uh, uh, across the internet uh, calendar for twenty twenty two. 
Uh, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's cheap for the moon. 21,000 and Daniel can say goodbye. 20, 25,000. 21,000 and Daniel says goodbye. I'm adding that now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm Daniel. Uh, you can normally find me here Mondays and Tuesdays, so I'll be here tomorrow as well. Um, above my head is that's me on most things. It's Pearson with two S's. Um, yeah, but I'm mostly here. Thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll catch him in November. <laughs> Apparently. Is, uh, that's a if, wonderful month. That's if we reach 25,000 for the, the, the calendar. Uh, I'm going to put it up there. Uh, we're going to go back to the break screen now. Thank you so much for everyone's dread, support. Dread, dread, yes. dread, dread. Before we go back to the... Noon has a very good story question. Oh, oh yeah. Actually, Sererak managed to take the sphere. Very good one. Or did yeah. I have the sphere because it went into my bag of holding? Did you mean 20,500? No, 25,000. Oh, okay. Just, it, wait, put it as a major stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put it as a, um, a major stretch goal, yo. Did a Sererak manage to take his Sphere of Annihilation back, being that it was in my bag of holding, or did he leave the, the, pla the plane of vacuum with it in my bag of holding? I'm going to do one of my most favorite things. <laughs> and I'm I'll going to say to <laughs> that that a story for another time <laughs> you'll have to tune in to the sequel to find that out krell, so. krell having oh, passed out another. doesn't doesn't realize and he just puts his hand in his bag of holding for some reason <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually there was a question before guys if you have questions we're gonna about to do about to do a wrap-up party you can ask everyone all the questions so I, I did see a question for the players before and i'm so sorry that i missed it in all this wonderful chaos that we find ourselves in so please if you have questions uh get them ready because we're gonna do a wrap-up party any minute now uh, Okay, all right, guys, we're gonna go to the break screen, then I'm gonna get this all kicked off, and then we're gonna count down the, the last hour. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.